Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and Boom. welcome to Genshin Impact 4.3's event. Oh, boy. I'm very excited to see what happens in the story quest, because apparently a lot of people are loving it. So, here we go. Oh, oh that's cool. Oh, statue. That's Has nice. that been there the entire time? I'm going to say no. That whole poster and everything? I don't, I don't recognize any of that. I don't know. I'm yeah. going to assume this is an event stuff. This is event stuff, yeah. It's got to be. Yes, it is. Okay. <laughs> Seriously? But, Mr. Morris, I don't understand, sir. How can you only be telling me this now? Do, do I have that turned up too loud? Is that, that volume too loud, possibly? I mean, it's a little loud, but as long as it's not capturing on our mics. That's a good point, is oh. it? That's a good question. <laughs> I have no idea. I'm gonna go turn that down real quick. Wow. Nice. Okay. Uh, I'm afraid that there's nothing really I can do. I'm really facing a crisis. My hands are tied. But what about my film? What? <laughs> well, I'm afraid you have to come up with something on your own. Take it from me. Sometimes you just have to let things go. Same goes for this film festival. I forgot! It is a film festival! I mm -hmm. totally forgot that premise. But yes! This is gonna be awesome. Oh, oh. Hey, isn't it Xavier? So he's back in Fontaine now. Oh, he's that guy. Huh. Uh, we met him back in Inazuma and we helped yeah. him shoot a few movies. Mm hmm. Dang. Okay. I was wondering why he. Xavier! Well, I was gonna say look familiar, but, you know. He looks oh, like a lot of other people. Why, if it isn't the dear Traveler and Paimon. I really didn't expect to bump into you here at this time. It's been a while. How have you been? Has well, been. I was doing just fine until I received some terrible news just now. The investor I was working with for my upcoming film has fallen upon some hard times and is no longer able to provide the promised amount of funds. Someone's being sneaky in the background. They're actually not being sneaky. They're buying a magazine, admittedly. I send And the baby. kitty cat is joining us, I think. Wait, give it a sec. Maybe. You can't see her, but she's literally right there. Can't you just find a different investor? It's not that easy, Paimon. She was. Unfortunately, that's not how it works. We had signed an agreement specific to the Fontanalia Film Festival, stipulating that I cannot work with any other investors until the festival is finished. Wait, what? That's a terrible contract. Why would you sign that? Oh, there she is. There's the kitty. Daniel slowly, slowly brings his oh, hand in. She's like, yo, you got like a pen and a, paper, a piece of paper over here? And then she's gone like that. The ah, Fontanalia Film Festival? What's that? Oh, is this your first time participating in Fontaine's Fontanalia Film Festival? Then allow me to fill you in. <laughs> the Fontanalia Festival was established to commemorate the legendary Loch Knights, who went on a quest to search for the Oceanids and eventually welcomed the Hydro Arconigeria. Hmm. Uh, the holiday is deeply connected to the founding of Fontaine, as well as its unique laws and trials. It's one of the most important festivals for this nation. Do we know what the old Hydro Archon looked like? We may find out in this event. Okay. But what's with that weird expression on your face? It's like you're trying really hard to remember something. What? Did you hear that? Did you hear that cartoony? I did. Sound oh, effect. Oh, Cinder, careful, baby. And you're sitting on the PC now. Okay, that's fine. She's just testing Warm. the temperature, you know? Yeah. Ah, I was just trying to recall the exact description from the books <laughs> in order to avoid any uh, unnecessary arguments over semantics. <laughs> semantics. I usually try to recite things straight from the source. <sighs> Not a bad way to go about it. Well Basically. Yes, those are festivals of a similar variety. <laughs> Who doesn't like a good festival? And just like those of other nations, Fontaine will hold a plethora of events around this time each year. To commemorate the Loch Knights, people will imitate them by putting on special costumes, raising golden cups, and going door to door asking for pure water. Okay. 
I mean, yeah. Sounds fun, I guess. But a few years ago, Lady Farina started to find the whole idea a little drab, and so decided to change the part about pure water to sweets. I mean, when you start celebrating pure... No, Cinder. Cinder. She's grabbing Cinder. a quarter. Oh, no, no, baby. Hold up. We baby. gotta... No, baby. Wait, what Don't time eat is that. it? <laughs> Eight minutes. No, no, you're so cute. No, no, no. <laughs> Cinder just took a handful of coins and shoved them off the PC. <laughs> she wants money. Can you blame her? I'll um, give her an allowance later. An allowance? We're going to give the cat an allowance? Yeah, why not? You think she doesn't deserve it? No, I think she totally deserves it. I don't know. I don't know. Why would you assume that I wouldn't want to give my cat an allowance? Exactly. Why would you give your cat an allowance? What do you mean? You what? Are you why? I'm very confused right now. Well, I'm asking for your reasoning behind it. Uh, because I love her. There you go. You answered your question. Been gaslit. <laughs> the whole thing seems more akin to a carnival now, and it's quite popular among the kids. Every year, you can hear a bunch of them saying, "Trial or treat." Trial or treat? Trial. Prison for you, child. Oh, that sounds pretty fun. But how does that connect back to the film festival you mentioned? I just realized they did this event around Christmas. Yeah. And it's the, the Halloween-ish one? I, I just think they said that I, it probably isn't anything like Halloween. Maybe. Actually, wait. They dress up in costumes and, and they go door to door asking for water. For treats and candy, and they say trial or treats. Trial or treat. Don't think too hard about it. Don't don't think too hard about it. No. No, don't think about it. Don't do don't do that. What? But if you're wondering, yes, that's basically Halloween here in the US. Basically. Basically. Used to be Hollows Eat but never. No, no. Ah, yes, uh, it appears I'm straight off topic. <laughs> I just got too excited after mm. seeing you. I get spotted. Let me get back to the point. You know, unless this event just comes up with a bunch of excuses that could put characters in fun outfits, I don't care. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. The Fontanalia Film Festival is an event proposed by the Fontaine Film Association this year. Now that film technology has matured as a medium, it's the perfect time to introduce more people to the art form. During this time, people may submit films to be evaluated, and the entry with the highest score will be given the Farina Award by the association. Aww. The what award? The Farina Award. The Farina Award. The Farina Award. <laughs> you know, after the Hydro Archon, they coined it while Lady Farina was still in power, but uh, even though things have changed, no one has made any motion to update the name. Oh, well, because people still like her. Perhaps everyone still thinks of it as a pretty appropriate name. Even though she isn't the Hydro Archon any longer, Lady Farina is still Fontaine's superstar. Anyone with eyes can see the way she shines on the stage. That's nice that people of Fontaine still love her. Yeah? <sighs> Zhang Li could have just... Ah. Alright. Guess the name does work pretty well when you put it that way. Oh, but who would have guessed there'd be an issue with the funding? How will I ever explain this to Miss Chiori? Not to say all the other actors who traveled all the way here from Inazuma. I'm really excited to hear Chiori's name. Like, our name. Blah, 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 blah. Voice. 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 I meant to say voice. I mean, we heard it in that one uh, demo. We did? Yeah, she she talked. Okay, I don't remember that. In her, in her dump. It's fine. Chiori? No. Uh, sounds familiar. Are you thinking about Musket Girl? Oh, before. I am. I mixed up their names. Yeah, Chiori's the dressmaker. <laughs> I, I really no, want to hear her heard. her voice. Yeah, I'm excited to find out who's playing her. I'm assuming she'll talk in this event. I hope so. <laughs> Say that or she's silent. Silent type, yes. Silent, yes, deadly. that's her. I asked her to oversee the event's art direction, including the design of the actors' costumes and appearances. Oh, Paimon remembers now. Navia said that her clothes were designed by Kiori, and Kiara's outfit too. Mm hmm. I forgot Kiara's actually was. Mm -hmm. Or Kiara's. Ki 
Flip. How to describe her? Uh, well, she tends to be pretty direct and can be very forceful when it comes to dealing with people. The fashion world in Fontaine has dubbed her the Thundering Seamstress. That's nice. a sick title. Her remarkable designs have led many Fontanians to become very interested in Inazuma. Anyway, Chiori is acquainted with all the actors I've invited from Inazuma. Without her help, I don't think I would have been able to get such an international cast for the film. She really is a kind soul. That's nice. Who are the actors from Inazuma? Do we know them? Why don't the two of you accompany me to the Aquabus station to welcome them? And to explain why it's not happening anymore. <laughs> Judging from the time, the Aquaba should be arriving shortly. Chiori will be waiting to meet me there as well. Nice. Okay. The crack of muskets breaking the silence. I like this already. I do too, oh. yeah. Who? Ding! I love it. <gasps> Wow, that is wow. some nice artwork. Dang, what about that? Yo, Ooh. I'm actually getting some um, Sly Cooper vibes from this. You never, okay, did you ever play Sly Cooper? Uh, it was the, the whole like raccoon guy who would I steal things? I think I played it once, but it may have just been a demo or at someone else's house. I don't think I've actually oh, ever owned one and played it. I know exactly what you're talking about. You played it, okay, this is gonna sound really weird to maybe some people out there. You played it at a furniture store. You sure. had, it was a furniture store. I remember because when we moved, we were super young at the time, but we, our mom and dad were at a furniture store like all day and they had a PS2 like on, I think it was a PS2 on display and Sly Cooper was playing on it and they had like it hooked up to a TV so kids could play games or While adults. their parents were shopping. Yep, and uh, we were there playing it like all day. <laughs> because we were there all day. We were there all day. <laughs> Uh, so only vague memories. <laughs> so is that a murder mystery? Uh, possibly. I don't know. I don't know what to expect from this. And I still, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what this, this big thing is. Because it was on the poster, too. To the frame. Uh, but I'm going to assume that this is the main story? P probably? Is it? Probably. I'm going to assume that this murder mystery and... This are the two main things. Okay, that police officer with the the stick looks like a bad guy right out of uh, Persona Five Tactica. Mm -hmm. Okay, I guess we begin. Oh, with we this know one. this is the sharpshooting mini game. Oh, wait. Go to quest is X. No, no, no. That's, no, that's that. that one. That's the going to that quest. Okay, so Splendorous Sky that day is the one that. Wait. No. No, that's a different no. thing. That's a Sumer quest. Hold on. Hold up. It, it is this one. The crack of muskets breaking okay. the silence. That cannot be anything else. I see the value in my. Okay, so that was just introducing us to a I bunch of new see games. The in Sweet. The Actually, that means that we'll need is. to grab all those before it goes away too. So, bench shop. What are you selling? Just stuff you don't have to grind for later. Good. That's really nice. Joyous gift, this thingy. And this thing is actually a pretty freaking good weapon if you've done all the Melazine quests. Like, it, it, it buffs your damage super high. I think it's like a 48% attack buff mm -hmm. with like 30-something percent energy recharge at max level, which is like pretty freaking good, all things considered. That and it, it's a, it looks cool. I, I also- Or aesthetically pleasing with a few characters. I don't know. In all honesty, though, how uh, good its base attack is. That's the one thing I'm not sure about. Tricky shots. Tricky lights. Oh, oh trick shots. I, I, I read that wrong. Extreme drive! Wow. <laughs> what the heck? Oh. What? Oh, yeah, it's a five-parter. Yeah, some of these parts, I think, are pretty short, ironically. That's a cute little Paimon stamp. Look at that. <gasps> I want that in real life. People of Fontaine. Give me it. I believe I will continue to take pride. Whoa, look how good that fountain TV. looks behind the thing. Yeah, what what? Behind the the podium, there's a fountain, and it looks amazing. Like the water effects. Look at that. Oh, yeah, they're everywhere. Wow, I've just not taken the time to admire them. Wow. But I am now. Okay, so these are just the, uh... These are all the mini games. Okay. T Turina? I think this was her. Elena? Uh... Oh, Melis? well... 
mini games for another time. The Indeed. artwork on all of them is gorgeous, whoever did them. <laughs> I, dude, I. Why was my party half dead? That's right, I have Farina. That's why my How? party is Why is my dead. party half dead? Maybe it's because you're running the one character in the entire <laughs> game that basically kills your entire party? Yeah, I still wish your healing was an AoE, and I'm not talking about just on field, because I know in multiplayer she's an AoE healer, but. Not just single target, but her heal is basically Kokomi's. It's like it's just whoever's on field. So if you're in co-op, you're gonna heal everyone. But if you're single player, yeah, it would be nice if Farina's heal considering could that get... she kills everyone. Yeah, it would be kind of a nice like. Okay, so the attack version of Farina kills everyone, and the healing version of Farina heals everyone. That would because be cool. Her ultimate goes off of that. That would that, would, that would be that would cool. Be nice. It may be too good though. Her alt would be blasted. Her at that alt point. is already really good. The only downside is once you kind of yeah. get everyone half. Okay, do you want me to give you the real reason of why it doesn't heal everyone? Why? Because you need to buy constellations. They want you to buy cons. Ah, ah! I really do like that design. Okay, voice. Voice reveal. Look at that! Wow. Hi, cool what? In the cool shoes. Okay, now they're just showing off. This is a sick design. Mm-hmm. Uh, Miss Chiori? Okay. <sighs> Your talk with the investor sure went fast. The Aquabus hasn't even arrived yet. Wait! What is that smug? Look! Wait! Also, not what I was expecting. Yeah, you're, no, a lot and lot, you're a lot more soft-spoken than I thought you would be. Yeah, a slightly different voice than I had envisioned, but it's good. Very good. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm loving the smug look that she's got built in, though. The very slight smug. Uh-huh. Oh. And who are they? Ah, uh, allow me to introduce you. This is the Traveler and Paimon. Pleased to meet you. Very, like, formal. Mm-hmm. They said she was blunt. I thought, <laughs> all right. Maybe she just says, like, if you look ugly or not, if you, like, wear bad clothing and they don't match and everything, she's like, man, you are hideous. Get out of that. Just dead. Ugh. I know my fashion sense sucks. I know. Bro. She would be an excellent oh, bard. Oh, she's Geo. That makes she's sense with Geo? the color scheme. Are you sure? I mean, I'm not saying because obviously she's Geo, but like, what? What does that mean? I mean, her color scheme, I guess, screams Geo because every Geo character has the exact same color for some reason. I mean, but still, I was not expecting Geo, to be honest. I thought maybe Lightning because Inazuma or something. Well, then she would be purple. <laughs> you know it to be true. It's not necessarily true. Then why does every Geo character have the exact same color pattern? I don't know. I just I I'm 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 bothered by this because yes, in Genshin it seems like all the characters mo or most let me correct myself. Most of the characters wear their element as a color. Which actually makes sense for her because she's a fashion person and she'd probably want it to match her vision. But then at the same time, then I look at games like Star Rail. Well, I have no idea whose element is what. Mm. Because Luca... Luca's physical somehow. Luca's physical, and I still <laughs> he, am thrown by that. He screams pyro, or fire, whatever. What is it called? Fi fire, fire, and But if he was rail. a Genshin character, he would be fire. pyro. And there no, would just be no to doubt screw about with the it. player base, he'd be cryo. Come on. He would be. He would be cryo. You'd have to make him cryo. Okay. Likewise. We've heard the owner of Chioria Boutique is a skilled seamstress, so it's a real pleasure to finally meet you in person. Can we finally has a, have a cosmetic for our character? Uh, either way, just... Yep. Yeah, yeah. Obvious. Great it's design. Great. Why, thank you. I strove to create an outfit that matched her high social station as the demoiselle. Oh. Mm. So tell me, what happened? I can tell the conversation didn't go quite as expected. Ah, well, it's like this. <sighs> I know, I know, Chiori, you don't have to say it. You did remind me that this investor was a little bit sketchy. Yep. Yes, there's no doubt about that. You should also never do a contract that says you can never work with anyone else, even if they ditch you for the festival. 
but how could I pass it up? <laughs> he offered me twice as much as the others. Yeah, he also had a terrible stipulation with it. And therein lies the problem. Yes, but just put yourself in my shoes. After obtaining such an excellent script, it's only natural that I would want to make the most of the film. The budgets that the others had proposed were nowhere near enough. It's difficult to find someone willing to front such a large amount of Mora, so... Don't be sad, Xavier. We might be able to help scrounge up some more together for you. Oh, thank you, Paimon. That means a lot to me. But the cost of the film is staggering. I'm afraid that any Mora we can scrounge together in a short amount of time won't even be able to cover the actor's fees. Bertha, what? We need to move on. What's happened has already happened, and there's no changing it. But now's not the time to give up. What? You're saying that you have a plan? No, that's not mm. what I mean. I'm simply saying I wouldn't give up just yet. The actors I recommended aren't just after Mora after all. Wait, who could they be? Anyone. Obviously Ito. Take it! It's... it's... Them finally explaining why she has that outfit. Really? Then where do you live? Oh! Aw, she's being friendly with them. We Maluzines live in Marisee Village. The only way to enter is from underwater. Oh, you must be pretty tired after work every day, right? I mean, you have to swim all that way just to go home. You're so thoughtful. But some Melusines choose to live in the Court of Fontaine because it's so much more convenient. Yeah. Bro, we haven't seen a Yato. Oh, we've arrived. But I haven't even been chatting with Abel yet. But <laughs> I know. But like, seriously. I also enjoyed Abel's okay, introductions doing it on to its Fontaine own. along the way. Everything you described was so clear and detailed that we can't help but want to hear more. Dang. Thank you so much. I'm usually working here. It's doing it on its own, its own man. So Don't look at me. To see you, again. you trolling me? No, I'm not pressing a thing. Many more places I'd like to introduce to you. <laughs> okay, now it's done. No, it's not. <laughs> I didn't even have autoplay on. That was a very wholesome cutscene. That Welcome was very cute. No, so I'm sorry for when I had to jump off of that one tear thing. Okay, now I think I'm safe. It's been like two years since we've seen Ayato, right? The Boba Boy, yeah. Yeah, it's been like two, almost three years, I think. Which mm -hmm. is crazy to think about. That poor guy needs more events. Mm -hmm. Okay. Also, wow, we have a reason why she's wearing her Fontaine outfit now. Or her spring outfit? Mm -hmm. The Ayaka thing? Yeah. <sighs> Chiori, you sure have changed a lot. This is the first time we've seen you since you left Inazuma. Wait, remind me, is Chiori the one who's designed, like, every skin outfit in the game? Uh, no. Okay. Just a few. Just a few of them. She, I know she did Linny's and Lynette's. Gotcha. And she did, uh, Kia Kiarara's. Kiarara's, yeah. And she did, um... Navia's. Navia's, yeah. Okay. And any other ones? I have no idea. Maybe she designed that one? I don't know. We'll find out! I haven't realized it's been so long. I was in such a rush when I left that I didn't even get to say goodbye. Thank you for extending the invitation, Mr. Xavier. I'm looking forward to a fruitful trip here in Fontaine. Oh, it's an honor to have the head of the Kamisato clan visit us. So they are who you meant when you said you had actors coming from Inazuma? Oh? It's the Traveler and Paimon. Yo! Wow, what a coincidence! Ayaka and I were just talking about you on the way here. Are you also here for the film? Yeah, sure. I yes. I ran into Xavier earlier and came over with him. <laughs> but I'm not an actress. Sir Kamisato and Lady Ayaka are the real actors here. I'm just tagging along with Ayaka to have a good time together. Oh. Hmm. Uh, I thought I would always get the lead role. What? what? Uh, about that, I mean... How was I supposed to contact you when I was making preparations for the film? I figured you were probably busy, and I didn't want to disturb you. Okay, my headcanon version of the Traveler would have never said that. 
Oh, well. <laughs> so I could only keep you in the back of my mind while I sought other actors to play the lead roles in the film. <laughs> yeah, sit down, mm. player character. <laughs> I had been thinking about a surprise reunion with you during our trip here, but you still managed to surprise me first. Mm. Oh. oh, so you all know each other already. <laughs> my, what a coincidence. What are the chances everyone could be brought together here like this? Man, what are the chances? It's like a scripted event or Why something. Why don't we go to Hotel de Boer and catch up over a meal? I've already made a reservation. Mm -hmm. Huh? Did you reserve two spots for us, too? Yes, of course, of course. I'll be sure to tell the boss to serve a few more delicious dishes just to make sure there'll be enough food. Mm. Very well. Then please, kindly lead the way, Mr. Xavier. Is this where the budget's going? The food? Maybe. Wow, the buildings in Fontaine are so tall. Just look at how big they are. That would be crazy coming from Inazuma. And there's the fountain that Aval mentioned earlier. It really is a magnificent sight. It is. And look at that huge spinning sphere. Where does it get its power? <gasps> Wait a sec. Could it be one of those clockwork mecha we've heard so much about? Mm, maybe? You know, it's definitely clockwork. I Would this be considered a mecha thing? Mm -hmm. Is it part robot? It is like floating and doing things. I'm still surprised it never came into play during the main story, but you know, it looks cool, and that's it. That's uh, that's that all you need. Is, that is actually about it. That's all. That's all you need in life. Good job. Just, just look cool. Oh, it's not all you need in life. Do not listen to me. Whoa, is that a new thing? The quick select? I don't know. Why I thought I had Yalon. Oh well. What are you talking about? This is obviously Elon you're playing right now. This it's is alright, I'm zooming. Right you're now. zooming so like fast. lightning and everything. Oh yeah. Kachow. Kachow. <laughs> you're gonna cry? I'm does, gonna walk there like a plebeian. Does the uh, new Sealy, by the way, float in like a bubble? Or does it mm. float normal? I think so it this normal. is what food from Fontaine is like. It sure is different from what we have in Inazuma. How should I describe it? French. It seems like you have to go through a lot more uh, steps to make them. And the flavor has many layers, too. <laughs> like, your description. It's French. What do you expect? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tastes good. It, indeed. Ah, uh, yes. When I first went to Inazuma, I actually thought the food there tasted a little too bland. It took some time for me to get used to it. Ow. Let's get back to the purpose of this trip for a moment, shall we? How have preparations for the film been coming along, Mr. Xavier? Well, I've already assembled most of the film crew. A lighting specialist, a prop manager, and a costume designer. I've also bought the copyrights from the novel's author. That's nice. Oh, it's called The Two Musketeers, right? I read the script you sent me on the way here. The story is pretty good. Okay, it's really Originally, called The Two Musketeers. I was planning to start Why filming not? as soon as Sir Kamisato and Lady Ayaka arrived in Fontaine, but uh, I'm afraid I've run into a bit of a problem. Oh, what is it? Well, it has to do with the film's investor, Mr. Morris. He suddenly informed me this morning that he's encountered some financial trouble and will be unable to release to me the amount of funding agreed upon. It's said mm. that Fontaine's legal system is well developed. If he has violated the contract, then can't you simply take him to court over the matter? Ah, well, I'm still more concerned about filming. Even if I were to take him to court, I'm afraid it would take months before the case could even be heard. Ow. Yeah. Then, is there a way we could raise funds ourselves to solve the problem? Because of I've course. considered that option too, but unfortunately, it's difficult to gather such a large amount of mora on such short notice. Besides, we have to consider the film festival submission deadline. Hmm. Mr. Xavier, if Ayaka and I were willing to perform for free, would that resolve the problem you are currently facing? It's going to be the obvious trope uh, or uh, 
not trope, that's not the right word I'm looking for, but it's just gonna be the guy probably hired to him and gave him the contract so he could kick him out of the race. He's probably got another probably another like group of people making movies and he'd rather them win. Most likely. What? Uh, no, out of the question to have you come all this way just to act for free? Oh, no, 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 that won't do. There's no need to worry, Mr. Xavier. My brother and I had actually intended to work for free after receiving your invitation. Probably should have told him that. <laughs> Inazuma has only recently reopened its borders and needs to strengthen its relations and cultural ties with other nations. We didn't have many collaboration projects with Fontaine in the past, so we hoped this trip would serve as a good start for the future. Indeed. You could say that's the real reason why the Ashiro Commission agreed to come to Fontaine. I understand, but having you two act for free just doesn't seem right. Not at all. While we're officially here to conduct a cultural survey of sorts, we must express our sincerity if we want to establish formal cultural ties with your nation. This film will serve as proof of friendly cooperation and cultural exchange between Inazuma and Fontaine. It's my hope that the film can be finished and released as smoothly as possible. If you still don't feel comfortable with this arrangement, I would also be more than happy to be introduced to some other renowned individuals in Fontaine's literary and artistic circles. Hmm, sure. Pay him another way. That was interesting. Yeah, the PC's screen turned off. It's back. I'm sure that's fine. Uh, uh, all right. I'll do as you say. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'll make sure to cobble together enough more and now, even if it means selling my house, Please my don't. camera, and every single family heirloom. Maybe not the second one, because then you can't do it at all. Come on yeah. now. No need to go that far. I'll also help you out as a brand sponsor. Dang. Sure, we can help too. Me too. Even though I didn't bring much more to spend on this trip, it's still better than nothing. You are too kind, all of you. I, I really don't know how to... <laughs> Ugh, ew. All right, enough about that. Did you just go at you? Now that yep. we have Xavier's savings, my support, and two leads who are willing to act for free, I think we will be able to make this happen. So, instead of Mora, you'll help with filming and production. All right. Okay, that sounds awesome. Oh, but how can we help with that? We don't know much about making a film. All right. Pull yourself together, Xavier. Tell us if there are still any open positions left among the crew. Uh, oh, uh, all right. Uh, let me think. We still need a camera operator, a clapper loader, and someone to manage logistics. I feel like those are some basic needs. I originally What's a wanted clapper to loader? serve as director, but I've been too busy working as the producer. So the positions of director and director's assistant will also need to be filled. I'm the what? director hmm? and the logistics support person do, but what's a clapper loader? Yeah, exactly. The clapper loader is responsible for using the clapper board to record and organize the information of each shot. When the camera operator begins shooting, the work requires both patience and careful attention to detail. It's that thing. Yeah, no, I got that, but yikes. A clapper board? Oh, you mean the thing they hold that goes clap whenever they start filming? Yep. Yes, that's right. Are you interested in that job? For sure, Paimon's always wanted to try that. <laughs> All right, then you'll be our clapper leader. <laughs> I can find someone from the store to help with logistics. What do you think, Xavier? That sounds so wholesome, just Paimon floating around with a little, like, clap thing. Maybe a little too heavy for her. Well, we'll find out. Oh, fine by me. As for our camera operator, I was thinking of letting the traveler take the role. You want us? Oh, you, you he's what? great when it comes to using a camera. Paimon can't even count how many things we've taken photos of during our journey. How many things we've been forced to take photos of, you mean? Wait, um, I don't know if I want this job. Yes, that's also what I was thinking. I noticed the traveler had an eye for photography and composition when we worked together previously. Okay, yo, yeah. dude, I love... I love taking pictures in real life and taking video and all that stuff like that. That's real fun. But in a video game, how the freak are we going to do this? 
Easy, we stand where we're told. Oh, I guess. I'm sure that's due to the traveler's journey across Devat and all the places they've seen. After so many adventures, using a camera must be second nature by now. Yeah! Really, yeah. Really, not really. What do you... Well, we're doomed. What do you say, Traveler? Are you interested in the job? Your movie is in so much trouble. As long as I'll be able to help. Thank you. It really means a lot to me. Come on, friend. Let me give you a big warm hug. Ah, uh, okay. okay. <laughs> I think it's time to work. So, all that's left for you don't want hugs? Is a director Wasn't an, an option. Oh, me, me, me. I want to be the director's assistant. All we need to do is help the director, right? I can handle that. Motivation. Right, then all we need is a director. Oh, all the well-known directors in Fontaine are probably also busy working on their own films these days. I'm not sure who will have time to help. Who could it be, I wonder? Oh, Farina helped out a theater troupe recently by serving as an artistic consultant. She could be a good director, right? Besides, mm -hmm. it's not like she has anything else to do right now. Dang. F F F Farina? Yeah. Uh, do you really think Lady Farina would be willing to help us with our humble project? I don't know. Her choice. <laughs> Isn't that the name of Fontaine's Hydro Archon? My brother has already informed me about what happened here in Fontaine. Yeah, it was, uh, it was something. Yep, that's her! She helped out a theater troupe not too long ago, and now she's taking up work as a director! I'm still confused on how Fontaine drowned, but everywhere else was fine, even though Fontaine's on a plateau above everyone else. Uh, no, Fontaine is below. You go down for Fontaine. Wait, no, no the you entirety. go down and then you go up. The entirety of Fontaine was underwater. Yeah, I have no idea about that. Like if it was just the city, that makes sense, but... Yeah, because to get to the elevator, you had to fly down the drop, but then you go right back up. And I have no freaking clue. You're still, then you go onto the big platform. Uh, Plateau thing. Maybe Leeway was just a little wet. Maybe Sumeru and Leeway, Mons like the desert. Dad, the entirety of Tavat. De desert was just like a little little soggy for like a day. Well, I know, but if it's high enough to drown Fontaine, which is on a plateau, that's like a lot more water for everyone else. I'd have to go to the edge of Sumeru again and see how high it is up, honestly. It's pretty you, high. You can see it from there. I don't know. Considering that you can see it all from Mondstadt, and it's higher than Mondstadt. No idea. Well, uh... I saw that musical. Her performance was perfect, and the storyboards were also excellent. Don't let her form or identity intimidate you. She's the best candidate we can think of right now. You'll never know until you give her a shot. By the way, is that a snail poking out of your outfit? Oh, uh, that's the thing on her waist. But I know, but it, it looks like a, like a snail. Looks like a snail. Look like eyeballs. I feel like they're not gonna open up and stare at me. Just gonna I can see deep so Fine, you're right, Chiori. I'll do anything for the sake of my film. Anything! As long as it's not murder. <laughs> I was thinking I'll that! I'll have to ask the Traveler and Paimon to show me the way to Lady Farina's residence. I, I, I will do anything- she'll agree to help. I will do anything for my film, even make the competition disappear. <laughs> While effective, uh, poor in hindsight. It's do very illegal. to also come along? And bad and wrong. Uh, yes, we'll come along. No, there's no need to Never trouble mind. you with this. Besides, you've just arrived in Fontaine, and I'm sure there are many places you would like to visit. Just leave this task to me. It's part of my duties as the producer. Very well. Then we'll be waiting to hear the good news. I'll go with you. By the way, you might want to consider bringing a gift. And don't worry, we won't simply drop you off at Farina's place. We know Farina pretty well by now, so having some familiar faces there should help your chances. Besides, the whole thing was our idea in the first place. Uh, we need bring some cake. All right, then I'll start making preparations. As for the gift... Cake! Hmm. A gift for someone who was once seen as the Hydro Archon. I wonder what she would like. I don't know, any heartfelt gift, probably. Cake. I recall that Lady Farina once fancied a clockwork ring. So perhaps I should get another exquisite clockwork contraption for her. What? Mm. That sounds Hi. cool. Can't we just bring some desserts, like the Fontanelia mousse? Yes. Mm. Mm, but wouldn't that be a little too cheap? She does like desserts, though. Mm -hmm. Isn't the Fontanelia festival happening right now? 
I heard Evil tell us on the Uncle Bus that Farina introduced the tradition of going door to door and asking for sweets. Wait, Farina made this holiday? Yeah, or the adjustment. I love it. To do something like that, she must have a real sweet tooth. No, yes. I mean, going door to door asking for water is a little boring, admittedly. Cute meaning behind it, but at the same time, it, it is water. <laughs> In a country of water. I agree with Yoimiya. If the gift is too fancy, it might actually make her feel more uncomfortable. Alright then, let's go buy some Fontanalia mousse! Transition! Okay! I guess but we would bought that it. would really be enough? We'll be asking her to do a lot of work, you know. Well, then we can buy her five. I don't know. Hmm, you're right. We need to further sweeten the deal. Huh? You want something even sweeter than Fontanella mousse? Yes, we'll need a gift that's sweeter than any dessert in the world. And that is... Oh, what could that be? <laughs> Your words of praise. Oh, yeah, that would do it. <laughs> Dang, Brainy needs a hug. Brainy <laughs> uh, just needs a friend and a hug, my dudes. I love before 4.2, everyone was dunking on her. And then afterwards, everyone just wanted to hug her. I don't know what you're talking about. I thought she needed a hug from the very beginning. Well, I mean, yeah, but... The moment she introduced herself, you can see in our past playthrough, I was just like, okay, theory crafting time and everything. It's like, okay, something's up. This girl needs a friend. That's just. Why on earth do I not have that? Oh, that's right. I don't have actually in Zuma wings yet. I was working on that. I mean, those wings look it. Yeah, they don't really fetter it that well. <sighs> just, just take it. It's better than the freaking plain default wings. Okay, I'll go knock on the door. <laughs> Guy's kind of nervous. I mean, he's not going to walk up to the, you know, ex Archon. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, coming, coming. Ugh. Seriously, who's knocking before afternoon? <laughs> <laughs> what a mood! Uh -huh. Who are you? Hello. <clears throat> Lady Farina, please allow me to introduce myself. I am Xavier, a film director. Hello. Oh, is that the traveler in Paimon I see behind you? And who's this? I'm Chiori. Ah, oh, the one from Chioria Boutique. Hello, hello. I assume your outfit was made by her too? So, what Maybe? are you all doing here? Well, actually, no, she's uh, do you need something? Oh. Did you just get up, Farina? It's already past noon, you know. Try to be nice. Huh? Oh, I... Uh, Paima means the weather is so nice in the afternoon and the sun is so warm. Just like how you make us feel. Sleeping in late is a really smart idea. What in the freak is happening? What? Uh, <laughs> no. I was just up late last night reading some novels. I feel that. Uh, what does sleeping in have to do with the weather? That's <laughs> a great question. I have no idea. <laughs> <sighs> this Whoever is wrote a small that? Gift we've prepared for you, Lady Farina. We hope you like it. No need to be so formal. I'm just a regular person like everyone else now. Oh, is this Fontanalia Moose? <laughs> it's one of my favorites. We win. Checkmate. That's great. It's already done. So actually, there's something we need your help with. Mm. Given your renowned passion and understanding of drama, I would like to ask that you serve as the director of our film crew. Oh, but didn't you just say that you're a director? Yes, but for this particular project, I'm mainly working as a producer. Besides, I'm sure that your understanding of the performing arts far surpasses my own, Lady Farina. Flattery. It works. Sometimes. Are 
Are the Traveler and Paimon also part of the film crew? Yep, yep. Yep, we sure are. Paimon's the clapper loader and he's the camera operator. Camera operator? That can be a pretty technical job, and it directly affects the final quality of the film. Are you really up to it? Nope. I have the experience, and I can show you if you like. We do not have the experience, and we cannot show you, even if you ask us to. Boom. No, I'm not questioning your abilities. It's just that I've never really seen you use a camera before. Neither have I, being in all honesty, really. Maybe you can come up with a test for the Traveler and see for yourself. Oh, no. If he can satisfy you with his camera skills, then you'd have nothing to worry about and can join the team. What do you say? Uh, you sure are getting better at rolling with the situation, Paimon. Hmm. Oh, I do wish to see how skilled the Traveler really is with a camera. All right. How about this? We'll work with what we have. I'll give you some scenarios and see if your work is up to my standards. Sure, no problem, or whatever you say, Director. Top one, I think. I think. Wow. Solax with your director. Solax? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm casual, you know? I'm a very Pretty casual good. person. It's essential for the camera operator to understand the director's vision. I'll make my decision after seeing your work. <laughs> this is a very true statement, actually, when it comes to cinematography and camera workers, when it, like, for movies, TV shows, anything. Because the director has a vision, and usually the camera people... There's, there's two types of people, I feel like, at least. There, there's actually many more types, but there's two main types of people. Cameramen and women that are going to go with what the director says, mm -hmm. even if it's bad. Or there's camera people that have their own vision, and I feel like the best type of camera person can be the one that's like, I see where the director's going for, but I also can make tweaks here and there when they like see a bad thing or a good thing. They're like, okay, I can nail this. Until the director overrules you. Until the director yells at you for not doing the thing they told you to do. Then in those scenarios, it sucks. And if it's the bad thing you gotta do, then you just gotta do it. Because directors. Yay! Are you ready? I have high standards, you know. I'm ready. So okay. Bad. Grab the camera and I'll give you a scenario. I mean, we, we're not doomed because it's all going to be scripted, but still. Estelle's the boss of the... Oh, Estelle. I said Estelle. Oh, I, I thought you said Estelle. It's the boss of... Beaumont? Beaumont Workshop. And has always been proud of her fortune machine, as it can only... Can, as it can not only precisely control the strength of temperature... Yeah, the strength of temperature of temperature. What? Can only precisely control strength of temperature. Yeah, you nailed it. That's a weird sentence. But also takes no effort from the blacksmith. Let's film a promotional video for her workshop. Remember to emphasize the superiority of our forging machine. Indeed. Oh, what is this? Oh, we're putting it all together. We're editing. Wait, no, crap. You need to film several shots according to the director's requ requirements and compile them into a video. Camera positioning is key and you should take you should ass ascertain ascertain uh, the camera position requirements beforehand. I know English. When filming there will be a narration there will be narration requirements. Select the most suitable narration according to the story. Try to satisfy all the director's filming requirements after selecting the most suitable choices of all the camera positions and narration. You may begin filming and see the results. Okay, so select narration to give us a clue what she wants. Located in the Court of Fontaine, that... What we already The said. workshop is a weapon workshop that utilizes a forging machine. We know where it is. So. Does it want all three or just now one? Now we just have to select which one. That shows off the workshop. I guess this is more of a shot of the workshop, but this is more of an overall shot. But I guess this is what it wants. Right? I, yeah, it doesn't ask for the girl, so probably not the one on the right. 
Between the one on the left and the middle one, I'm not sure. I actually like both, but it probably wants this if, one. If you're asking me what's my favorite, the one on the left, but the actual- Oh, wait, it gives us a description. A position which you can take Oh, it makes it hard to see. Yeah, okay. Okay, so it's probably this one. Yeah, I think it wants just the actual inside workshop. Yeah, that's probably it. Yeah, because it talked about wanting the forge and all that, too. Oh, wait, no. Does it want scale? Oh. Maybe it does want the one on the right. Yeah, it wants that one. Okay. Okay. Because it wants scale, I see. Gotcha. Oh, that is smart. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I guess that's what it wants. Okay. The next one. Uh, this machine can precisely control the supply. Perfect for doing exhausting and time consuming work. Uh, probably wants that. that Obviously the flower, clearly. Clearly the flower. Uh, you a scene that shows off the atmosphere of Estelle's wor Wait. Oh, oh, atmosphere as Estelle works relaxedly. Well, then it's probably her sipping tea. Enjoys her day at work. <laughs> Do we get to see it? Are we going to be able to watch this after we're done? I hope so. Okay, well now it's just taking it easy on us. Yeah, boxes. Okay, cool. We got that. Boom. And then, uh, Wait. yeah, yeah okay. it's, it's that one. And then you need a scene that shows off the sh workshop. So, uh, well, that's what? the logo. Logo or the actual workshop? Um, um <sighs> modern man within the frame and as well, detailed performance. It's a sign. I was about to say, what well-detailed performances? Uh, okay. This position. Um, take a pot this shot. This one? See what the narrative is. If weapons are what you want, look no further than Belmont. Okay, well that's, that'd be this. Probably that's that the, one. That's like the advertisement of it. That's yeah, sign. go with that then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Select narrative. Boom. Start shooting. I <laughs> hope this is right. Here we go. First try. Let's go. Boom. Oh, here we go. Yep. Why oh, she looks so angry? She does. She looks... Or, no, determined. Obviously determined. Oh, please come down. No, come down. No! Darn it. That would have been such a good shot. The timing! Oh, now it comes down. Oh, now it comes down. <laughs> Is that good? Oh, it appears that you have more skill than I thought. Nailed it! Oh. All the shots had a great composition, and I could really feel a connection to the characters and their lines. Did you what? So what's the verdict? Yeah! Does that mean you agree to be our director, Farina? <laughs> Did you think I would agree just like that? After our performance of the Little Oceaned, I've begun to make a name for myself again. You know. I ha I have to admit though, the uh, the the inner editor in me screamed when the thing didn't drop down on the rock. I know. Because it came down in the first shot and it lifted all the way up in the air. It doesn't matter if that's not real time. The next shot should have been like right before the cutaway and everything. It was so cool and ready to be awesome. Too bad. Uh. In fact, I've already had several troops approach me for the Fontanalia Film Festival. Unfortunately, the scripts were all pretty boring and didn't pique my interest. Oof. Hmm. If others were to find out I agreed to work with you so easily, then, well. We'll buy you cake. Hey, but didn't we have a deal? What else do we need to do to convince you, Farina? Uh, well, what about the pay? Ah, uh, what pay? Huh? You know, how much you're willing to pay me to be the director? The pay is also an important factor for me to consider, you know. It, yeah, it is. It is. Well, uh, I can offer you this much? In terms of money, uh, we have no money. <laughs> what? That's all? If Nervilat were to hear of this, he could charge you with underpaying your labor. Yeah. 
Probably a bit of a crime. I'm sorry, but our crew is in a tight financial spot at the moment. Can we pay you next month? <laughs> Five percent interest. Whoa! No, thirty. Come on. We're the ones having to pay. Yeah. Yeah, but Dale, you're the one who always advocates that workers need to be paid, like, properly. Yeah, I know, but we're already giving 5% interest. On money we Okay, bump have. it up by 25%. I'm gonna throw you out. <laughs> you're gonna throw me out? Oh, man. I real, see. real scary. Well, even though it's highly unlikely now that I'll join your crew, there's still something I'd like to ask. Exactly what film are you planning to make? Ah, it's the book you stayed up all night reading. Uh, oh, right. Uh, our script is an adaptation of The Two Musketeers. You're so right. Huh? Wait, you mean the suspense thriller novel that was a number one bestseller? Yes. Yep. Oh, so Farina's read it too. Of course I read it. I've always had a keen interest in artistic works that strike a chord with the populace. Mm -hmm. Also helps distract you from the hundreds of years of boredom. Mm -hmm. I see. It all makes sense now. You must have used most of the budget to pay for the copyright. Uh, not really. The novel's author transferred the copyright to me practically for free once he heard that I wanted to make a film adaptation of the story. The lack of budget is due to another issue. He probably really? just wants to get his name out there. So, Mora isn't the most important thing to him right now. I mean, his name is out there, though. It was He's a best-seller. a best-selling number one author. Okay, admittedly, in real life, it's pretty easy to become a best-selling author. But... True. Because basically, you just pay for it. That's the honest truth. But... But, in uh, fiction, that's probably hard. In so, real life, you just pay for it. You really, yeah. It reminds me of a delivery courier who wears one of my designs while traveling all across Tavat. I didn't charge her much for the outfit either. The exposure she provides for my brand is well worth it. Uh. So, are you a big fan of this story, Farina? Oh, dude, well, I'm sure. Uh, it's all right. Uh huh. The pacing mm -hmm. of the story is good, but the character relationships could use some work. When I was reading it before, I always felt like some things were left on a rather unsatisfactory note. I have high standards, you know. Mm. Yeah, it's your time. Ahem. Mr. Xavier, if, hypothetically speaking, I agree to be the director, how much freedom would I have in terms of script revisions and creative interpretation? You are free to do whatever uh, as you want. Much as you want. Whatever gets you on board. Uh, oh, oh, as much freedom as you would need. I wouldn't dare doubt the <laughs> tastes of Fontaine's greatest star. Uh, okay. As, as wholesome as this is, because I love Farina, and her getting full control is awesome, but I, I do feel bad for the original author, who's just, like, crying right now. Well, let's, let's, boom! It's time to make this story into something completely different, because, yes. I mean, if you make it better. Okay, yeah, if you make it better, then hey, that sounds great. Honestly. That's the risk of when you, when I change something. Because if it's terrible, people are going to eat you alive. <laughs> yep. And rightfully so. Good. Then I'm free to alter the script as I see fit. <laughs> Where's Only this going? works out if it's good. Where's this going? Absolutely no problem. I may, well, yeah, sure. We're I'm counting hope. on you. Yeah, I'm going to hope that it's good. Now's the chance to make a film you love. Hmm. All right. It seems that your crew really can't go on without my care and direction. <coughs> oh, you know it. Oh, whatever gets you on board. So, you agree? Yes. Yeah. I agree. Although the pay is well below what someone of my caliber deserves. A great script calls for a great director. The twinkle. <laughs> yeah, Farina's my favorite. <laughs> uh, Archon. I mustn't let a perfectly good story be ruined due to lack of funds. If you have fine cheese and bread, you wouldn't just let it sit on the counter and get moldy just because you lack an oven, right? Hmm? Depends on the type of cheese. Oh, Hydro Archon above! I'm not dreaming, am I? Somebody pinch me. 
Nah, you good, Aren't man. You? you good. What? What? <laughs> There's no more Hydro Archon, you know. And it's still a little early to celebrate. There's a lot that goes into shooting a film. Although the trickiest tasks of finalizing the script and casting the actors have already been taken care of, we'll still need to reserve filming locations. Not to say set up lighting and props. So how does that one girl get involved in And this? Uh, by the way, since we'll be filming the two musketeers, we'll need to find an action choreographer. Ideally, a professional who has actual experience with muskets. Ah. That's how. Yes, I've thought about this as well. I was hoping that you might know someone who could handle the job. Me? Hmm. If this was before, I could have simply asked Florand. But it's already been some time since I last talked to her. She also used more pistols. Navia can also use firearms. But unfortunately, her style is quite different from that of the characters in the story. Yeah, umbrella shotguns aren't exactly muskets. Could we ask the Special Security and Surveillance Patrol? Oh, you mean the Special Patrol's musketeers? Yes, that's right. They work with muskets every day. I can't think of anyone more qualified than them. Hmm. They would be under Nervilette's jurisdiction. Unfortunately, I, uh... Don't have any connection with them at all. Eh, oh. just ask, uh, just, just ask him. He'll probably give you the A-okay. Hmm. So, in the end, we still have to start by talking to Nervalette. Yep. No need to go to all that trouble. I know their Captain Chevras. Aw. Oh, you do? Wait, Chiori, how do you know the Captain of the Special Patrol's Musketeers? Have you seen her outfit? No particular reason. Running a business means dealing with some trouble from time to time, and she's helped me out on a few occasions. Oh, or never mind. In return, I've helped her handle a few situations in which the special patrol couldn't get involved directly. So, we've gotten to know each other over time. Bro, what do you mean by that? <laughs> I really hope this girl, like, fights with, like, sewing needles or something. That would be amazing. Oh, like, you mean like a catalyst? Yeah, probably it would be a catalyst user, and then oh. you'd use like sewing needles and stuff. It'd be our first five star geo catalyst. S maybe I don't know if she's a five star. I don't know. We're gonna have to wait and see. Let me have this. You're gonna okay. I'm gonna let you have that then. Uh, so you're saying there's been times when the special patrol needed a fashion designer to handle a situation? Your work is becoming more and more mysterious. It'd be best to keep it that way. Anyway, enough about that. What do you all think about asking the captain to be our musket action choreographer? If we're allowed to do that, sure. She sounds professional enough. She is a captain after all. <laughs> I have no objections. Hmm. But I imagine the special security and surveillance patrol must be busy with their duties. Do you think she'd really have time to help with shooting a film? And then there's the issue of pay. Hmm. Well... It just so happens that she's also not the kind of person that's just after Mora. As for whether she has time, I'll have to go and ask her first. Hmm. Then I'll leave that to you. Macaroni's on sale today, so I've got to go. You can just tell me how things went when we discuss tomorrow's plan later. No problem. <laughs> Having Farina join feels like a big do we have a cooking event where we help Farina, like, make other dishes other than macaroni? <laughs> okay, I, I was just wondering about that. Not, not that, but I was wondering, can we make macaroni? Is that a recipe that we have? Maybe. At the moment? And if so, I'm assuming that's her favorite dish when she makes stuff. Prop, what's the only dish she can make at the moment? I, I kind of want to see what Farina's macaroni looks just like. wait until the day of our premiere. You'll witness the true power of my name in these lands. <laughs> You'll be so glad I agreed to help. I can guarantee that even the standing tickets will be sold out. Nice. I'll be sure to ask some people I know to see if they'd be willing to act as extras. Oh, sick. <laughs> Seems like you're finally getting more comfortable with your own reputation now. I didn't ask for the Clapper Loader's commentary, Paimon. Wow. Can't wait to see it. Then let's get going. I happen to know where Chevros is today. 
Cool. By the way, I'm curious. If my pay is so low, then what about our two lead actors? Didn't they travel here all the way from Inazuma? Actually, they told us that they see the trip as part of a cultural exchange, so they didn't ask for any pay. I'm literally not paying our lead actors. Help, I'm not paying anyone. <laughs> what? So is every person into that who doesn't want money gathered here to shoot this film? Don't tell me Chiori isn't being paid either. No, she's paying us, actually. She's paying us. <laughs> I already knew Xavier from before. And he's also agreed to give my brand some good exposure. There you go. It seems the gods have really smiled upon you, Xavier. <laughs> and that certainly doesn't include me, mind yeah. you. Dang. You know, it actually makes sense, though, for Chiori to just want exposure for her payment because she's rich, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm pretty it's like, sure. If you're, if you're... If you're already well established and you've got good income coming in, to be like, yo, I'll just do it for the exposure, that actually makes a lot of sense to me. That does make a bit. Since like I, I get to put myself in a movie. I think nowadays though, brands, don't they usually get paid a lot while also getting exposure? It kinda <laughs> depends on the project. Something like that. Just I Farina. <gasps> Farina Besides the macaroni, I should also pick up some tomato sauce. I need to look up all the freaking secret interactions in this event. Before we miss any sense, we'll be speedrunning. Yeah, because this is the part one, right? Besides the macaron. Yeah, what is this? This is guns and muskets? No, roses and musk. What the frick is this called? This event? Oh. Uh, this is the cracks of muskets breaking this out. Cracks of muskets. But the event is called roses and muskets. You booger! Uh, what? I said this part is called. I never said the quest. Roses and muskets. Secret. Interaction. Interactions. It's been so long. To <laughs> what? Okay. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on, phone. Uh, Roses and Muskets, day one. Secret interactions. Yes. Character locations. Okay, I think I found it. Okay. Let's give me this. Okay, so day one, it looks like. Unless we've already missed some. No, no, there's day one, there's day two, then it jumps to day four. So maybe nothing on three, and then day five. Okay, what's on day one? Day one, Ayaka and Yoimiya at the cafe. Oh, I already missed that one. Wait, wait what? Well, because we probably have No, it's this is still day one, it. right? Well, I mean, it is, but we probably progressed past it. Uh, I don't I mean, think so. It's just, no, it's just the day. We may have to actually finish the full quest for day one. But I I would think that would also kick us immediately into day two. Not this place. No, no, no. Oh. The outdoor cafe where you have to do dailies and stuff. Oh, the outdoor cafe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't say this, that. This is, I said the cafe. That's a restaurant that you went to. Well, that's the place we met them at. Uh, well... Good point. I can see where you got confused. But yeah, no, it's the one uh, directly just out from here, I think. Yeah, to your left. Yo, we me, uh, nope. Ayaka. There they are. There they are. You, you doubted. <laughs> Boom. Here, Yo, Mia. Try some conch madelin. <gasps> no, you ordered it, Ayaka. So you should be the first to try. To be honest, I ordered it for you. You're fond of desserts, aren't you? Aww. <laughs> well, in that case, I guess I shouldn't refuse. Let's try some together. Aww. <laughs> All right. Mmm. What? What? Mm. You're, you guys are so wholesome. What? This is amazing. And now I'm hungry. Oh, the texture is so soft. You can feel the super rich aroma of butter as soon as you take a bite. And the aftertaste is pure bliss. It sounds so Great. good. I'm glad you like it. I enjoyed it too. And I really like the swirly design. I've heard that it's supposed to look like a barrel conch. I've never actually seen one myself, but now I'm really curious about what it looks like. It kind of looks like that. Hey, Ayaka. When you can find the time, would you like to go search for one underwater with me? Oh! Alright. 
why don't we go right after this? Bro, after our meal? Well, I don't know if that's a... And that's planned. Oh, okay. There are so many places I'd like to visit with you. That's so freaking awesome. Okay, uh, then the next place is right here. Uh, so it's the... Yeah, that spot. It's slightly to the, <clears throat> the right. There you go. And they should uh, just be... Uh, this is Chiori and Xavier. Uh, we may have to finish the quest to see these guys, though. Most likely, since they're involved with this current one. Because they should be, like, I think right in front of the water. So, like, right around us. Yeah, no, they're not here. Yeah, no, we have to finish it. I don't know how we finish it, but don't move on immediately to day two. Or maybe they just stay there? Hopefully it's a wait thing. Yeah, I'm gonna hope for, like, oh. a wait <laughs> two hours or two days. That will give us some time to cutscene? Cutscene. Ah, walking over. All right. This is the place. Aha! Uh -huh. um, but where's the captain? There's hardly anyone around here. Maybe it's the person with bright purple hair. She's over there. The one with an eye patch reading in front of the newsstand. could tell there was something different about her. She seems kind of intimidating. Eh, uh, Please no, wait here doesn't. for a moment. I'll go fetch her. She's working now, so you might not want to get in her way. Oh. Working? But isn't she just standing there and reading a novel? Just trust me. What do you mean? Okay. Oh, all right. Let's see what happens then. Wait. She really sure is a mysterious person. She claims just to be a fashion designer, but she knows all these powerful people. No question about it, Paimon. The Court of Fontaine isn't particularly tolerant of visitors from overseas, so it isn't easy for a foreigner to promote their brand here. Even more so in the competitive world of fashion. <laughs> also, Fashion scares me, man. They're also not tolerant of visitors from overseas? Um... Sounds what? Uh, I don't know. I don't think we've ever heard anyone say anything about that, but yeah. Even a local like me just trying to make a film has to face all kinds of challenges. So I can only imagine what Chiori has been through to get where she is today. I'm sure that having more connections has definitely worked in her favor. Usually does. Probably. Reading on the job? <gasps> a detective novel. <laughs> One main character? No. Multiple. Branching storylines. I like okay, this. Okay, code words. I see. How's the plot coming along? One of the main characters is about to make a choice that will affect the rest of his life. I'd wager he's going to make the wrong choice. <laughs> anyway, to speed things up, there's something I need your help with. You know that doesn't depend on me. It all comes down to what the character chooses. Which is exactly why I'm here to help. What? What? <sighs> All right. It appears he made the wrong choice in the end. What? What did he do? Halt! What? I guess this guy is a um thief or peddler, so something, something. Huh? What's going on? Hand over whatever you're holding. Oh, it's just a book. I didn't buy anything else. Then I'm sure you wouldn't mind letting me have a look. Excuse me, officer. I don't mind you standing around here, not purchasing anything. But I'd prefer if you didn't disturb my customers. It's bad for business, you know? Don't give me that act. You won't be able to get off so easily either. Oh? I am Chevrus, Captain of Fontaine's Special Security and Surveillance Patrol. I will say this one last time. Hand over whatever you're holding at once. And before you do anything unwise, let me remind you that I'll have you on the ground before you can even think about making a run for it. By the way, so I think I told you this already, but this is the same voice actress. The comments let us know this. Um, cause it, during the live stream, it was bugging me hmm? the whole time because I thought I knew this voice. This is Futaba from Persona. Oh, yeah. Uh, all right, all right. I'll give it to you. But please let me say something first. If there's any contraband in that book, 
Then the shopkeeper here is the one who slipped it in. I don't have anything to do with this. Well. Why, you trying to leave me on the hook, huh? You were the one who said you wanted it. I don't know what you're talking about, Save shopkeeper. Save the interrogation room. <laughs> you're both Take going down. Atelier. Atelier? Ooh. I do not see a T there. Okay. I mean, I see the T. I don't see the R, though. Or I didn't hear the R. What's going on here? One second you're reading a book and the next you're escorting people away. And who are... Oh. Aren't you the traveler who's been all over the papers recently? Yep. Chiori, I'm assuming what you wanted to ask me about has to do with them, right? Mm hmm Ah, maybe I can let you in on what's happening then. Now that Fashe has been brought to justice, no new shipments of synth will be made and distributed to sellers. The Fontaine guards have been busy collecting the remaining synth still circulating on the market. Ah, Oof. that stuff would be expensive. Thanks to a tip from our reliable source here, this should be the very last batch. Nah, a hollow book. Oh, so you were pretending to read a book in order to catch the bad guys! Oh, Paimon almost forgot to introduce ourselves. Paimon is Paimon, and this is the Traveler and Xavier! Hey, I'm Chevras. You probably already heard me introduce myself, so I won't bother repeating it. I have a question about French, by the way. Which is a dangerous question. But Nivola doesn't have the R, and yet there's, a, there's an R sound. A sound. <clears throat> Clearing my throat, sorry. Uh, Nivola, yeah, so it's like Nervolet or something. Something similar to that. Well, except only some people say that, so... But then, in a lot of these other names, they also have R's clearly written in them when it comes to English, but then there's no R sound. Does an R make a different sound in French? You think English spelling makes any sense? Uh, no. That's why I wanted to ask the have question. Have you looked at the English word for baloney? <laughs> Wait, what are you talking- what is baloney? I only know balogna. Bologna is all I know, Daniel. How on earth does that somehow sound like baloney? I- Again, I don't know what you're talking about, dude. It's Bologna. ba log -na. English makes no sense. <laughs> Bologna, Daniel. Bologna, you know. <laughs> Just like Worcestershire sauce. Jeez. Put a shire at the end of that. Worcestershire shire. <laughs> Stop. Yeah, why didn't you make a move as soon as you had the chance? Were you worried that my intel wasn't accurate? Oh, you. How could you? No. How could you? I wanted to see if the shopkeeper would turn himself in first. Why would he do that? He was back in the cell. All he had to do was come up to me and say that he didn't know where the synth had come from. If he did that, then I wouldn't have had to press charges on him. Yeah. Too bad. He had the whole day to turn the synth over to Shavras. But instead, the moment I came up and blocked Shavras's line of sight, he took the opportunity to sell it off. Yep, he made the wrong choice, even though the right choice was right there in front of him. Aw, yeah. But you knew they wouldn't make the right choice. Yeah, I knew. I was just hoping I'd be wrong for once. Oof. Eh. <laughs> Enough about that, though. What did you want to ask me about? Oh, you see, it's like this. The Two Musketeers. You certainly have a good eye for a story. So what do you need me to do? Just be the action choreographer for the actors? Yep. Yes, that's right. I want to make sure we get all the details right. I want the actor's posture and understanding of firearms to be as realistic as possible. Ah, uh, easy. Put real bullets in it. Hold up. Hmm? I feel like that's not a good idea. What do you mean? That's a bad. That's dangerous. What do you mean? No, dangerous? no, you no. Hmm? You know, we cannot load it's the guns. Realism. No. Yeah, yeah. People actually die in the making of this movie. Like. However, I'm afraid this work will require a bit of your time, since you'll have to be present whenever we're filming. Also, as for the pay. No need to say any more. I'll join. <laughs> okay. Huh? Just like that. This man has been blessed. Really? You're willing to help us with our humble film project? Sure, it's no big deal. As I said, we've wrapped up our investigation here, so I don't have any other tasks on my plate for the moment. 
Nice. Besides, I personally really like this novel. I even have the collector's edition at home. Stories mm. where justice prevails over evil never get old for me. Nice. Then we've got a deal? Yes, I'll see you on set tomorrow. Oh my, I can hardly believe it. I should tell Lady Farina immediately. Oh, and I must tell the prop manager and lighting technician to get everything ready. We start filming tomorrow. Calm down, Xavier. The film is going to take more than just a day to finish. Still, I should also head back now and start preparing the actors' costumes and makeup. Awesome. I guess that's it for today, then. Traveler, Paimon, please stay for a moment. I have something to tell you. Mm okay. Then I'll take Xavier back. Poor thing. He's so excited that he can't even walk straight anymore. <sighs> I don't want to spend our first day fishing our producer out of the fountain. Wait, what? See you tomorrow. Yep, see you tomorrow. Is that the end of day one? I don't or... think so, but they're probably by the fountain now. Or not. That's not them. No, that can... No. No? Huh. I really thought that'd be the cue for them to be there. Yeah, I thought so too, considering that she made the comment about like, Oh, he's gonna go fall in the fountain now. Sploosh. So what did you want to tell us, Chevres? Have you read The Two Musketeers? Heard a bit about it. The story is about a pair of children born into the household of a baron, and their struggle to survive together and take revenge for their mother. Mm. They were raised Whoa. at the baron's estate, where their mother worked as a maid. The two were illegitimate children that the baron had with the maid, so they were never treated well by anyone. Mm. One day, upon returning home, they found their mother had been oh. murdered and left dead on the floor. It was quite evident that the culprits that. were the other members of the Baron's household, who never had any kind words to say to them. <laughs> to clarify, I gotta clarify, I did not laugh at their mother being murdered. Cinder, Cinder just walked out of a room, just op a door just opened and she just meandered out of it. <laughs> Daniel's not laughing at these, this, these kids' murdered mother. They're not laughing at Batman, okay? You're not laughing at Batman, no jeez. And no Cinder's being cute over here and funny. However... The Baron was able to exert his influence and keep the whole thing under wraps. The mother's death was eventually deemed as a suicide, and mm. there was no chance of bringing her murderers to justice. The two siblings decided to flee and someday avenge their mother. Many years later, members of the Baron's family suddenly started turning up dead one after the other, all killed by gunshot. A rainbow rose was found on each of the victims' bodies, being the flower that the kid's mother liked best. Okay. The Baron believed that the mother's soul had come to take vengeance on him, so he lived in fear each day. I feel like you're spoiling like the whole plot of this novel to us. But it was Are you gonna actually read it? those two siblings who had fled all those years ago. They relied on each other to survive and trained day and night, eventually becoming adept musketeers. Cool. They used all of their abilities to collect evidence and clues before executing their plan and exacting revenge on the Baron. Their actions let the truth behind their mother's death be known to all. That's quite an exhilarating story. Yep. The Baron got what he deserved for his evil deeds, and justice was able to prevail. It was just the kind of story I enjoy. Uh-huh. Oh, so is that why you were so willing to join our crew, Chevras? Why did you just summarize the whole plot to us? You could say it was one of the reasons. Oh. Oh, you mean there were other reasons too? I've read the reports about you. Whether it was at the trials or when you lent your hand to resolve our nation's crisis, you've shown that you've got a strong sense of justice, as well as a great mind for deductions. So what you're implying is there's a case you need our help with. Yes, you're as sharp as I expected. It seems you've experienced many similar situations before. Very. There's been a recent murder case involving muskets. The perpetrator's methods appear to be very similar to what is described in the novel. Ah, it's a copycat. Huh, really? But Paimon didn't see anything about that in today's papers. The Mara Chaussee Phantom hasn't yet released any information to the public because the investigation is currently at a standstill. The murderer is extremely cautious. A murder involving firearms? 
But not that many people use those in Fontaine, right? Could it be someone from your platoon? Impossible. We perform a routine inspection of our firearms and ammo reserves every day. If one of the weapons had been fired, it would stick out like a sore thumb. Besides, I trust the members of my platoon. However... Well, that's all I can disclose about the case today. Huh? What do you mean? I hope you all can go back and get some shut-eye. You can decide tomorrow whether or not you'd like to join the investigation with me. Dude, yes. Huh? I'm aware this might not be the ideal time to add more to your plate, but the more capable people we have, the better the chances that justice will prevail. Can't someone from the Special Patrol help you investigate? Carrying out investigations isn't actually supposed to be our responsibility. Our job is to apprehend the perpetrators. Finding them is really up to the Marachose Phantom. You could say I'm taking part in the investigation out of personal interest. Oh? Uh -huh. I don't want people to see muskets in a negative way. And also, <laughs> I'm concerned about the similarity between the crimes and the story. You mean... They might be connected somehow? I suspect so. Just to make myself clear, this is not an order, nor is it a deal of any kind. It's a request. Nothing more. If you two have any interest in the case after we finish filming tomorrow, and are willing to assist me, then I would be most grateful. Hmm. What do you think, Traveler? Let's give it some thought tomorrow. Yeah, you're right. Pyrant's getting a little tired, too. We've really been hustling all day. Bro. Hmm? Uh, I, I want to say something, but I'm going to wait for this to end. You'd better head back and get some rest. It's good to keep a calm mind, especially when you're about to make an important decision. Nah. Otherwise, when the moment comes, you might end up like that shopkeeper and not even realize that the right choice is right there in front of you. Uh-huh. Is that you hinting at us that you're the murderer? Doing it all for the sake of some justice. Dude, I uh, I love that we have a character. Because this uh, topic isn't brought up very often in any works. Oh, there they are. Um, But that girl's motive is literally just like... Well, one. One of her many motives. Is she w doesn't want muskets to have like a bad rap. She's a sharpshooter. And she's like, they're, they're cool. They're tools and everything. Because that's a real topic to have in real life. Because a lot of people are afraid of guns and they're scared of it. Especially here in the US where they're legal. But it, I feel like drama fo like follows in every conversation that's about guns and everything. The reality is they are tools just like pencils or, or a tool like a screwdriver and whatnot. They do things and they're there for protection. But I feel like nowadays everyone wants to argue about them and how they're evil and whatnot. And the reality is they're just one more thing that you use and stuff like that. Guns tool. should be... A very dangerous object. They are not a toy. They Everyone are there be a to last resort. They should be. Yeah, it's a last resort. It's to defend yourself and to keep you and your family safe. That is what guns are for. And then, like, when it comes to war, like fighting bad guys, I guess. But that's a really gray area and stuff because you know <sighs> wars are usually fought by two countries filled with bad and good people and everything. So you know, yep. all of that. But the topic of guns, I like seeing this in just a little quest, just a little little mention, slipping that in there. It's pretty hype. Mm -hmm. And heist and so it is a really important conversation to have. And people really should be educated about firearms and how they work and what's mm. going on with that. No one really does that nowadays. Some people do. Not oh, everyone. how lucky I am to have so many kind-hearted people assisting me. Yeah, yeah, just watch your step now. Everything I've been through is starting to pay off now. There finally is a light at the end of the tunnel. Ah. I see it now. What lies before me is a whole world of hope. No, what lies before you is the fountain. I hope you can start seeing clearly or you'll end up taking a dip in it. Ah, <laughs> uh, and that's the last of the people we're looking for, right? I, I am pretty sure, yes. Let me just double check real quick. I've got it all pulled up. Uh, no, wait, actually there is one more. Uh, Nuvolet and Ayato are up here, apparently. Oh, so go just, to the thing. You just say up here. I didn't know what to call this place. Sorry. This is the, uh, yeah, there. court. Yeah. Check them just chilling out over here. 
Interesting to see these two talking. Yeah. Indeed, Mr. Leaders. Nivellet. I'd very much appreciate hearing your thoughts on everything we just discussed, including my initial proposal and the general direction of our potential cooperation. Your proposals are reasonable and quite well thought out. Your sincerity and wish for our mutual success was evident in your words, so there's no need to be so modest. Thank you. So, what's your decision? Hmm. <laughs> if you're asking for my personal opinion, I'm willing to cooperate in full based on my own opinions and my impression of Inazuma's culture. However, Fontaine doesn't run simply based on the feelings of one individual. I'm sure Inazuma must be the same. Everything must be done in accordance with the regulations that are in place. Yes, of course. I will submit a written proposal outlining the details of our potential cooperation to the Palais Mermonia within a week. And I look forward to hearing from you. It's weird. Hey, Daniel. Good morning. Xavier said yesterday afternoon went well. Indeed. Yeah, and how about you, Ayaka? What were you up to yesterday? After we split up, Ayato went to see Udex Nervilet at the Palais Marmonia. Mm hmm. I was originally thinking of going with him, but he said he could manage it himself. He told me to go see the sights around Fontaine and to oh. enjoy the local culture. That's nice. So I rode the aqua bus at Yoimiya and visited the opera house on Erinias Island. Nice. Yeah, you wouldn't believe what we saw there. Two mechanical puppets that were dancing together. You've already seen them, right? Oh, yes. Ah, the Dirge of Capellia and the Nemesis of Capellius. I think I said that right. I have no idea. I, I think you nailed it. Good job, dude. Yeah, yeah, those two. Amazing, aren't they? Oh, yeah. We sat and watched for quite a while. It was mesmerizing. Like we could keep watching them forever. Actually, in all honesty, I could watch figure skaters for hours, man. It's really cool what they do. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was the same for us the first time we saw them, too. Afterwards, we went swimming at the beach. Well, diving, to be exact. It was the first time I ever breathed underwater. Interesting that anyone can do it. Wait, then what's the point of dive in suits? Or don't, is it only for vision holders? Don't think too hard about it. Just go with it. I held Ayaka's hand and we counted down together. Three, two, one, and then splash! We were beneath the waves. Oh. No, I don't know. That doesn't make sense then. Why would we need... Wait, we're being teleported. At first, oh. I didn't dare to open my mouth. But once I couldn't hold my breath any longer, I decided to take a big breath in. <laughs> Turns out the water wasn't as salty as I imagined. It didn't really taste like anything at all. How does um, the magic work then? Is it just Fontaine stuff? Like, is it only for this area? Maybe, but then why did we need the diving boy to dive when we could have just done it ourselves then canonically? I don't know. Or if anyone could have done it. I, I don't know, Dale, you can't, I can't explain it. Magic. Like you said, maybe it's the vision holders. Maybe vision holders get that. Well, and then we wouldn't have needed the diving boy or... But he's an expert swimmer. An expert. Then why does he have a diving helmet? He likes it. Well, that's where he goes. That's how it, like he focuses his imagination. We just learned about this. I know, but as a diver, why does he have that? I thought I just answered this. It's because it focuses his imagination. I know, but why did he have it in the first place then? He didn't know that it did that. You gotta, you gotta try it sometime. But if you can breathe underwater, then why do you need... You don't need scuba diving gear if you can just swim underwater just fine and breathe, okay? I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he just likes it. He just wanted to put a bunch of hats on, and one day he settled on that one. And a it just diving hat. It just happened to be... A scuba diver's he helmet? What are those things called? No idea. I'm gonna assume helmet. Yeah. Sounds correct to me. I assume this is them just explaining away how any character can be underwater. Magic. 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 Before I knew it, I was breathing like normal down there. It was an amazing feeling. 
Ayaka said I was too nervous and needed to loosen my grip. She got used to everything way faster than I did. Uh-huh. I knew that the Traveler could do it, so I had no doubt we could do it too. That helped me feel at ease as soon as we dove in. You know, actually, that's a that's a decent question and everything. Can People can talk underwater, correct? Because Paimon, Paimon talks to us and everything. And we've done it to people before. Oh, that's so interesting when you think about it. The underwater world in Fontaine truly is beautiful. I love seeing the Romaritime flowers blossoming underwater. Like little candles lighting up the streets at night. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there were so many creatures that we've never seen in Inazuma. Like those fish that shimmer like a sword blade. Whoosh! Oh, and those big fish that call when they see people. Mm. <laughs> uh-huh. Oh, you mean hunters, rays, and blubber beasts. <laughs> I just love the name Blubber Beast. Uh, just wait till Pops and the others hear about this. They probably won't believe a word I say. <laughs> uh, blur ah. <laughs> blur Beasts are cute. Are you okay? No, something just clicked. Yoi Mia was down there for quite a while. <clears throat> it was dark before we finally rode the Aquabus back to the city. I figured she'd want to sleep in today. <laughs> yeah, even I was worried that I wouldn't be able to get up. <sighs> I still felt like I was drifting in the waves when I went to sleep last night. But as soon as I woke up today, I remembered that we'd all be shooting a film together, and I was ready to go. Speaking of the film, where's everybody else? Ah, uh, you know. My brother and Xavier were speaking to the restaurant owner about using the place as a filming location. They should be here soon. As for the others, they... Hmm? We're here. Yo! Please excuse my tardiness. I just finished the Special Patrol's six-mile morning jog. Cool. Nice. Wait, six miles? Yeah. <sighs> oh, poor Farina. I'm so tired. I heard you all chatting, so I decided to come down. I sure could use some of that endless energy everyone else has. Good morning, everyone. Morning. Mm. Can someone fetch me a cup of coffee? More milk, hold the sugar. Mm. Sure, I'd be happy to do that for you. No, you can't go anywhere. Please, have a seat over here so I can get started on your makeup. Ugh, the last thing I want is... Coffee stains on my costumes. I can get the coffee. It's the perfect job for an assistant. Sure. Ugh, so much energy. Seriously, what's her secret? That's a good question. Firework confused coffee. <laughs> Firecracker. Dude, I would love to make a coffee brand called Firecracker. Is that a thing? Is that trademarked already? I feel like that may be dangerous. That's <laughs> hey, it. It's not until you test it. Instead of dipping like, like a coffee or a tea bag in, you just and you drop it in. Dude, no, forget about the dynamite and everything. That that can kill someone. That's a firecracker. <laughs> but we take coffee. We get some really, really, really delicious coffee, but then we add like little like pop rocks to it. So then as people drink their coffee, it pops in their mouth. Firecracker. We call it firecracker coffee. That sounds like something that someone would sell and it would sell somehow. I'm just saying. And if it tastes good enough, boom, all the better. Would, wouldn't just be a gimmick. It would be amazing. Oh, your me is always like that. But you sure look exhausted, Farina. It's because you're not used to waking up so early, huh? Of course not. I spent the whole night reading the novel from cover to cover, marking sections that either need to be omitted or adapted. Wow, Paimon didn't expect you to be so thorough. <laughs> well, I was the biggest star in all of Fontaine after all. It takes more than just a pretty face to earn a reputation like that. I know how to get serious when the situation calls for it. Nice. It also probably helped that you read their don't, icon. Don't do it. No, I knew but, you were. I knew you were going to bring I'm that sorry. up. Sorry, I knew it's it. The truth. I knew you were going to say something like that. What? Oh. It's the truth. Why? Why'd you have to? Bring it doesn't it up? change the truth just because no one wants to say it. 
It, it, she's still awesome. She is. And she was my favorite Archon. But was Archon post Archon? No, she don't really want Sometimes, to. Daniel, in a social setting, there's just things you don't have to say. You don't have to say it. But it's more fun saying it. Oh, crap. I went all out when I was acting as an Archon. So why wouldn't I do the same for my own life? Actually, no, she never was the Archon. She was more just cursed and pretended to be the Archon. Eh, she's still up there for me. Top of the list. Jongly. Here's your coffee, Director Farina. Ooh. Directly into eyes. Oh, first person POV coffee. Oh, thank you. Ah, the sound of being called director and the aroma of coffee <laughs> feels almost as refreshing as hearing the birds chirping in the morning. Oh, it seems everyone has managed to arrive on time. We've reached an agreement with the restaurant owner. We are free to use the second floor to shoot our film. Hmm. Really? That's great! He is really looking forward to our film, and hopes that providing his restaurant as a filming location will attract more customers. I mean, it's kind of the only restaurant. Fun and fun. I'm gonna shut up now. Well then, Mr. Xavier, I'll leave the rest to you. Okay, thanks! First, I'd like to introduce our new members. Yo! This is our prop manager, Veronique. She'll be in charge of all the films, props, and items. See, they didn't give you a voice. And this is Bono, our lighting technician. He'll be in charge of lighting and illumination to set up each scene's atmosphere. Ooh. Wow. Sure feels like we have some real professionals joining the crew now. Yep. First of all, Please allow me to first express my sincerest gratitude to everyone in the crew. When my investor informed me yesterday that he wouldn't be able to provide the funds, I really thought that this was the nail in the coffin for this film. I had no idea that I'd find so many people willing to help me on such short notice. Thank you. Thank you all from the bottom of my heart. No need to be so cordial, Mr. Xavier. We're all honored to be a part of this. Your works made a profound impression on me when I saw them back in Inazuma. I am sure that someday, this film will be remembered as a prime example of cultural exchange between Fontaine and Inazuma. Mm-hmm. Yes, the story is the reason I agreed to join. I can't bear to even imagine what this film would look like without the very best director. Anyway, I would like to make a promise to everyone that as the producer of this film, I'll do whatever I can to ensure that everything goes as smoothly as possible. There's like some really cool looking film grain on the screen right now. Do you, mm -hmm. do you see this that? It's not just my film. Maybe the shit. It also embodies the thoughts and feelings of every person here, as well as the endless effort we are about to pour into it. <laughs> oh boy, no one's sleeping for the next week. So, without further ado, the two musketeers will officially begin filming now! You may take it from here, Director Farina. All right, listen up, everyone. The first scene takes place when the two young musketeers are living at the Baron's home, still unaware of all that is about to happen to them. We'll need what? props and lighting to set the scene. Our lead actors can go get their makeup done, and extras, please take this time to go over your positions. Whoa, seems Farina's really kicking things into gear as the director. Is everyone clear? I don't want anyone traipsing around the set like umbrella finches. Wait, what's an umbrella finch? Uh, a bird. Hey, well, yeah, I guess. More accurately, a finch. That looks like an umbrella? Why do they look like umbrellas? They're called umbrella finches. Oh, well, yeah, that's their name. Man. I, All right. What do they look Gales like? We'll start rolling no as idea. soon <laughs> as the set is ready. 
Let's make a film that'll make some serious waves in Fontaine. I don't tish. <laughs> that was a pun. It was. Are they the birds that have like the uh like the uh, bowl haircut that kind of like covers their eyes? Maybe. So maybe the bowl haircut is the umbrella part. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, not the kind of waves that drown people. I mean, the good kind of waves. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Thank you, Farina. Uh, seems like she's still a bit traumatized by that. I mean, you would be too if you were in that similar situation. Anyway, let's go see if there's anything we can do to help. Part two, start. <clears throat> Hello. That's a lot of- I don't need any help here. Why don't you try asking someone else? Okay. You have that big chair all to yourself. I would totally take a nap on that thing. I can't talk to you, but please Let's... don't kidnap me to talk to you. Okay, yeah, here we go. Ah, so this is what a musket looks like. Incorrect. That is a... Never mind. <laughs> Not exactly. Okay, thank you. Okay. Whew. Thank you for taking the words right out of my mouth. I was about to feel real dumb. Who are you? That is a Never mind, caterer. you're not related to them. Are you related to them? I don't know. This place looks unique. Should I redo my storage plan for the tableware again? Well, love your outfit, but you're not related, so see ya. Come back anytime. Thanks, I won't. Is this a maid cafe? Oh, yeah, wait, hold on. Oops, I just realized I had the wrong team on. Got a wrong team? I uh, was quickly killing the boss Farina needed. Oh, gotcha. I have not been on Genshin for a minute. Uh, I don't think it matters who I talk. Talk. What? <laughs> Doesn't matter who I talk to. <laughs> I really only see a snail coming out of that thing. It's like the only bit of purpose. Is it because you watch? We've seen too much One Piece. Is yes. That, okay. I just I feel like it's about going to start going. I a bit, a bit of just remembered. I have not read manga this week. There's oh. a whole bunch of new chapters out. Yeah, because I of don't New worry. Year's. The airs, they're on a really long break, so you can you can wait. Wait, there's no want. One Piece? No, there's One Piece. Oh, okay. The next chapter is coming on the 21st. Oh, okay, so they're taking most of this month off. That makes sense, though. Mm hmm Okay. Ayaka has mentioned you to me before. She said that you two were great friends when you were kids. No talking. I'm thinking about how to do your eyeshadow. Yes, ma'am. Ah, yes. To help me really look the part. <laughs> Yeah, please be quiet. Don't talk. I understand completely. <laughs> to achieve a more young and naive look for this scene. Uh, are you saying the wrinkles around my eyes are too deep? I mean, now that you say it, it is a little noticeable. What are you talking about? What wrinkles? I'm kidding. I'm talking about his eyelids. Oh, okay. You just have too much of a calculating look in your eyes. Says you. <laughs> You sure don't mince your words. It seems you really haven't changed much. Yo, is Quiet. this- Is this a ship right here? Is this a possible potential ship for Ayato? Brother, they're having a conversation. I know, but I'm just saying, he kind of needs someone to like- To smack him? Kind of smack him, yeah. Because Ayato's a really cool dude and he does really good work, but this chemistry here is nice. Look, it's an anime game. I can say stuff like that. <laughs> okay, I will nothing. not talk to him. You get nothing. Stop ignoring uh, ignoring them. Stop distracting them. That's what I wanted to say. How about here? Uh, a little more to the left. You got it. Hey, you're Nia. Do you need a hand? No, no, I'm fine. You know, doing the lighting is kind of like designing a fireworks show. Yeah. It's interesting to imagine what kind of atmosphere the lights will create. Yeah, you look at it like that, I guess. I heard that the Traveler will be operating the camera and Paimon will be the clapper loader, right? <laughs> Those roles are just perfect for the two of you. Mm, I don't know about Paimon being organized, but sure. Really? Hey! Is that because it'll be easy for Paimon to hold the clapper board while flying? Is it? Well, sure, there's that, but that's not exactly what I meant. 
I just think that after all your journeys together, you two must have developed a super close bond and just naturally know how to work with each other. If I'm not mistaken, the director will want the cameras rolling as soon as the clapperboard goes clack. Yeah. Actually, we start rolling b before... <laughs> The clapperboard just gets edited out in post-production. Yep. Oh, I see. <laughs> it's amazing to see the magic behind the <coughs> making. Mm-hmm. You and me, uh, we need lights over there, too. Oh, on it! I've got to get back to work. Chat with you later. Oh, it's exciting to see so many people working together to bring the film to life. <laughs> Is it really called a clapperboard in real life, by the way? Seems I mean, like it claps really into the board. Into Makes it. sense? But she was right. We do have a super close bond, don't we? To some players, maybe not. But of course. <laughs> Paimon's really happy to hear that. Paimon, I want you to know that even if everyone else in the world hated you, I would still love you. You can rely on me. Why do people actually hate Paimon? Genuinely. Mm -hmm. I know some people, people find her annoying. I, I, I get that to a degree, but I like I think she talks too much. And lately, but lately though, like at the beginning of Genshin, maybe, but lately, Paimon is so wholesome and great. Until she eventually either dies, betrays us, or uh gets kidnapped. I hope none of those things happen. But I'm just saying those are the three most likely things to happen in the future with her. Oh. But anyway, well, as your friend, if you turn evil, I will kick your butt and drag you back to the side of good or whatever. Unless she people. was never good. Maybe she was never good. No, don't say it. That would be heartbreaking, actually. Like, what if Paimon's just like a persona that an evil being has put on and it's like she's real, but not. And as soon ah, as so it's Kirby, it's like, yeah, it's, it's like Kirby, Kirby actually. Yeah. Yeah. It's like as soon as the uh, the thing takes back over, then like the old what we know to be Paimon is dead. Yep, that would be horrible. That'd be the best way to do it. Oh, so emotional trauma. This is a real musket. Mm, still not. No, it's just a prop weapon. Mm -mm. That's uh, that's a bit of it. But I. So are musket? those considered muskets? I, now they're making I, okay. me question that. Yeah, I, it, it, you, you are also making me question it, because I know the long rifle is usually considered a musket, with those things, but way bigger and longer, which is what she uses as her weapon. But I thought they were called flintlocks. Or is that just slang? Or is that slang? Are they also, oh, are you, pistol muskets? Or is that just look up? Can I look? Do you want me to just, look? I just, I need this to be Historically accurate. Okay. Could a flintlock pistol be considered a musket? Because it shoots musket. They're well, they're like the ball bearing thing, right? Yeah. It's like they're little like balls. Um. So does anything that fire those consider just muskets? They're making me question this. I'm really confused now. So, flintlock is a musket with uh, was a muzzle loading smooth bore long gun that was loaded with a round lead ball. Uh, but then I I looked at is a flintlock pistol also a musket? And the answer to that question is a flintlock is a musket. More specifically, any smooth bore long gun. But then it, it's that thing again. So, it it's is not a long gun. So it doesn't have to be long. I thought muskets had to be like the long form. It keeps also saying long. Uh, I don't know, but it, yeah, it's specifically... Okay, a flintlock is a general term for any firearm oh. that uses a flint striking ignition mechanism. Oh! Uh, here in the West, we always just call those okay. that and the long ones muskets. Well... Okay, well that makes sense though. So the type of gun is musket, but we have names for the different types. So but for pistols, we call them flintlock pistols. Yeah. Okay, we, yeah, so that makes sense. Never mind, I've been corrected. Jeez, I... I learned some historical facts today about pistols. Not bad. Have you seen a real musket before? Only in books and newspapers. I made this one based on the relative shape and proportions I saw in reference images. Mm. When we're filming, some special gunpowder will be applied around the muzzle, which will help create the flash and smoke effects of a real gun being fired. Mm. Which means it'll be up to the actors to portray the recoil. 
Depends how much kick you have in it. <laughs> That's right. The sound effects for gunshots will also be added in post-production. Thank you, Veronique. I think I know where to start now. However, the musket's gears and firing pin can <coughs> still use some work. Adding some wear on the metallic components will Thank make you. them appear more realistic. Also, be sure to rub the muskets with some oil each time before we start shooting. That'll give the impression that the firearms have been well-maintenanced. Good point. You seem to know a lot, Miss Chevres. I assume you use these types of firearms on a regular basis? That's ridiculous. Yes, I, I perform routine maintenance on my weapons every day. Just like we as people need to eat and sleep, muskets need to be cleaned and maintained. So what's the difference between yours and like normal muskets? Because you have like an elemental musket that goes off your vision as well. Does that function any different? Why am I asking this? They're not going to answer that. I was about to say, I'm like, damn, this is a fantasy world. They can explain it off however they want. Why not? But like, do you still need to put ammunition in it? Or does it just like form in it using the power of the vision? Like I... Like, I know this isn't going to get answered, but I'm just curious. Like, what's the difference? Like, did you have it specially made? Like, did you used to use? I mean, like... <sighs> Damn, I don't go too deep. I perform similar care for my sword every day and familiarize myself with its shape and weight to the point where it feels like a natural extension of my body. Cool. Yes. This way, our weapons will never betray us in the heat of battle. That yes was very aggressive. <laughs> yes, well said. It seems we have the same philosophy on this topic. <laughs> oh, sounds like they found a common interest to talk about. Friendship through the power of weapons. Heck yeah, dude. <laughs> Though these props differ from the muskets I use, I can still give you some pointers. Good. I look forward to your instruction. Honestly? The First and foremost, never point the weapon at anyone, regardless of whether it's a real or prop weapon or whether you're holding it or it's on the table. This holds for any time when you're not actively engaging an enemy. Uh, one, because uh, prop guns can actually still hurt. They're, they Quiet. can, they can still kill, genuinely. Uh, but, uh, to, I had a second reason, but it left me. It was the thing I was going to say before they said this, so continue. Okay, understood. When aiming the musket, extend your arm so that it's level with your shoulder, and use your eye to look down the weapon's sights. Oh, that was it! I feel like it, one of the hardest parts about shooting a fake gun for actors is probably the fact that a lot of them, a lot of people have never shot a weapon and everything. Yep. So I, I wonder how they teach actors how to actually shoot a gun. Because a lot of like Hollywood actors hate, like are like openly against pistols and stuff like that. How do they learn how to shoot or like how to react? Mm, probably <laughs> their uh, stunt coordinators. Stunt coordinators? Just drill it into them. Do you think they ever like... Or if you're Keanu Reeves, you just... Just Bro, Keanu the, Reeves! Or you just go to the shooting range and you get used to it. I don't know. Bro, that man, for anyone who hasn't seen it, look up Keanu Reeves at what? Shooting the range or something? At firing range, shooting range, one of the For two. like John, was it, wait, it was John Wick, right? It wasn't Matrix. It was John Wick chapter three or two. two. I think it may have Either been Either one of those. He, he went and like, like a, learned how to use all the firearms that he was going to be using in the movie. He's or like, at least I, there's a video of it out there. I had him at a range using all the weapons and it's actually pretty good. He, dude. That the training he did was so cool. And it pays off because the movies are great. Yeah. Mm. And it just helps that he also became a pretty decent shot. <laughs> that man knows how to defend himself. Yep. <laughs> like this? Oh my goodness. No, do not sideways even more for a, for a musket. Not bad. Now, try saying your lines. What do you mean? Like this? No! It's <laughs> not! You never hold a gun sideways. Fine. <laughs> it's just, it's a video game, Dale. It's a video, it's a video game. game. It's a video yeah. game. Yeah. But video point, game. pointer. Don't, if you ever find yourself shooting a gun. Not upside not, down. Not sideways. <laughs> that's no. that's well, Unless you're like peeking around a corner, then it. Dale, that's different, That's though. different. But I'm talking like... Don't hold <laughs> a gun sideways. <sighs> it's fine. <laughs> Everything's okay. This no! Is the end of the road for you. I get it. It's funny because she's holding it like a gangster. But <laughs> yeah, no, it's a funny image. It, it's pretty funny. You have to admit it is funny. <laughs> but yeah, no gang. The way like gang members always hold guns sideways. That's a very very mm -hmm. bad way to hold it's hold fine. a gun. It's fine. It's just horribly inaccurate. <laughs> and, and kind of dangerous for you, honestly. I bet because the bullet 
Not bullet. The, I'm, I'm, recoil! Oh my goodness. You're thinking recoil. Well, that and also the uh, bullet casing can, you know. Yes! And yeah, can pop you in the head. Uh, but anyway. <laughs> Good. Now turn your body a little. Admittedly. That way, you'll give your enemy less of a target to work with. And relax your shoulders. Here, allow me to demonstrate. I, I will admit, though, it is a musket. It is. So that's not, even more of a case then. So, that thing is already so, so inaccurate. <laughs> uh, the smooth ones, not the rifle ones. <laughs> so well, you don't have to worry about the shell hitting you then, at least. But you You're do have so to worry right. about the ball like tilting one side and going down. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is the end of the road for you. How are you seeing that? <laughs> You're like having to like. You're, yeah, I, oh, this is a question. I, I was talking to someone yesterday about this. Uh, does, did she really... Uh, does she have an eye patch because of seeing in the dark? Or does she really have only one eye? Well, you shouldn't actually have an eye patch because it can hurt your eye if you have it on too long. So... Which is why you, if you have one, you should alternate eyes to keep it healthy. Or <laughs> really, it really freak your friends out and make them question everything. <laughs> it's kind of like when I go to like... Oh, hump on that side. From a that side. young Frankenstein? Yeah, from a young Frankenstein. <laughs> <laughs> that was a movie. That was a great movie. Uh, but I'm gonna assume she actually lost her eye. Okay. I'm gonna assume. Gotcha. Ugh. Huh. <sighs> Excuse me, Miss Chiori. <sighs> Director Farina, there's something I wish to discuss with you. Involving the guns? Oh? What is it? Like this? Yes, much better. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine! What do you think? Mm-hmm. I do see your point. But are you sure you wish to do this? Oh, to swap for his role. Oh, for anyone wondering, by the way, uh, you're going to see Dale and I flinch whenever it comes to anything like gun-related that they probably talk about in this and everything, just because... Contrary to popular belief, if you grow up here in the United States, most people are taught really strict gun safety. Most people and everything. You don't hear about that very often on the news and everything. But most people are drilled in, it is drilled into your head from birth depends because guns are. are legal. It depends where you live and what your family is all into. But everyone knows or should know that guns are not toys. And so from a very young age, everyone's like, yo, teach your kids how to deal with a gun. Teach him it's not a weapon. So seeing uh, stuff like uh, this. Teach him it is a weapon. Oh, did I say not a weapon? Yes. Not a toy. I meant to say not a toy. And in moments like that, it's so, yeah, when you see things like that, like, we, our mentality is even if it's a BB gun or a paintball, you don't aim that sucker at anybody until you're actually playing the game and everything. You hold that thing, right? Even yeah. if it has the most obvious orange tip or if it's just the toy gun, you just don't. You treat it like it's real. That's just how you do it. Because it builds good habits. Or at least around in these parts. In these <laughs> these here parts and everything. But yeah, so a little insight into the United States and how they deal with that. Because mm -hmm. you don't really hear about that too often. <sighs> I believe it would be most fitting. Well, if you insist. All right, I understand. <clears throat> Miss Ayaka, Miss Chevris, could the two of you please come over here? Huh? What's going on? Are we going to start filming now? Let's go see. What is it? It's going to have some drastic revisions to the plot. <laughs> I have a question for you, Miss Chevres. Would you be willing to play the role of a musketeer? Uh, what? To clarify, I would like to turn over my role to Miss Chevres. But, brother... Don't worry, Ayaka. I actually view this as a good thing. I was becoming troubled trying to set aside some time to speak to the staff at the Palais Mermonia. I would like to have some conversations about the cultural exchange between our two countries, and I've heard that the bureaucratic process here can get... rather complicated. Man, you sure do say... You sure do say cultural exchange a lot. <laughs> now, I will be able to focus on my work. Besides, you also know that I'm not really one for public performances. And yet you agreed to the movie? I mean, goodwill. 
I guess. Are you really sure? From a director's point of view, I also felt like the relationship between the two musketeers in the original story could be improved. Ah, by 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 ooh. ditching the brother. Ooh, 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 ooh. Wait, I this is this is not related to what you just said at all or the scene, but like Yo, the new girl's hair. I love the different types of purple. Look at that as it changes color. Oh. oh. I thought you were going to point out like the little stars in it. Oh, no, that's cool too and everything. But like, I love how there's just different shades of purple and it changes as you go down. Oh, that's so nice. The Very cool. The older brother in the story plays the lead role with his overbearing character. But this causes his character to overshadow that of his sister. And the theme of the two supporting and relying on each other isn't conveyed very well. So you ditch the brother. <laughs> uh, yeah, but okay. If we were to change the siblings to two sisters of a similar age, then that aspect of the story might come through more clearly. There's someone, there's some fan of the book that's rolling now. I feel like maybe you could tweak maybe just the brother's character to fit, but I- No, we gotta get oh, the new girl in here. But I know that, but like, in real life when writing a script, yes, you would just adapt what's already there. Basically, you would adjust, not adapt, you would adjust. But if this was a popular book in real life, and this change was made, this that, that would cause a firestorm. <laughs> Especially if it was a really popular book. But Man, we gotta get have... the new girl in. I know, and I, she's cool. But at the same time, the book lover in me is is squirming at that. Also, I've seen you instructing Ayaka. That cold and dignified personality is exactly what we need for the older musketeer. Didn't you just say they need the not be as over? Shut up. <laughs> of course, even with all these insights, the decision should still be made by Miss Chevrus. I mean, you guys are can kind of talked about it out loud and, and already decided, but you know, it's fine too. Uh. Chevrus mentioned that she really likes the story, right? I'm a bet that she'll take the role. You don't say like, you don't say that before someone makes a decision. Pima! It's called gaslighting someone into it. But, huh? but she'll still have to prioritize her work, or but we still don't know if she's a big fan of acting. I don't know. You go with whatever. All right, I'll take the role. It was already basically decided anyway. Good. It's decided then. I'll get started on making edits to the script. We'll also need to make some immediate adjustments to the lighting, props, and costumes. And plot. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine. Oh, I have a feeling that our adaptation will be even better than the original story. <laughs> That's, uh... E. In real life, people... Ah, oh, never mind. You're doing a great favor for me, Miss Chevrus. You have my gratitude. I don't know why I saw Farina as Disney there for a second. <laughs> uh, it's fine. Everything's okay. It's a game, so it actually will be better. No, no. Like it, yeah, this is a video game. This is a so video fantasy it. world. But yeah, no, plenty, plenty of real life movies and stories have been ruined, sadly, because of directors kind of getting involved and being like, you know what I, you know what this, this, this classic piece of literature needs? A self insert. Me that, in there. I need to be that. I I'm, I need to be the main character and stuff. It's like, wait, oh, okay, please don't. It's like don't do that. Please, just don't please don't no. touch the original work. Just let it be. I, hey, I'm fine with changing stuff. If you can make it better, I'm all down for it. Or if it's but, an interesting take on the original thing, that's fine. Okay, Pride and Prejudice. If you haven't seen it, by the way, there's a bunch of that movie has been made. Uh, it's, well, it's a book for one, but then there's a bunch of movies that were made off of this book. A lot of them are really, really good. However, there's another one that was in more recent years that was Pride, Prejudice, and Zombies. And that was great. 
I'm not even joking. I cannot make that up. If you have not seen that and you're fine. I actually don't remember that. If you're, what? If you're a fan of Pride and Prejudice. Oh, wait, no, that sounds familiar. Wait, and no, you And you want to see it in it. the world of zombies. It's a real movie and it's actually quite good. I think I remember. Darcy Do is I? amazing. I don't, no, I, I don't do know if you I don't scenes. know if you've seen the full thing. I don't know if I've seen the full thing, but I do remember some scenes here and there. Yeah, it was quite good. Quite. <laughs> See, that's a good way to change something. You just you do something funny and new. And that's not really even new. Zombies is not new, but it was like, oh, we're gonna take this classic love story triangle thing. <laughs> Throw and zombies. The, in zombies. There. It sounds sure, like a horrible I idea. I don't know how that got off the whiteboard, but it did, and it was amazing. Made someone laugh. It did. Hi, Cinder. Baby. The cat has joined us. Yeah. Okay, Farina. Just calm down. The baby. The baby. Wants, the baby. The baby wants squitches. The baby wants the squitches. Okay, I'll get to Don't mention it. I like this character, so if anything, I should be the one thanking you. This character just existed. Just started existing. What do you no, mean? No, no, no. She liked the brother character. Now the brother is a sister character. <laughs> well, I feel like that would change quite a bit. I mean, if you didn't change too much, it depends on the story. I haven't read it. But then they could have done it as the brother. Yeah. If the, it, if the, if the, if the, if the brother slash sister thing doesn't matter, then you could have just twisted it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Everything's okay. Well, since my brother is the one who brought up the idea, I suppose there's no need to worry. Mm-hmm. Let's go, Miss Chevras. I look forward to working with you. I, I like the uh, comment there. It's okay if the actor's cool with it, but, like, forget about all those, the fans of the book. <laughs> they, forget the fans. They'll be, they'll be fine. What really matters is the personal feelings of the director and, <laughs> and everything like that. Okay, in this context, though, I do like everyone involved, so I can't get too yeah, mad Yeah, except this it. is a game! Yeah, this is a video game, so it's gonna work out. In real life, it usually sucks. But in real life, <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> Please, just call me Chevras. But anyway, it's a game, so everything will work out and everything will be great. And it'll be amazing. Seems it's okay, like you're really going out of your way to solve the problem I was having with your makeup. <laughs> Surely you jest, Chiori. I assure you that I was mostly motivated by a desire to spend more time on formal business. Hmm. Like assassinations and stuff. Oh, come on. You really think I'd buy That's her that? Job. According to what I've heard from Ayaka, her brother is someone who can juggle ten different matters at the same time. I'm sure you have other reasons for backing out. He wants his sister to make more friends. True. Perhaps. Ayaka always said she wanted to go out and see more of the world, just like the Traveler. But I feel that she needs not only to see other nations, but also to make some different kinds of friends. I think it would be harder for her to make new connections with me constantly by her side. I would like to give her some space. Alright, go on. Spoil her some more. Ayato! It's too bad you're stepping down from the role. Paimon really wanted to see you act as a musketeer. This is the punishment you deserve. This <laughs> is no need justice. to poke fun at me. I'd wager that you also felt that I wasn't the best candidate for the role. No, I did not think that at all. Okay. <laughs> it's a little hard for Paimon to imagine you saying those lines. I would have. Why they're actors? It would have been funny. So, are you going back to work now? Yes. I've made an appointment to meet some people from the Palais Mermonia. Now, I will have some more time to prepare. Traveler, get the camera ready. Paimon, get the clapperboard. Actors, to your positions. We're about to start shooting the first scene. You sure re rewrote the whole beginning of the story real fast? Uh, this is <laughs> hours later. Now. And oh, please take good care of Ayaka. Well, no, she just, she did it in like five minutes. Look at that. I know, but I feel like most people would maybe take a while to revise the entire beginning of a plot. Kind of depends on your skill level. Like some really popular movies that were really good actually were written within weeks, sometimes even less than that. So kind of just depends on how much preparation stuff goes into it. 
Honestly. Why not? But when you're already having an existing product and you're having to make a change that big. Skill level, Daniel. It's a skill uh, level. You, you know, I... Uh, get good. I, get good, Daniel. I... You know, I don't... If you can't rewrite a script in five minutes, then you're a noob. Good luck with your work. Thank you. I look forward to seeing the film when it's finished. Hmm. That was a box. <laughs> Something. All right. Now that we're all here, let me help set the scene for everyone. Okay. The first scene takes place when our two main characters are still living at the Baron's estate. They've been ostracized and verbally abused by others in the household, but they oh. still have no idea why. We want to capture how naive and innocent they are, despite their pain. Wait, the first scene is starting here? Apparently. I feel like that's a bit into the movie. Uh, well, or remember, first... filming doesn't have to be in the exact chronological order. Oh, you're right. You can Jeffress film whatever. will be playing the role of the older sister, Tulip. And Ayaka will be the younger sister, Iris. Be sure to get close-ups of the main characters at the right moment. That's on us. They look a little different. <laughs> Thought they would, you know, wear different- Silence on the set! Okay, I'm sorry. Lights! Camera! Action! Do it! Let's go! How'd you- Never mind. Tulip! Mother's been out for quite a while now. Mm. Perhaps she went to pick some flowers on the way home. You know how she loves flowers. Iris, to leap! I'm home! Zoom out for a wide shot or zoom in for a close shot with the mother. What do you think, brother? Ooh, I don't know. I'd have to see it in action. Um... In this instance, maybe zoom in for a close shot with the mother. Mother, you were out for so long. That is beginning to worry okay. About maybe you. a bit too close. Yeah, I also do not care for the fact that it it showed the girls first. If it was a close shot, I was expecting them just to be like, "Hey, here's the mother character. We're gonna showcase her." Nope. That the is a, that is a very close shot. Yeah, no, wide shot would have been the correct one in this oh, case. I'm sorry. But I'm back now, safe and sound. Restart the quest. <laughs> I want to click the back button so bad. Treat, apple turnovers. I really want to just. How do you? How would you reset this cutscene? Close the thing and restart it. Yeah, I mean you can. I think it's a Cut. long cutscene though. It takes so long to catch back up. It's fine though. <laughs> Mother, what are those bruises on your hand? So this would be a close-up of the mother's hand. Maybe. Or, I think. I think it's the top one. Again, if this is bad, I'm, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, zoom, yeah, that. Huh? What bruises? Oh, I must have bumped into something while I was working yesterday. But I didn't notice them this morning. Then perhaps they're from when I accidentally tripped when I was out just now. I really wish uh, when they gave us options, they would show us like two things. Like, do you want this? Or do you want this? By the way, did you have fun playing at home? <sighs> What's the matter, Iris? Uh, Iris. Well, we've realized that no one really wants to play with us. Oh. They even took Iris's doll and spat at us. <sighs> and they even called us names. They said we were. Shh. It's all right. Don't worry. <sighs> Girls, listen to me. Pan over all three characters or zoom in for a close up on each character. I like the idea of a pan, but I don't know what it's going to look like. Go with pan and just hope for the best. It doesn't matter what anyone says. Yes. Don't listen to them. No one can define you with such words. I was kind of hoping it would be a bit closer than this, but it's still good. You both have wonderful Ooh. lives ahead of you. Just like your names. Okay. You will both blossom like beautiful flowers. Maybe your time to blossom hasn't quite come yet. 
But one day, you two will bloom more beautifully than anything else. Don't let the soil you're in now ruin your future beauty, understand? My dear daughters. And cut! The first one is gonna bug me so much. Yeah, hard. first one, I hated <gasps> I hated that first oh. one. That was, I, I genuinely- You, scare you scared the kitty! Yeah, no, that first one, I- I was not expecting what they did when I wasn't they just, expecting. Well, they were like, "We're gonna zoom in." I thought they're like, "We're gonna zoom in on the mom." So I thought, like, because the mom was walking over, it was gonna be like a nice walk into frame, you know? And I everything. didn't expect it to be. I didn't expect hey. it. Okay, I didn't expect it to be that close, but I also didn't expect it to tease the two girls walking up and then just not care about that and everything. <gasps> Hi, baby. Yeah, everything else was good though. Not bad. The actor's emotions were all on point. Let's keep that take. Can we redo it? Can we, can one we more do time? The, redo the first also, one? Also, if our clapper loader could avoid shouting at the start of the scene next time. Oh, uh, got it. <sighs> Great. I was a little worried that my nerves would get the better of me. What about you, Chevrus? I felt fine. The lines weren't too difficult at all. Seems like Farina must have adapted the role nicely. All right. <laughs> you two were great. I couldn't tell it was your first time acting in a film. You should have more confidence. Thank you for your encouragement. Positions, everyone! We'll move on to the next scene after we try a few more camera angles. Second scene. This scene is when our two characters return home, only to discover their mother has been murdered. <gasps> Ready? Lights! Camera! Action! Mother, we're back! Mother? Oh boy. <gasps> What's wrong, Tulip? Iris, stay away! Huh? Why? What's... <gasps> Mother! Mother... <laughs> She's... That poor carpet. Huh? There's poison in this cup. I didn't... No. I could have sworn I've seen this kind of cup before. <sighs> Those aristocrats. They didn't even try to cover up their actions. <laughs> Iris, we need to leave this place. Leave? But now that Mother is gone, where can we even go? Anywhere. All I know is that we can't stay in this house. <laughs> um. But are we just going to let them get away with this? I I need. You know what I just realized? Hmm. So after this, they grow up and they just go and murk all the bad guys, right? Yeah. It's gonna be really surreal seeing Ayaka in that role. We'll have our revenge. I promise you. Just not right now. <laughs> Actually, it seems very fitting. Come on. Let's go. No, wait. We can't just leave Mother here like this. At least... At least let me leave this rose with her. Oh. That's why we went out in the first place. To buy her this flower. All right. Goodbye, Mother. We'll avenge you. Someday. And cut! Beautiful! Great performance! Oh my, you're so amazing, Ayaka! And were those real tears I saw? How did you do it? Pain. The true. I was surprised, too. Thank you for the kind compliments. Actually, 
As soon as Director Farina said action, I told myself not to think about anything. I just felt the weight of the moment and became the character. Cool. <gasps> it's quite similar to practicing the art of the sword. You clear your mind and focus only on what's happening in front of you. Ayaka's performance was amazing. Nope. Have I discovered an acting prodigy? <laughs> I mean, you weren't the one that's... Uh, I love Farina! It's okay, that, that that's great. We still have the inner monologue. Yes. Pipe down, everyone! We need to move on to the next scene! A full day of filming on the set quickly passes. That first scene is going to still bother me. It is. Can't wait for them to show it Are again. <laughs> but Paimon wants to keep playing with the clapper board. Hmm. How do you feel, Traveler? Is your arm sore from holding the camera all day? Actually, it was on a... S it was a lot of fun. Good work, you two. Thanks. You too, Chevrolet. You were quite the actress today. Mm-hmm. I've read this novel many times before. I have a good grasp of my character's mindset. It's not... It's fine. It's fine. Daniel, there's nothing different about the story. There's I don't, nothing, but they, just, they said just, they were tweaking it to not be the overbearing brother. Yes, now, now it's just the gender-bent sister now. Now it's just the overbearing sister, and that makes exactly. it okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Huh? Anyway, do you remember my request from yesterday? Ah, oh, the case. Oh, right! We were having so much fun that Paimon nearly forgot! You have a case where the murders seem really similar to the cases in the novel, right? So, uh... How are they similar, exactly? In the story, the main characters grow up to become two musketeers, always using their guns to carry out their revenge. And on each of the victims, they place a rainbow rose as a signal that they've returned. So you mean there were rainbow roses in your cases too? Yes, that's correct. We found rainbow roses just like in the novel. <laughs> Seems like you're connecting the dots now. What? It's not a very hard one to connect. Oh, that does sound pretty concerning. Especially after seeing the script today. Oh, now Paimon can't stop wondering what kind of ulterior motive the murderer might have. Mm. Uh, what do you think, Traveler? You're smart. Paimon wants to hear your thoughts. If only we were... If... Whether... If... If we're only there to assist, then I think I, we can join the case. Good. On behalf of Fontaine's Special Security and Surveillance Patrol, thank you for your dedication to justice. Thank you. We get compensated for this, right? You're helping the police. No. <laughs> That's true. There's no time to lose. We should start investigating right away. Follow me. Huh? Right now? Well, we just got done filming all day. Paimon's so tired. The most valuable intel always comes after nightfall. They are like small, remote islands in the middle of the sea. If you don't stay vigilant, you will pass right by them in the fog. That's how one of my favorite books always puts it, at least. Ah. No. Let's start by checking out some workshops that sell mechanical components. If the culprit is making their own weapons, it's very likely that they'll visit those sort of places. It looks like we still Gosh. have a quest. Darn it. Wait, what is this? Longfield Graphic Personal Technology. Please complete it first. What quest is that? I don't know. Is this uh, an event quest? No, it's not. What is it? I don't even see Ah, uh, it's a stupid camera quest again! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is the zoom thing, I'm assuming? Yeah, yeah. this is probably the stationary lens. Oh my goodness, I don't care about these things. I mean- Yet they keep getting in the way! I mean, I like them. I like them. I would rather them not interrupt the story quests. Every single time. Yeah, I do think they should do that a little differently. Why but. Why can we put other quests on hold, but not the camera ones? Because they're different? They're really not. I don't know. <gasps> Charlotte! 
because it involves her skill set. That's nice. Okay. Huh? Isn't that Charlotte? What could she want with Lapine Pauline? Pretty please with the cherry on top, Charlotte. Journalist extraordinaire. Please tell me you're joking. I read that a gang of criminals tricked the Gardamex by disguising themselves as blubber beasts. It's true, isn't it? It has to be. Oh yeah, this quest. They talked about this in the live stream, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, I know this was that uh, other event. I I I remember it from something. There was a different camera event. It also got in the way of our quest. Got it. I've invested all my savings into graph adversarial technology and even taken out a sizable bank loan. Oh, whoa. Why would you do that? I'm begging you, begging you like the beggiest beggar what the, in all What is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're, all your begging won't make the truth untrue. <laughs> They're just going to give you a concussion. <laughs> Okay, okay. I need you to calm down a little, Miss Lapine Pauline. I admire your passion for your research, and I don't mean to dash your hopes for those, um, big ticket orders. But I'm afraid I'm not joking. The Blubber Beast incident was a short story mailed to us by an anonymous amateur author, written in the style of a true story. Amateur? Oh, Paimon sees what happened here. Sounds like the report Lapine Pauline read in the Steambird wasn't in the news section after all. Funnily enough, I actually remember being in a meeting where the editing team was debating the potential risk of misleading the public with this story. They even went to Maison Guardianage for advice. But to our surprise, they fully supported us printing it. They figured that the false intel would be a great way to dupe potential criminals into wearing ridiculous costumes when breaking the law. You know? Yeah, I can see it. Ah. In truth, Gardamex are extremely sophisticated in their capabilities. They can identify criminals just as reliably as the best human guards, so a crude disguise isn't going to get you far. If anything, it'll just make you stand out all the more. So you're saying that one quest we had to do for the event. Completely pointless. Uh, it probably involves one of these characters, I'm assuming. So, I know, but the whole point of us going out and taking pictures and then training with our friends and then getting primos for it and all that jazz. Oh, yeah, that. The entire point of that event was pointless. Don't think about it too hard. Don't think about it too hard. Yeah, no, you got free money. No, we didn't. You got we primos. too late to that. Well, if you had done it, you would have gotten free money. See? That does not make me feel any better. Well, yeah, you lost out on free money. I mean, who would feel good we about were losing out doing on free money? other games at that time. I mean, like, free money is free money, dude. Pretty good. <laughs> Since we ran that story, the Maison Guardianage has made a slew of arrests, including uh, one phantom blubber beast, a titanic red-crowned finch, and a specter man. So I knew this story had helped out law enforcement, but this is the first time I'm learning of an innocent citizen being deceived by it and investing so much more of for nothing. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that sucks. Reminds me of the story of uh, there was a live show on the radio a while back. Um, oh, based off of what was it? It was an alien book. Uh, you know, remember, you know, the uh, alien strider things like like the three legs and they're like that thing like the world the uh, flip what was that i don't i don't know the alien movie you know the one of the big like strider things that you're talking about the tom cruise movie the like uh war of worlds or something yes war of the worlds yeah uh there were uh, there was a radio adaptation that like portrayed it like it was a uh, real events happening and it was uh, actually really interesting and a fun listen uh, or at least I remember it being. It's been a long time, but there was actually that's a lot the thing of people, that people actually believed. Like some people, yeah, believed a lot it, of right? people actually believed it. <laughs> uh, that it was happening, and that caused a bit of panic. Jeez, I uh, feel really bad for them. Well, because nothing like that had ever happened, and people believed that. Yeah, so similar story. Cool, cool, cool. This 
poor lady. This is why you make sh this is why you make sure something's real before you just blindly listen to something in the in the news. Good advice. I mean, act in fact, it wasn't even that. It wasn't even the news column. It was. Uh oh. Mm. So Lapine Pauline's whole research project is based on a fictional story? I mean, people have written papers about fictional things in the past. Which means we're not gonna get a big bonus after all. Yep. But more importantly, she's gonna lose everything she's invested. That's not really our issue. Because the money's already spent. Daniel, at least be sensitive. Of what? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you lost it's, it's all not the our money. issues, but you don't say that and everything. You just you flip? just comfort the girl. What about what is the words of a stranger gonna do? The girl's losing her mind. You're just like, hey, it's okay, right here. I mean, it's not okay, but you're just gonna you're gonna comfort her. You're some still way. gonna lose all of your money. You're just you're gonna try you're your best. Like you're you're completely bankrupt. Just file for bankruptcy. <laughs> this is, that isn't. Well, actually, yeah, no, that would work. But that that's okay to, to say, but... But your research and stop. all of that is completely Just pointless stop. and S meaningless. Stop right there! <laughs> Sorry, I'm having fun. Jeez. Don't make the right kind of contact. Traveler, Paimon, you're back! Hey, what's up? Hey! I was in the area taking some photos for a story when I got to talking to Miss Lapine Pauline about her research. She told me about your collaboration. What collaboration? I never helped her with anything. <laughs> True statement. She was hoping I could write an article to spread awareness about image recognition technology. She even paid me for the article and gave me one of her prototype devices before I could get a word in. Ah. I unfortunately had to dash her hopes, and I'm afraid all your hard work was in vain too. She's desperately trying to find a way to rescue the project and get you the Mora you're due. I've tried to let her down gently, but she's finding it all very hard to accept. You know, now it's canonical. She has nothing to pay us with, and we made no money from that event. So boom. Canon mm. event. <laughs> it's a canon event. <laughs> Sorry, lady, no matter how matter blah, 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 blah. no matter what you do or Oh, no matter how much you cry, it doesn't change the Back truth. To yep, the, just truth is the truth. Just no matter how much one may not want to deny it. The fact that you we lost out on Primo's. No money this for us. This is a new situation for us, too. It's such a pity. It seems like the author was only trying to make the story interesting. And the Maison Guardianage only had Fontaine's best interest in mind. It's no one's fault, but our own. I need, like, a really non-lethal bonking stick for you. So whenever you what? say something scary, you just had to slip in butt her own at the end there. I just Ooh, need to have, I like, mean, a squeaky it toy. Is. I need to have, like, a squeaky it dog toy. Like, like, boink. Like, every time Daniel does something. You can't like blindly it. believe something. Well, yes, this is true. And she'll and learn especially from Especially not invest your life's money into that, it. That's not how you correct someone, though. You talk to them after they've settled down. You're just like, okay, in the future, well, remember, I'm not talking take steps. I'm just, I'm speaking logically. <laughs> I'm not talking or comforting her at the moment. I'm just speaking facts. I'm telling you, a big old squeaky toy. I just, just oh squeak. my goodness, it doesn't change what's true. I need to get Wait, one of those squeaky hammers. Miss the Pink Pauline, what are you doing? I'm gonna pick a fight with a Gardamech, head to the opera at Bicles, and get a one-way ticket to the Fortress of Meropede. That is actually an option. Admittedly. That is actually an option for your life because you will have a place to eat, sleep, and a purpose to work. Or yeah, that's what you want. If or eventually get back out once you... If you're seriously in financial cool debt, off. if you're ruined, you know what? That's an okay option. And I can say that because the garden mechs are technically robots and they, they're not alive. So I don't have to be like, well, yeah. Well, you, you shouldn't attack or destroy anyone's property or city Oh, property. don't. I'm trying. I'm just saying. Oh, my goodness, Daniel. Okay. Con continuing. That way, I won't have to repay my debts. It's the only way I can afford to keep on living. Do it. Fight sure, him. It is an option for you. Fight. Like fight. Come on. Oh, there's no need to go that far. I mean, come on. Look at you. You wouldn't even dent the Gardamix armor. Wow. In all likelihood, they'd only hold you up at the Maison Guardianage for a few days before letting you out, and then you'd still have to repay your debts. No, no. See, that's why you have to start training. And then beat up a Gardamix. And then they'll have no choice but to throw you in. <laughs> <laughs> 
actually, instead of going into the technicalities of that, how much did you actually invest? How bad can it really be? Two hundred and seventy thousand Mora. How did you? Where did that money go? I have to admit, though, that's not a lot. In canon, it's a lot. No, not really. If you think about it. Okay. Well, escaping to the fortress of Meripede over a sum like that seems like a last resort. Surely there must be other options. Yeah, no, like Loki and Genshin, it seems like things cost a lot, I think. Like, a lot, a lot. Not anymore. I used to be an equipment supplier to the Fontaine Research Institute before that blew to pieces. Rip. And now I'm just a small-time engineer. I scraped together some savings over the past few years, but I put every last Mora into this project, and now I'm left with nothing. Oof. It's not just my savings that are gone. It's my whole future as a graph adversarial technology specialist and my dreams of becoming a billionaire one day. <laughs> Everyone's got dreams, I guess. Yep. Okay, get away from that edge. It's scaring me, girl. I mean, it is just a puddle. My life is over. Don't despair, Miss Lapine okay. Pauline. I think I know a way for you to turn this around. This prototype you've given me, the camera lens for image recognition sample collection. It's really quite something. You said you designed it specifically for high fidelity image capture and analysis, yes? That sounds like it could sell for a crap ton of money. The rapid focal length adjustment is a very useful function in its own right. It's sure to make many journalists' jobs much easier. In fact, I'd say it has the potential to revolutionize Fontaine's news media. So your research efforts thus far are by no means in vain. The technology you've developed may have many applications that you've never even considered. <sighs> Really? Absolutely. I've been working as a journalist for the Steambird for a long time now. No one understands the issues we journalists face on a day-to-day -day basis better than me. So keep calm, take heart, and start thinking about mass production. In the meantime, I'll show your invention to all my colleagues to drum up interest in your product. I can't believe it. If this is true, then... I can look into setting up a whole camera lens development pipeline. My big ticket orders and billionaire aspirations are still in the cards. There you go. Oh, maybe I should consider taking out another loan. No. That way, I can rapidly improve the lens production process, be the first to market, and prepare to battle for dominance in the camera industry. Come on. Stop daydreaming about your pipelines for a minute. Just take it one step at a time and see how it goes. There's no sense in putting all your eggs in one basket before things are even off the ground. Being overly ambitious might come back to bite you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I can probably speak to some people I know and license my image recognition device to a workshop to raise some funds. I can't <sighs> believe I didn't think of this sooner. Well, yeah, she's not becoming a billionaire. There's yep. no time Never to know. lose. I need to get to work. Early bird gets the worm. Uh, in this kind of scenario. In this scenario, I'd say it's like a gamble. It's a 50-50 shot. She may well, become a billionaire. Sure she may not. Within one year and out the other. It's understandable. When inspiration and passion strike at the same time, it's all too easy to throw yourself headfirst into your work and forget about everyone around you. A lot of journalists are the same way when they're first starting out. Ouch. But don't you worry. I'm going to write an article on all this, and I'll be checking in on her regularly. Nice. Her research has the potential to benefit the entire journalistic community. I'll give her plenty of input to stop her from going down any rabbit holes and make sure mass production of her lens can begin as soon as possible. It's reassuring to know that you'll be looking out for her, Charlotte. Go, Charlotte. Actually, you know what? Why don't you two take this prototype lens? I'm sure you'll have plenty of chances to use it on your travels. Oh, of course. It takes the right person to get the most out of a new technology. In your hands, it's sure to capture some amazing sights. Mm. Thanks a lot, Charlotte. No bonus, no biggie. This makes everything worth it. <laughs> I would have preferred a bonus. You're welcome. I got something out of this, too. The beginnings of a very interesting news story. 
The boundaries between real news reports and news like fiction must not be blurred, even when there's a compelling justification for doing so. Yes, that's how I'll phrase it to the editors when I give them my feedback. Let's hope we don't mislead any more well-meaning citizens in the future. Wow, the lens. Okay, we got it. That's it. We did it. All right. Okay, and now we're back on the main story quest, right? Ah, uh, yeah, that should be him. Nice. Welcome to Le Show's Clockwork Workshop. Now, nice. How can I help you? Hello. I'd like to know if anyone has purchased some special components lately. Hmm? Special components? Sorry, could you be more specific? Okay, again. I mean the kind of components that aren't typically used for clockwork toys, but for firearms. Look at that captain behind us! Mm. Uh -huh. Whoa! For firearms? No, no, we don't sell those sort of things here. Don't mm -hmm. misunderstand. I'm not here to cause any there trouble. the captain. We are merely investigating a case, and we're hoping that you could cooperate. Well, to be completely honest, I'm not even sure what kind of components that would entail. Has anyone ever purchased components here as an individual, rather than on behalf of an organization? We have a lot of customers who buy toys, but those who buy components are all regular customers who buy in bulk on behalf of their organization. Hmm, is that so? I understand. Thank you for your cooperation. I do hope that the voice actor for this guy that we're talking to does get an actual character in the game because eventually he is very talented. You're welcome. It's the least I can do. Oh, okay. Ah, uh, okay. So he's just a regular NPC. Mm -hmm. I love how they incorporate like genuinely unique NPCs and stories and it's just like whoa I know you you're the one guy on the one block you're that one weirdo <laughs> <laughs> yep basically it's like I, you're that one guy I bumped into on that one random Tuesday when I was doing my dailies or something you're that one annoying guy oh well not everyone but like sometimes maybe sub girl yo oh hey Chevrus Run out of oil for your musket again? Hello, Estelle. I want to know if anyone has come to your shop recently to order some firearm components. Oh, is this another case? Hmm, let me think. I don't think so. Some people have requested that I make some prop guns for the Fontanalia Film Festival, but I refused all of those requests. Oof! Ouch. Oh, why's that? Because there's no profit! I only make things here that can do some real heavy lifting. I don't have the energy to make some new molds just for the festival. If you're working on big projects, I can understand that. But also, don't you make... Never mind. Then has anybody come specifically looking for mechanical components? Well, hmm. I usually sell off my scrap to the Fleuve Centre. I don't typically give them to one specific person. I understand. Thanks for your cooperation. Don't mention it. Always happy to have the Musketeers patronage. Seems like we haven't found any leads to go off yet. Yeah, unfortunately. <sighs> All right. Let's head to Fliff Sandra next. Huh? Are you sure? Uh, people might not be so thrilled to see the captain of the special patrol there. Hmm. You think so, huh? Then I guess you don't know. Huh? Know what? That I grew up in Fleuve Sandra. Oh, I mean, we just met you, so we wouldn't anyway. Sorry. I mean, Stop I don't know if you if you had read the wiki and all the leaks, you probably would have known that. Well, how would our characters know that? Uh, magic of the character Wikipedia page. Well, that's not canon. But that's in-game. There's a journal. You can read about them. Find you, out. You need to have them first. Oh, do you? I thought you could just read about them. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you have to have them to read them. Oh, really? Oh, dang. I thought they gave you at least the basic info. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. That may be Star Rail, actually, that I'm thinking of, admittedly. Maybe. I feel like some gotcha does that. They let you know. at least... They like to tease you. They're like, here, this is what you're missing out on. 
But the characters wouldn't know. True, unless they read the book as well. Yo, Tattoo Tortoise. Hello, I'd like to ask some questions. I don't know anything. Don't worry, okay. I'm not here to arrest anybody. You say that now. It's the truth. Here, take this as my guarantee. Wait, did Paimon just see what she thinks she saw? Is the captain of the special patrol bribing a citizen? It's called buying it, Papa. Yes. Seems you're different from the other guards. What do you want to know? Have you heard anything related to muskets in Fleuve Sandra lately? Anything at all? Muskets, huh? All I know is that about two weeks ago, we started hearing some loud noises at night. So loud that it's been waking me up. Oof. Were they gunshots? Possibly. It's hard to tell around here. Someone's house collapsing, a pipe exploding somewhere, it's all the same. But the noises I'm talking about definitely happened after I fell asleep. Do you know where the noises were coming from? I don't remember clearly. <sighs> Is it that you don't remember, or that you need to think about it some more? You tell me. Hmm. Then please, think about it some more. <gasps> She's giving her even more, Mora! Paimon, this is how things work. I didn't see a thing. The noises came from the end of the southern waterway. I came out and had a look for myself when I wasn't sleeping well, but I didn't dare get too close. That's all I know. All right, I'll take your word for it. Thanks for the pot de fruit. Ooh. I love how you said that. Uh, uh. <laughs> what? No need to be surprised. I grew up here, remember? I know how to get people around here to talk. Can I have some fruit, too? <laughs> My apologies. I'm all out of sweets. Darn it. Though I do have some other tempting snacks in my custody. Fries, fried chicken, and even onion rings. Yo. Uh, but taking care of junk food is my responsibility. You're better off sticking to your normal, nutritious diet. <gasps> Wait, where'd is you that, pull this from? Is that just an idol animation of yes, hers? Yes, that's her idol. That's amazing. Then, let's keep going. It's a very... It's a very nice idol animation. Man, they made... They made a... <laughs> made a book nerd that really likes snacks and guns. Dang. I feel like they're trying to cater to a certain audience. It's a very a specific picture. audience. Please, just get on with your request. I want to know if you've heard anybody talking about muskets lately. Information isn't free, you know. I've heard that bandits have been extremely active in the countryside recently, and they've been affecting the delivery of goods to Poisson. I can allocate some more manpower to help out with that problem. What do you say? Oh. <laughs> You're still as helpful as ever. One of our men got drunk at dinner about a month ago and lost his gun. Three days later, it turned up in the corner here. What's weird about that? He just forgot where he put it, right? You don't leave a gun. This is Fleuve Sandra, my friend. Anything of value left in the tavern won't ever make it to the next day. But that gun turned out to be an exception. It didn't get any new wear and tear on it, and didn't even appear to have been fired. We were quite mystified as to what could have happened. Hmm. I suspect it came back because the weapon was already known to the guards. You mean, a criminal was afraid the Marochaussee Phantom would use the shot marks to track them down? Maybe. But if that's the case, the culprit really took great care to avoid getting caught. Mm -hmm. I didn't say anything about a criminal. In Fluff Sandra, knowing who was killed is as easy as knowing what clothes you're wearing today. It's the guy living in the east side, isn't it? I've never liked him. Every time he's here, he just orders a drink and sits there with a nasty look in his eyes. So, who is the one who lost the gun in the first place? Eh, don't bother. Even if you ask, he wouldn't admit to owning a gun to some strangers. Not to mention the captain of the Special Security and Surveillance Patrol. He's right. I know you grew up here, Chevrus. Even though you're on good terms with the Spina, you've still been gone too long. Not many people know you here now, and a lot of people don't like the Special Patrol. I know. So take my advice and don't show your face too much around here. It's for your own safety. I'm loving this quest. I'll come and go as I please, and I'm afraid I'll be appearing more often due to my work. All right. 
Don't say I didn't warn you. Dude, she's like a hard-boiled detective. I love it. She's got like all the tropes too. It's amazing. Yep. Now we just need like a dolphin. Rest in peace. If you get that reference, I freaking love you. <laughs> Are you caught up to that? No, I actually have not finished that series yet. Oh, I did not want to touch it. You know you were almost at the top, right? I was on the wrong side of the ladder. Oh, you could have just turned. I could have. But... <laughs> so in, instead of doing a small amount of work, you chose to do a bigger amount of work? Hey, man. Because of yeah. laziness? Question mark? Yeah. <laughs> ah, someone no was sense. target shooting. Uh, yeah, they were. Target practice. What's all this? Some broken planks and barrels, as well as some liquor bottles? Yes, but have a closer look, Paimon. Hmm? Even though somebody has purposefully tried to clean them up, these are obviously marks from musket bullets. What kind of muskets are you shooting? In other words, someone was here trying to improve their shot. They were using the barrels and bottles for target practice. <gasps> Could it have been the killer? Dun, 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 Your guess dun. is as good as mine. Although many people at Fleuve Sandra own guns, few hide the fact from others. And even fewer would go to such lengths to hide markings from practice shots. Anyway, let's go. There might be more to this. I really want to pull through this character, help me. <laughs> Seems like that's all we'll be able to uncover for today. Paimon feels like we managed to learn a lot more here than up on the surface. Yes. Assuming that everything we found is indeed connected to our suspect, then their timeline was probably something like this. A month ago, our suspect found a gun and took it home to disassemble it. Once he'd figured out its mechanics, he brought it back. In the following weeks, he used some parts to create his own makeshift musket and took it to the Fleuve Sandra for target practice. Uh -huh. Okay. Then, a few days ago, he found his target and carried out the murder. Once the deed was done, he left a rainbow rose on the body, just like the scene in the novel. Hmm. It all makes sense to Paimon, but we're still no closer to figuring out the killer's identity. About the guy who died. The deceased was a resident of Fleuf Sandra. It's said that he was a poor, solitary man. Uh, if we're following the novel, shouldn't the guy have been a nobleman? Yeah, that's also something I'm trying to figure out. If we are indeed following the novel, and there's a story behind the murder, then this murder should be an act of vengeance. But according to our investigation, the deceased didn't have any enemies. He was no saint, but no one's heard of a rival who hated him enough to shoot him dead. Much less care to leave a rose on his body. What message is the killer trying to convey? And to whom exactly? Could they be the novelist? We've thoroughly investigated that possibility. Wow. He claims to have spent the whole day at the Opera House on the day of the murder, and the staff there have confirmed his account. Thank goodness he went that day. Okay, so he has an alibi. Unless it's fake. Not only that, he lacks a credible motive as well. He has a family of his own, and both of his parents are still alive. I've looked into his records. He was adopted at the age of six, and all the proper procedures were followed. There are also records of him at an orphanage before then. I mean... Still adopted, though, so there's po there's a possible chance that something happened when he was younger. In the story, the mother of the two musketeers was murdered after the children turned 10. Of course, he could have changed the children's ages, but yep. I don't want to assume anything without evidence. Yeah, that's important. More importantly, I've also had a chat with him in person. He didn't seem like the kind of person who would pull the trigger to kill a man. Murder. It's, it's... Then, what should we do now? We have all this new information, but it doesn't help us move forward. Investigations take time. I didn't expect us to catch the culprit in just a single day. How about this? Let's spend the next few days filming with the crew. We can continue the investigation once we're done with the film. I'm sure that given time, new leads will present themselves. Hmm. Wait, but weren't you saying Intel is like small remote islands in the middle of the sea just a moment ago? Wouldn't you just miss them if you were to stop looking? Ah, but the book had more than one reference to the islands, Paimon. Oh? What else did it say then? 
As long as you spend enough time sailing through the fog, you'll eventually come across an island. Oh, there's some roses on that anchor. Could it be someone at the bar? That's the Spina. Oh, you're right. That's a cool freaking emblem. Act two completed. Uh, any secret locations? Uh, yes, uh, her. That's it? Possibly, what? I'll check. Never thought that the captain of the security and surveillance patrol could come from the Fliv Sandra? No, I didn't think that at all. Uh, I guess it wasn't easy? You mean rising through the ranks? It was a struggle, for sure. But, as long as you can distinguish yourself through your accomplishments and skills, you'll eventually be recognized for your worth. Mm. If you look at it another way, my life at Fluff Sandra has actually taught me a lot of valuable skills. Skills like how to barter with criminals or how to think in their shoes. Of course, I'd appreciate it if you could keep this a secret between us. Hmm. Wait, but then why'd you act surprised that we didn't know? Okay, so that's day two. It looks like day three has nothing also. So let's just go on. Oh, wait, that was it? That was it? As far as I can see off of the guides that I have pulled up. I like massive shout out to everyone who spends hours looking for all the characters that you can find in all the different parts. I know Jeray does it. And just that blows my mind that people put these guides together and just do that genuinely so that we all can enjoy it. Because that would have taken me hours to find, especially uh, Ayaka and uh, Yoimiya at the cafe. That was, it was Yoimiya, right? I mean, if you're just wandering around as well. You'd have to wander for quite a bit, man. Well, there's always a chance that your dailies would take place there. True. So maybe it's like a culmination of a lot of different people. I mean, there's always a random chance. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I messed up. What happened? I waited two days. Oh, yeah. 8 a.m. <gasps> it's filming time again. Our schedule is jam-packed for the next couple of days, too. We've got so many different locations and sets to cover. <sighs> anyway, let's head out and meet up with the others. <sighs> it's not a full heal. Oh. Oh, well. Okay. They love you. I'm sorry, where is that? I think that's the... That's the station, right? Where the boat gets off? I think? No, that is... Yes, maybe? Is yeah, it, almost. It's up there. That's up there, okay. So it's the same building. It's just well, the elevator. Oh, I like this shot. That's a whole gaggle of playable people. Look at that. Ah! Oh! Maybe Paimon will be one day. Maybe. Maybe. Oh, we're filming. Act, I guess we're done. Act three. Wow, we sure are filming a lot in there. Oh, wow. Whoa, whoa. Okay. It's hard writing a plot. Good work, everyone. We're looking to wrap with our two main <laughs> ladies today. I can already smell our success. Are, are, are these a bunch of thugs? I think so. <laughs> what do you mean, looking to wrap? Finish. It means completing the film of all of their scenes. Yes. Com yes. Oh, aren't you the expert now? No, oh, aren't you kind of so. Flowers. This upcoming scene is the two musketeers' final confrontation with the Baron. There will be quite a bit of action, but no choreography beyond what we've already rehearsed. Mm. Anyway, get ready. Lights, camera, action! Nice Paimons. <laughs> the view is beautiful tonight. It reminds me of that fateful night ten years ago. Hmm, and now that I've said it, I can even make out the faint fragrance of herbal tea in the air. Enough, villain! It's time that you pay for the death of our mother! 
My dear Iris, have you forgotten your manners? How can you speak like this to your own father? Oh! <sighs> I'd sooner swallow all of my teeth than call you father. I oh. forgot. They actually told us the plot to this already. But still, that shocked me. I, I can't imagine a husband killing his own freaking wife. What did I expect? Well, seems the daughters have turned out to be just as obstinate as their foolish mother. In this world, Mora and status is everything. She thought she could blackmail me using her children and force me to grant her recognition and concessions? Ah, how naive can a woman be? Dang. I don't think that's blackmail. But, oh well. Mother never asked a single thing of you. All she wished was for us to live a peaceful life, just like the others. It was you who personally brewed the poison of prejudice and sent Mother to her death. Dang, you made it yourself? Compared to that deadly poison, the two bullets that will soon pierce through your heart will be like sweet mercy. Oh, wait, you're talking about prejudice. Oh, I see. <laughs> How many fingers are you planning on putting in that thing? Uh, three, apparently. <laughs> and that's exactly why I said you're just as naive as her. Did you really think two muskets would be enough to defeat me? I mean, you're just kind of standing there, my dude. That bullet's faster than your bodyguard. Yeah, you kind of only need one to put you on the ground. Depends if it hits a... Oh, actually... You're thinking too hard about this. So let's see. What is stronger? Mora and power... Or the two muskets in your hand. I would love Bro, I'm it. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I would love it if right then and there, pulled the trigger, pop, dead. Like, well, guess the musket wins. Get them! Oh, crap. Leap. There are too many of oh, them. Oh, well, now not to use a gun. It'll be okay. We'll cover each other, okay, remember, you have to sprint, then you get your elemental stuff, and then you just charge attack. Yeah, it's it. Oh, man. Oh, wait a minute. What? Oh, you get to try her out. Okay. They didn't give her the death match. It's fine. Uh, oh man, take. Ooh. That. Oh ooh. dang. Okay. That's fun. What's the alt? Uh. Oh, it's just the. Uh, Hands right Jeez. It's made for juggling. That's pretty good. Oh, right Bam. Oh. He dead. Yeah, that's pretty fun. You've lost. <sighs> to think I'd lose to my own two kids. Yeah, I just realized I don't think that was a prop gun. Don't worry about it. We are no children of yours. And we'll never call that place our home. Oh! <laughs> then tell me, what did you do all this for? You lost your mother and will soon kill your father as well. What will you gain in the end, other than sentences for your crimes? Please say justice. We will gain our long-awaited justice. <laughs> Dang! So what's the chances that the prop gun got replaced by a real one? Oh, no, you're right. Okay, no. It's over. Finally, it's over. That would be traumatic. So, where will you go now, Tulip? Maybe have this conversation somewhere else other than right next to the dead body. <laughs> I'm not too sure, Iris. Maybe somewhere with lots of flowers? After all, Mother always did love going where the blossoms were. What about you? I want to go visit mother's grave yeah that's not a bad idea huh to leap look what is it it's mother's favorite the rainbow rose look, oh it's blooming again that's i can pick that later yeah That was beyond mesmerizing. <laughs> Even I didn't expect the scene to go so well. And we got it in a single take. <laughs> All right, everyone.
everyone. We've got a wrap for Tulip and Iris. Congratulations, Ayaka and Chevrois! Amazing performance. Thank you. I didn't expect our parts to wrap so quickly. I wish I could savor the experience for just a bit longer. Yo, I hope Ayaka becomes like an actress. She could. <laughs> Paimon totally understands. Paimon's not ready to say goodbye to the clapperboard either. Filming has really been a lot of fun. You were great too, Chevras. The way you said, long awaited justice. It gave Paimon chills. That is indeed my favorite line in the whole book. I still remember trying to act it out in my room the first few times I read it. Oh, I would have never guessed you're that type. What do you mean? Who doesn't like stories where the guilty are punished and justice prevails over evil? Don't forget, I'm the captain of the Special Security and Surveillance Patrol. <laughs> captain, I have something urgent to report. Please excuse me, everyone. I'll be back in just a moment. It's okay, don't worry about us. So why does her hat not have melazines on it? Ah, uh, you know, great question, oh, honestly. Was she whisked away by work already? Mm, I was just about to tell her how great she did. It seemed like some urgent official business. Uh, then perhaps we should thank the stars that we were able to wrap both of your parts so quickly today. Switching around the filming schedule would have been a real pain. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I actually came over to let everyone know that we're all done for today. You can go home and get some rest. And one last thing, Miss Ayaka. Your acting skills today were immaculate as always. Are you sure you won't consider taking up full-time acting? See, I just happen to know this great troupe that's still looking for a lead actress. <gasps> Dude, wait, is it gonna go full circle? Wait a minute. Hold Thank you up. for your kind words, Director Farina. Nope. Unfortunately, there are still many matters that I have to take care of back home at the Yashiro Commission. I cannot remain in Fontaine to pursue an acting career. Nevertheless, I will make sure to treasure this incredible opportunity in my heart. Oh, that's a shame. But I understand. Just let me know if you ever change your mind. I believe it's also about time for me to take my leave. But hopefully I'll see you on set over the next few days. Even though my part's wrapped, I'd still like to swing by and help out the crew. Hmm. See you tomorrow, Traveler and Paimon. Yep, see you tomorrow! Well, what should we do next? Maybe we'll go investigate the case some more with Shivers today. Traveler, Paimon, please come with me. Oh, well, I guess we're doing that. You could say that our ship has finally chanced upon one of those small remote islands of intel. Oh, everyone's gone. Oh. Okay. Well, okay. never mind. Going to it's not. Whoa! Not walking there. Not walking all the way over there. I'll tell you that. Teleport. Hello. Exhausted. Paimon definitely didn't expect having to float this far after a full day of filming. So, Chevras, why did you take us here? Dude, did look you... at the flower petals. Did you find a new clue? Affirmative. It wasn't anything conclusive, but it should show us a clear way forward. Have you ever heard of someone by the name of Emily? Oh, you mean that famous perfumer? She's a good friend of mine. She's lent no? me her aid several times in the past to resolve some difficult cases. Oh no. Oh no. God Why? bless you. I have to. No! No! Wait! I, you said it too early! God bless you. I don't know if I can sneeze now. It's driving me mad. Yeah, I'll help. You just poked my nose. That's yeah, all you exactly. did. It's nothing. Did it make it worse? No. There. But it's not any better. Jeez. After I discovered the rainbow rose at the scene of the murder, I sent it to her. After all, she's probably the foremost expert on flowers and scents in all of Fontaine. And then? 
There was nothing remarkable about the flower or the trace amounts of soil left on it. But according to Emily, the rainbow rose left by the killer was derived from a very rare cultivar. Huh. Paimon didn't know that there were different varieties of rainbow rose. Paimon just thought they grew everywhere in the wild. Flowers that are deliberately cultivated will always show some different features from those that bloom in the wild. We already knew that the rose left at the scene belonged to a special cultivar, but with Emily's expertise, we were able to pinpoint the place where it was first picked from. Oh, Paimon gets mm. it now. So whoever first planted that rainbow rose was probably the killer. Precisely. And after we checked what we learned against some sales records from the past, we discovered that there's only one person in all of Fontaine who could grow and sell this specific cultivar. Oh, well that narrows it down quite easily. Uh, really? And who is it? <sighs> it's the novelist. But didn't you say he had an alibi? To be clear, I haven't changed my mind about him. I still don't think he was the one who pulled the trigger. However, that doesn't mean the true culprit never visited him at his home or never purchased a rainbow rose from his garden. Whatever the case, we will have to confirm a number of things with him. Okay. So you mean the next place we need to go is... Yes. We're going to pay him a visit at his home. Cool. Where is it? Uh, to your right. Right over there. It's literally up, up this hill. Why did I not just use Nahida? Oh, well. <laughs> is that an umbrella bird? I think so. That's gotta be it. Right there in the flesh. Daniel! Daniel, no! No! So yes! Close. Safety! How, how dare you try to shoot it? Why? Why? What's the purpose? Oh, I was hoping that would drop orbs. No, nope, only things considered enemies. Why, why must, why did you try to shoot the bird though? I just wanted to know. No, what? For sure. For sure of what? The, the orb? You want to see if everything in, like, what, Fontaine drops orbs? Curious. But didn't the killing seals make you feel bad enough? That should be his house. Oh, that's his house. There are so many Gardamex stationed around the place. Uh, that's pretty unusual, right? No, this is pretty normal for this place. According to what he told me last time we spoke, he hired them so he won't be harassed or disturbed. Huh. So there are a lot of flowers in his garden, but Paimon doesn't think we'll be able to pick one without alerting the garden X. Right, which is exactly why I think there has to be a special connection between him and the killer. Maybe he knows them? So, should we knock? Just wait here for now. I'd like to take care of a number of those garden X first. Wow, can we just ask the guy? But they're so far away. How are you planning to do that? Don't forget, Paimon. I'm actually the real-life captain of the Musketeers. Wait, but aren't they the proper, private property of that guy? Wait, Doesn't hold on. Doesn't matter. I Shoot! I don't think that's a good idea. That's... No, don't worry about the legalities. That that's comes later. That's property. No. Shoot it! Shouldn't we talk to them? Didn't no, headshots! Them Boom! Before? Bonus <laughs> points! Oh. Come on. Okay. Boom. Okay, two shots it is. What, three? Nope, two. Okay. Easy. I wonder if I could charge up the shot. I'll try doing that. Okay. Nope, no charging. Just shooting. Ah! Oh! Shouldn't we have- All clear. Let's go. I- I feel like we shouldn't have done that. Wait, wait, wait! Paimon's a little nervous now that we know he could be the killer. <laughs> Can we? Go over our plan of action again? I'll go knock on the door and make sure it's safe inside. Once we're sure that we're in the clear, I'll ask him to come with us for a quick round of questioning at the guard's headquarters. Um... But can't we just arrest him? Paimon, we don't even know if he did it! We still have no evidence that he's the killer, or that he lent the killer any direct aid. And yet we just destroyed some of his property, or hired help! Still, it would be appreciated if you could pick a rainbow rose from his garden for me while I'm talking to him. It'll help the Mara Shose Phantom confirm Emily's theory. Well, don't you already sure, know for sure? no problem. Just what? be careful, Chevras. What? What? I feel like I feel like we're breaking a few laws here. Don't worry about it. 
He'll probably be the bad guy, so it won't matter in the end. You still have to follow legalities. What legality? If he disappears, there is no trial. <laughs> Look at those sunflowers! Whoa, dude! Excuse me, Mr. Baptiste, are you home? Who could it be at this hour? Oh, it's you, Officer Chavras. Would you mind accompanying me to the guard's headquarters, Mr. Baptiste? We would like to ask you some questions about a case. Oh, is it still regarding the murder case from before? I cannot confirm or deny that at this time. So yes. So it is then. When anyone ever says I cannot confirm nor deny, it's always a yes. Unless it's a no. When has it ever been a no? Even I don't in know. real life. Whenever I someone I don't know. Whenever someone says, Oh, I don't know, could be, could not be, it's always a yes. I feel I've like never... just doing that now, just to mess with someone. I know, but it's not if some if something is a no, I've always just heard no it's not. But if it's ever a yes on something, it's like, oh, who knows? Can't say. I don't know about that now. Now I want to do that just to really mess with somebody out there. I have never once someone. I, I can I cannot confirm or deny. Come with me. They come with me. And then they're like, okay, so why okay, let's get it over with. It's like, oh no, it was nothing about that. I was just screwing with you. <laughs> See, like no one no one ever says we can no we cannot confirm nor deny this. It's always a yes, because if it's a no, they will say no. There's never I have never seen anything. Damn, you're repeating legal, yourself. Or any other case where it's a no. Uh huh. Have you? Uh mm, I don't know. Actually, no, it's always, it's either a no or I can't say anything, which means yes. Listen, I need you to come with me, Mr. Baptiste. Uh, Miss Chavras, I'll save you the trouble. Oh, and you two over there? There's no need for you to pick my flowers either. It's not time for them to bloom yet. Oh. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, we're kind of on his property picking his flowers. Without a warrant. So let's trample them. No, don't by don't, saving no. me the trouble, you mean? I will confess, I was the killer. So you're not the killer. No, you can't be the huh? killer. What? He, he just admitted he's guilty. Which means he's definitely not. Please relax, everyone. I'm not armed. The musket you're looking for has been buried in my backyard. So, was it your wife? Your kid? Who is it? Your brother? Brother? Sister? Maybe? Then it's my responsibility to inform you, Mr. Baptiste, that everything you say right now will be used as evidence for the inevitable trial. He could also sue you for... Never mind. Yes, I am perfectly aware of that. I must say, I hate this feeling. Oh? Is it because I confessed? Or because you've been proven wrong? Both, I suppose. Why'd you kill him? For the same reason as the one I wrote out in my novel, of course. I did it to exact revenge. Oh, I wonder if it actually was him, gen genuinely. What if this confession's, like, super real? Except he has a family. Yeah. Hmm. I know you haven't figured out the link between the two of us. Had you done so, I'd have been taken away to the headquarters a long time ago. But that won't stop me from always remembering his grotesque face. After all, he was the one who killed my mother. Okay. Your mother is still healthy and well. You know, I was adopted as a child. I was referring to my birth mother. Okay. Yeah. That was never recorded in the orphanage's records. Why, do you think he just appeared out of the ether? Yes. Please forgive a six-year-old child for concocting some lies to protect himself after watching his mother die right in front of him. So, your novel, it was like a record of your life? Well, that would mean you would have a younger sister. No, of course not. It was a work of fiction with many embellished parts. But, I am indeed the illegitimate son of a wealthy and influential man who abused his power to murder my mother. That part was a hundred percent real. Dude. But the man you killed didn't have a mora to his name. He was a hired assassin. An irredeemable beast who sank his fangs into a defenseless woman just for a few bags of mora. And you didn't kill your father? 
But if that's really the truth, you wouldn't be telling us any of this now. You still haven't managed to take revenge against your father, the true mastermind behind it all. Ah, so we are going to have to deal with it, okay? <laughs> I never thought I'd hear that kind of thing from the captain of the Special Security and Surveillance Patrol. I'm simply skeptical about your motives. It's simple, really. I've grown tired of everything and don't want to shoulder this burden anymore. You may have considered me too soft to pull the trigger. Well, as it turns out, you are exactly right. I've become overwhelmed by the aftermath of the murder. So you're going to call a stop to your revenge, just like that? The true mastermind is too rich and too powerful for me. I've accepted that I will never be able to avenge my mother alone. And so what? The characters in your book never gave up. Now, Officer Shavras, I'm the one who has killed a man, aren't I? Are you trying to convince me to commit another crime? <laughs> in my head, she's like, she's saying, do it. <laughs> What's your father's name? How do you plan to prove the veracity of all of your claims? Well, <clears throat> I'd like to speak with you privately. Sure. Why don't we speak privately at the guard's headquarters? No. It has to be here. I must ensure that we won't be overheard. <sighs> Fine. Let's talk here. When I said won't be overheard, I meant by anyone. Should be illegal to be that cute. Cinder ran by and hugged the corner of the wall and looked at us. And then I would like to speak with you and you alone. We can go somewhere else. For now. Thanks. I appreciate it. Please stay safe, Chevrez. Except there's... All right. Let's hear it. Oh, never mind. We are gonna know. Will you really believe what I'm about to say? No, they're gonna cut. Except the whole picky part of him having an alibi. Well, that depends on what you're going to tell me. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Then listen closely. Cut the scene. Yep. Oh, okay. We're gonna see it, but not here. Hmm. So that's how it's all connected. So, it seems you believe me after all. Do you want me to go public with this? No, of course not. At least, not right now. Then why did you bother telling me? You know, it's probably the guy that was uh, paying our director. Probably. You've read my work. What do you think? Uh, Even if you were to go public with all of this right now, he'd simply deny everything. It's been too long. Almost 20 years. Anything that could be used as evidence has long faded away. Even if there might have been a solitary island of truth once upon a time, it has long sunk beneath the waves by now. Cinder is just running around everywhere hugging walls. It's so cute. Justice will never find him. Not if you don't try. I know that as the captain of the Special Security and Surveillance Patrol, you will always stand on the side of justice. But do you really think a cushy life in prison really constitutes justice for him? I bet he could lead an extremely comfortable life in the Fortress of Meripede. Nah, uh, everyone can. In fact, it's it's not that bad. What are you trying to say? I've been observing you from a distance. Your portrayal of the musketeer was exquisite. Pull the trigger of justice against him. Let the villain get what he deserves. <laughs> he wants her to kill him. Dang. You want me to let you go so you may complete your revenge? No, Officer Chavras. I know that would be impossible. No. What I'd like is for you to perform the deed on my behalf. Plot thickens. Meanwhile, not far away. Oh, Chavras sure is taking her time. What could they be talking about anyway? Eh, yeah, murder. <laughs> Worried. What if he decided to attack her? I have full confidence in her skills. Oh, uh, you do have a point. Still, do you have any 
idea who the rich person might be? And why the novelist doesn't want us to hear what he's saying to Chevrus? Because he's asking her to murder someone. Sorry to keep you waiting, you two. Hey, how did your talk go? Did you figure out who the rich person was? I've already sent someone to escort Baptiste back to the headquarters for questioning. He wasn't lying about the musket. It was indeed buried in his backyard. So he did it? I think so. Weird. Now do you have an airtight alibi? Made it? Paid people off? I don't know. Well, except they're the guards and there's tons of witnesses in there as well. And not to mention New Valette is sitting on the chair and would have seen him in there. Okay, so in other words, it could be something else. Or he just planned it out really well. Genuinely. Don't know. But what about the name? Did he tell you the name of the rich guy? Yes, he did. But for now, I have to return to the special patrol. There are still a few loose ends I need to tie up. I feel like she's keeping something from us. I'll probably mm -hmm. be quite busy over the next few days, so apologies if you don't see me on set. Oh, are you actually going to do it? All right, Paimon understands if you can't tell us everything you know. We'll just keep an eye on the Steambird then. Actually, there's still something else I need your help with. Oh, part three completed. Oh, dun 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 dun. <laughs> the plot thickens. And I don't think there is any secret interactions after this one, at least not written in the guides also, I have. Just in case the time ticks, I'm just gonna trigger it. Oh yeah, go ahead. Yeah, let's go ahead and eight wait. And ten. Eight and ten o'clock. Eight and ten. Oh wow, that was not far. Just gonna sleep here for four hours. It's five technically, but you know, give or take a few Just minutes. Just like in real life. Wait, what? Nah, it's the following day. Following day. Got it. Now 24 hours. Oh no. Oh no. God bless you. Thank you. I mean, if it's 4 a.m., I could easily sleep to 8 a.m. I would be tired by that point. We haven't seen Chevra since that night at Baptiste's place. There's no point in worrying about it now. Let's go join up with the others. Go to the gathering spot. Good morning. Hayaka and I were just talking about you. Cool. Is Shefras still not joining us today? No, she's busy murdering someone. Uh, probably not. We haven't seen her either. Murder's a strong word in that context. We don't know if she's going to murder someone. She may, though. Huh? That, that's such a pity. Director Farina said that we've only got a few small scenes left before wrapping up the entire thing. She even said that she'll get me into a couple scenes so everyone will have a chance to shine in front of the camera. Aww. We were also planning on having a victory feast once we're all finished filming. You can join us, right? Of course. Mm, Food? If only Chevros was here. I still haven't taken a photo with her. Mm. <sighs> I'm afraid that can't be helped. Those special patrol folks are like phantoms when they've got a case on their hands. But to be honest, I'm even more concerned by what I read in the Steambird earlier this morning. It said that the killer in the murder case was none other than the author of The Two Musketeers. Oh, right. We're making a movie about the... Hmm. Mm-hmm. Great publicity. I mean, yeah, but... Oh, yeah, I heard about that, too. He came forward and confessed his crimes, but gave no explanation as to why he pulled the trigger. We didn't know about this case at all when we joined the film. Is it going to affect the reception of our work? It'll probably make it more popular. In, in some cases, though, it would ruin it, though. In some cases. Yeah, and give it five years and it'll be a cult hit. That's true. From a pure publicity standpoint, this will draw a lot more attention to our film. Uh, I have to say, though, that no director can be perfectly comfortable with garnering attention through means other than artistic skill. Yeah. Why well, you gotta take what you get, especially an unavoidable thing like this. Ooh, I love the back of Ayaka's dress. That ribbon. Hmm? Yeah. I don't think I've ever really looked at it. We haven't had the chance to. We don't own the skin. We don't own the skin. But, dang. That is nice. A lot of butterflies. Very to nice. To be fair, I feel like that ship sailed the moment you allowed yourself to be named as the director on our posters. It's not my fault that I'm super popular. 
what was that saying again? My popularity has... Uh... You're very popular. Anyway, moving on. Sunk <laughs> to an all-time low? Oh! Wow. Spread to the four corners of Tabat! Yes! <laughs> Actually. She's not wrong. Everyone loves her. Mm. Everyone, uh, anyone that has played through 4.2 loves her. Yeah. And if you don't, that's fair. That's fine, I guess. Everyone's entitled to their I don't, own opinion. I may not agree with that opinion, but you can have it. You may be wrong, but it's okay. <laughs> it's okay to be uh, wrong. Excuse me, everyone. Yo. Xavier! Feels like it's been ages since we last saw you. I've been talking non-stop with the Film Association, and I'm absolutely swamped trying to coordinate the film's marketing. So mm. forgive me for not being around more often, but please believe me when I say that I will make sure everyone's hard work gets the exposure it deserves. Nice. Oh, seems like you've been fighting your own battles. <laughs> yes, that's one way to put it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, and before we begin the final round of filming, please allow me to finally introduce you to the original investor of our film, Mr. Morris. So you finally decided to show up? Um, a pleasure to meet you all. We saw him at the beginning of the quest, correct? Mm -hmm. So this is him? Okay. Yes. Interesting. Glad to make your acquaintance, Mr. Morris. We've heard about the issues you've encountered with your financial situation and genuinely hope that things have taken a turn for the better. One would surely hope, right? Oh, well, uh, the situation has uh, indeed improved somewhat. Don't worry, Mr. Morris. Accidents and last minute challenges happen all the time. There's no need to blame yourself over it. Why do I feel like there's a plot related reason? The good news is that we're almost done filming now. And I would even say that this is the best story I've ever seen. Well, okay, calm Is down. Is that so? I see that that's, that's great news. Mm. All right, now that we've gotten all the pleasantries out of the way, let's get the show on the road. Are you somehow related to the other guy? We'll mostly be filming typical people and scenery from the streets today mm. to improve the sense of environmental ambiance in some parts of the film. Oh, <laughs> and there'll be a cameo for Mr. Kamisato and Miss Yoimiya as well. They'll be used to show outsider perspectives on the fates of the two musketeers. Oh. That's right. Ayato should be here any minute. Excellent! Then let's start with the scenery shots. Camera and clapper loader, you're up. Yep, we'll be ready! Remember, all we need are some wide zoom shots of the streets. If you happen to find some particularly lovely patches of flowers and grass, feel free to grab some close-ups of those as well. Nice. Why do I feel like we're gonna find a body? Ready? Lights! Camera! Action! Okay, now move the camera slowly. Uh, uh, Wait, are you doing to this? focus on that flower. Take a close-up shot of the... Hmm? What's wrong? Just adjust the focal length a bit. Ooh. Take a close-up shot of the flower. Something the matter? Wait. What's going on? It's not responding like usual. Uh, the, huh? But wasn't it working fine for all the days before? Oh, did... Oh, crap. I forgot her name. Did she mess with it? Veronique! Can we try a different camera? No problem. How about this one? All right, let's give it another try. Lights, camera, action! <laughs> Whoa! Uh -oh. I'm sure this oh, is fun. Tell me, this one is broken too. Veronique, do we have any other spare ones we can use? Um, mm, I'm afraid we only brought these two today. Why are what? what? Then go find a workshop to get them repaired right away! Oh, and you too, Bono! Go find our spare camera in the warehouse and bring it back to the set! I like how you just said his name, but it sounded like an insult. Honest. Did. Greetings, everyone. My apologies for the delay. Hmm? Is something the matter, Ayaka? It seems like there are some issues with the filming equipment today. We're stuck for the moment. 
I see. Well, let's not just stand here twiddling our thumbs. Actors to the makeup booth. We'll start on the next scene as soon as we get a working camera. The people at the workshop told me that the part which holds the lens in place seemed to have fallen off. That's super strange. It was perfectly fine just yesterday. Wait, so who sabotaged it, though? I mean, there's only one person I can think of. Who's that? I patch. Why would I? Why would she do that? She's buying time. She's yeah, okay. No time to dwell on that now. Something. Let's get back to filming. Ahem, quiet on set. Places, everyone. Lights, camera, action. Click. By the way, have you heard about that recent murder case? Hmm. Yes, I have. It seems that they've caused quite the commotion in the city. I heard that the chief of the guards is so mad about not catching the culprit that he's about to explode. Oh? I find that quite hard to imagine, considering how he already looks most days. Hmm. <laughs> Director, director, we have a problem. Oh, we're in the middle of a take. Couldn't you wait until we wrapped up this scene? No, director, our film, all the finalized film that we've been keeping in the case has disappeared. Uh. Oh, wait, well, what did you say? <sighs> Mr. Bono, please take me to where the film was kept right away. See so there, the investor took it. Maybe. I'm coming too. No, Yoimiya, you have to stay here. Oh. Rina's about to shank someone. Okay, listen up. Everyone who's not working on this current scene can go with Bono to look for the film. Everyone else, stay put and wrap up the scene. Yeah, I was about to say, because as the director... How could all these problems happen in just one day? The, the weather is perfect for this scene. Mm -hmm. And you don't get to control the weather. And if I was a director and this happened, I would be like, I'm about to literally throw somebody. <laughs> Someone's actually about to be defenestrated. I'm about to defenestrate somebody. Oh, wait, that was it? Oh, okay. How did it go? Did you find the film? We found it in the sewers. Huh? In the sewers? Is the film still okay? We discovered it just in time, so we should still be able to salvage it. Oh. The others are checking now to see if we lost any specific scenes. Oh, you scared me for a moment there. I nearly thought we had lost everything. I really don't want to experience that feeling of despair again. <laughs> Please, no one traumatize Farina anymore. <laughs> Until her second character quest, or first character quest, I guess. Uh, no, no, we did her first one. Oh, yes, then I guess it would be her second. Yeah, we're gonna have to wait for the second one. Okay, but who could have stolen the film and dumped it there? Um, could it be uh, some competitors working on other films? Mm, that doesn't seem likely. But if they wanted to harass us, why wait until the last day? Hmm. Hmm, mustache man. Okay, we don't have time to really look into it right now. Let's strike while the iron is still hot and wrap this thing up once and for all. Yeah, let's finish it. Oh boy. I would like to officially announce that our entry to the festival, The Two Musketeers, has now concluded filming. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, I'm on his spent. It's so late already. Even though the filming process proved to be extremely challenging, everyone provided valuable and unique contributions to the final product. Thank you all for your dedication and support. And just like director Farina, I would also like to extend my most heartfelt thanks to all of you. Really, you've all helped me so much. I just... Alright, let's save the awards speech for later, and hopefully also get some rehearsals in before the real thing. Mm -hmm. Anyway, now it's time to party! <laughs> let's all make our way to the beach and have a celebration feast so loud and fun that even the blubber beast will want in! <laughs> Yo, 
Nice. I'll pick these flowers. The rainbow rose. Okay, did the rainbow rose get introduced in this patch, or is that a thing already? That's been a thing. I think it's Lenny needed them. Got it. Okay. Whoa, this place is hopping. Everyone's finally getting hopping after wrapping up the film. Yeah, it's hopping. Let's go chat with someone. Have you heard? <laughs> Have you ever seen a fireworks show, Mr. Morris? Um, it's pretty amazing. Hi. Hi. This is a bit awkward um, to stand here. I'm afraid I haven't, but I'll, I'll take your word for it. You seem really suspicious. What are you saying? <laughs> what if he's not a bad guy? He's actually Hello. just sus. Oh, this is turning out to be quite the party. Nice. Well, you're acting rather goth, but I guess that's fitting. I was thinking, if this film turns out to be a success, could I ask the two of you to stay and be a part of my crew? Uh, of course, I'll definitely increase the pay for next time. You'll actually be paid. I yes. I'm more than happy to, Mr. Xavier. Thank you for the offer, Mr. Xavier. But I've made some plans to go on a journey to the other nations once the festival is over. Oh? Is that so? Well, then in that case, bon voyage, Miss Veronique. Please feel free to get in touch once you've returned to Fontaine. Cool. Good business. Yo. Hey, Ayato! How's your work been going? Everything went rather smoothly. Thank you for your concern. Ayato told me that we've already confirmed the dates for some Inazuma Fontaine cultural exchange events. Look forward to those in the future. Probably. So the next time we visit, we'll be doing so in our capacities as the representatives of the Yashiro Commission. Not on vacation. Oh, oh. that's great! Then maybe Paimon will vacation. be able to find Fontaine detective novels in Inazuma from now on! Hmm. Oh, wait. Wouldn't Yaimiko get upset if that happens? That would be stealing some of her business. Well, I mean, she does have the complete market dominated. Well, as long as the novels are sufficiently interesting, I don't think she'll get mine. Uh, you've got a point. Get mad She's or mine. She's complaining that light novels have become bland and too predictable, after all. <laughs> Fair. The cultural exchange won't only feature literatures of both nations, of course. We have also made plans for cross-cultural engagements in the fields of gourmet cuisine, uh, toy making, and artisan craftsmanship. When the time comes, be sure to visit and participate in all the events. Hint, hint, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <sighs> I wish we could have spent some more time here. <laughs> like we're just standing back here, listening in on them talking. Don't worry. It won't be long before we're back again. <laughs> yep, that's eavesdropping 101. Yep. Hey, Farina. Clapper loader and camera operator, you've both worked really hard. Paimon thinks you worked even harder than us. Honestly, Paimon was getting a little tired of playing with the clapperboard by the end of it. Worst of all, Paimon started having dreams of you shouting, Lights, camera, action! into Paimon's ears. The actual dream can't even start until you've yelled that. Uh, hey, if anything, shouldn't I be more grand and delightful than your dreams? <laughs> We've been through so much together, and that's how your brain remembers me? I mean... Ouch. I mean, if you're the boss, you're the boss, and, uh, you know... That, that's not Paimon's fault. We've just used the clapper board too much lately. Anyway, yep. what's most important is that we wrapped the film. I'm pretty confident that we'll take first prize. <laughs> You mean the Farina Award. Hey, no need to mention the official name. <laughs> it's a little embarrassing, I see. Wait, now that you mention it, if we did win the prize, would Farina just get a statue of herself? Yes. Uh, come on, I don't need that kind of attention. Xavier can accept the reward on our behalf. Imagine accepting a statue of yourself. That'd be really awkward. That would be weird, man. But just imagine! Farina accepting the Farina Award. And holding a Farina statue. It's Farina-ception. Uh, uh, 
going back to my dessert now. You all can keep discussing that on your own. Oof. Sorry, Farina. Gosh darn it, Paimon. Why? Why do we gotta bully Farina? Hmm. What kind of dessert should I try next? Ooh, that is a lot of good looking desserts right there. Oh, talking to you again. Chiori! Hey, you two. Are you not really into these kinds of big social occasions? Uh, not particularly. But this is still better than Fontaine Fashion Week. Oh, I'd what, imagine so. What does that look like? <laughs> Pain. <laughs> but if this film becomes a big hit, people will definitely come flocking to your shop. Yes, that's highly likely. As long as the film can premiere as planned. Are you still worried about the case? That, and all the obstacles we had to face today. Hmm, you're right. It's as if all our bad luck just manifested at once. Mm. But why today, of all days? <laughs> Man, Yoi Mia, what are you doing? Yeah, 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 of course, it's Yoi Mia that the camera wants us to notice. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. No. No, it's nothing. We've already delivered the film to the editors, so there should be nothing more to worry about. Mm-hmm. How are you doing, Mr. Morris? You having a good time? Well, you could say that. Uh, do you happen to know when the party is scheduled to end? <coughs> oh, why? Are you in a hurry? <laughs> mm -hmm. Judging by how much fun everyone's having, I'd say probably not until well after midnight. Is there something that you still have to take care of at home, Mr. Morris? Oh. Well, uh, I'm just not a late-night person, so I might take off shortly. Oh, no! Uh, silly me. I almost forgot something super important. Oh, uh, what is it? I prepared a whole batch of fireworks for the party, but I forgot to bring them over from the warehouse. Fireworks, you say? Well, that's, uh, truly a pity. Sorry things didn't go as planned. Could you help me carry them over, Mr. Morris? I won't be able to fetch all of them by myself. Me? Uh, uh, are you sure that you can't find anyone else? What? <laughs> I just wanted to make this surprise for everyone. The warehouse isn't far from here. We'll be there in no time. Pretty please, Mr. Morris. These are some of the best fireworks I've ever made. So I also want you to see them before you leave. They're stunning. I promise that they'll be a once-in-a-lifetime experience that you'll never forget. What's going on here? Actually, do you think Morris is the dad? Uh, yeah, no, I think Morris is probably most likely the dad. He's about to get murk. Uh, but... Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's without a doubt. Unless it's, it's okay, not... just come with me. If we're sneaky enough, nobody else will see us leaving. <sighs> All right. The warehouse is right over here. I moved the fireworks there in advance, so it shouldn't be too much work bringing them back. Is... Uh, Shh. Don't let anyone else see us. I still want it to be a surprise. Is that a force field? Yes. That's it also interrupted his dialogue. Ah. Wait, so wait, that dialogue interrupted the other dialogue? Yes. Yes, oh. it did. Lovely. Well, it would have triggered anyway, because I would have gone that way. Huh. That's nice. He was probably just going to grumble about, oh, making me help and pick up fireworks. So is this a ploy, or is Yoi Mia actually just forgetting her fireworks? Well, time to find out. Ooh. Hmm? It's dark in here. Whoa. So, wait here, Mr. Morris. I think the light switch should be somewhere over here. Well, why did I have to get roped into this? Uh, what was that? This is from the, uh... uh. Dead. <laughs> Who's there? <laughs> get me out! Get me out of here! <laughs> did you really think you'd get away, Morris? <laughs> Dude, it's a pole! You pushed it to get in! It's a pole door! It's a... <laughs> When you're pushing on a pull door? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, 
Elisa died a far more heroic death than this. She fought your assassin to the end, to save the children she had hidden beneath the floorboards. That is Elisa's pendant, the one with a photo of you two inside. The one you gave her. Ring any bells? It's a fake! It has to be! There's no way! No way your assassin didn't destroy it, you mean? Nice. Did you ever love her, Morris? Or was killing her always the plan? No, 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 please! Listen to me! I told Eliza to keep us a secret! I paid her plenty for her silence! I never thought she'd keep the child! Everything was gonna come out, and wow. if I had no choice, she forced my hand! No! I'm making you. Man, they're animating this solo. Just, just name your price, please! You can keep your Mora, and you Dude. can go to hell. He's gonna piss himself. <laughs> I'm Captain Shavraz of the Special Patrol. Morris, you're under arrest for Eliza's murder. He's gonna pass out or something. <laughs> oh, maybe not. Hmm? <laughs> nice. Got him. <laughs> oh! Oh! Woo! You're under arrest too, prop manager Veronique. Or perhaps oh. I should call you the Second Musketeer. Dang! Okay, that was cool! Oh! Wait, what's going on? This wasn't in the script. Wow! That... That was cool. That was awesome, okay. Wow. Drop the gun, Veronique. Why? Why would you keep me from exacting revenge on this heartless monster? Drop your weapon. This is my final warning. Drop it or she drops you. <laughs> also, there's only one shot in that thing. Well, what? in this world. What is going on? That's one piece logic. Yeah. Do I have to spell it out for you, Morris? Everything that took place just now was staged to get you to confess the truth. But this last part is all improv, of course. Jeez, that's some scary improv. Mm-hmm. <sighs> It's because even I had no way to confirm my theory until now. <coughs> I mean, yeah, I, sister. I'll be honest, I didn't really see that coming, other than I thought it was interesting that the camera girl was going to be traveling all over the world, but I just thought, oh, that's nice. She's going to vacation. But no. Thank you for your performance, Yoimiya. Could I trouble you to go and bring in the other special patrol members? They should be on standby just outside. Actually, technically, she only attempted to murder him. So. I mean, it's still a it's still attempted murder, but like, oh, we got the bad guy. Oh, please tell the other cast members not to worry about us. We'll be rejoining them shortly. On it. So nice what shot, do you think, Morris? Care to talk about what happened 20 years ago? <laughs> My patience is limited, you know. Don't force me to take you back to the interrogation room. I'd wager that you wouldn't last for more than a minute in there. With the recording we made, you have no chance of winning in court. Cooperating with us now is the most practical move. I mean, yeah. I don't know if you're allowed to record. Nah, it is. Uh, if someone confesses, I think as long as you catch it on video somehow, it's fine. It's like, okay, you, I don't think you're allowed to break in anywhere. I think then that gets, it's like admissible by the court and everything. I know, but isn't there also something about recording? Like if police do it? Or something like that. Uh, police are allowed to have their body cams. You know? Well, I know, but something like this. Uh, Setting up a stage thing. Is that... Legal? I think that's... No, that's still a thing, I thought. Because they uh, do that for drug busts and everything nowadays. Well, that's body cams. I guess. But yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know. But, like, there's undercover cops, too, and everything. As mm -hmm. far as I know, they still do it, I think. Why not, but they don't set up plays. Oh, you mean, like, when you play a part or something? I mean, I don't know. I wonder if the situation's legal. Right. <laughs> In the world of Fontaine, 
Uh, in real life. In re uh, yeah, in the world of Genshin, I don't think we need to worry about it. I hired an assassin to murder Elisa. She once worked as a maid on my family's estate. She was very beautiful, and after some time, I fell for her. So you had a fling with the maid, and then when she got pregnant, you either gave her the choice to off her children or to die. We kept our relationship a secret and carried out an affair for some time, but it wasn't long before she became pregnant. That's what happens when people canoodle. <laughs> Yeah. And if my parents ever found out, they would have stripped me of my inheritance and status, driven me out of my home. You sound so pathetic. Mmm, so you murdered her. That makes sense. I also didn't expect Elisa to insist on bringing the pregnancy to term. She even asked me to leave my family and travel far, far away with her. Wow, she loved you. Wow, she loved you and, and your child. Can I- can, How can the terrible. Can the Traveler punch this man? Can we just like, you know, we don't- not kill him. Can we just slug him a few times? A few times. Just a few? She believed that you were truly in love with her. I didn't have a choice! And what about your kids? You not care about them? Literally knocked up a girl and you're like, no, just kill the kids. Who cares? Yes. What the freak? I gave her a large sum of Mora, told her to leave the family and to get rid of the baby. Well, aren't you the lowest? But then years later, she sent me a letter that there were photos of two children and she even asked if I could find some time to visit them. You coward. Absolutely. She wasn't even blackmailing him. She was seeing if he's still interested. Huh? Two children? Paimon thought Baptiste was the only... Uh, you mean... Twins. Even if she had the children against your will, you could have just ignored the letter entirely. Why kill her? I had just gotten engaged to be married to an heiress from another wealthy family. So if anyone were to find out about Elisa, my life would be completely ruined. I didn't have a choice. So you murdered her and now your life is ruined. Idiot. <laughs> <laughs> no, you always had a choice. You just made the wrong choice. Again. That was a lot of wrong choices. That was a lot of wrong choices. <sighs> Do you know how it feels to watch your mother be killed right in front of you? My brother and I were hardly even school age yet. We were hidden beneath the floorboards, grasping each other's hands like a lifeline. We were so terrified that we didn't even know we could ever take a breath. All we could do was to watch mother try to fight back and then collapse to the floor. What was he holding him like that? I'm sorry. I don't know. Oh, it was a goofy, yeah, it was a goofy thing, but dang, that's horrible. Even after the assassin left, we were still too terrified to leave our hiding spot. We thought that he might come back. It was only until the next evening when we finally climbed out and gathered around our mother. Mm. Oh. But she had already become cold and stiff to the touch. You made up your mind right then and there to bring this case to light. Not only that, we resolved to get our revenge. <coughs> God bless you. Thank you. And that's why you became the Musketeers. No, that's why I became a Musketeer. The man from before was also killed by me. My brother had nothing to do with it. We did call it. Yeah, by the end, though, I was wondering, however, like, that was really well written because I thought it was like, oh, he's probably covering for someone. But by the end, I was like, okay, maybe the guy did just actually kill the dude. Except there was always two. Yeah, there was always two. I didn't think about that. And good on him for trying to uh, stop his sister from murdering the this guy. I like how one became an author and was like, I'm going to I'm going to expose my father's exploits through writing and everything. That's kind of cool. I like that. I figured as much. Uh, you did? Yeah. I once told these two that he didn't look like a killer to me. His confession from that night also rubbed me the wrong way. I think what really tipped me off was, how could I not feel a sense of regret in him? Yeah. I mean, if you're angry enough. 
father was kind of a, you know, piece of trash. I don't think he would feel bad. Uh -huh. He confessed faster than any criminal I've ever met, but he didn't say a single word about you. He insisted that he was the sole perpetrator in the case. But after the questioning ended, I disassembled the musket we dug up from his backyard, put it in front of him, and told him to reassemble it. Oh. Want to guess how far he got? He had no clue. <laughs> that is one way to find out. He had no idea where to even start. He's never touched a gun in his life. Based on that, I determined that he was not acting alone. He only surrendered himself to draw our attention and create a moment of opportunity for his partner. So, I decided to play along. And as expected, the second musketeer followed us without hesitation once she saw Morris get separated from the rest of the cast. Besides, why else would he call the novel The Two Musketeers? Mm -hmm. But how did you know it was Veronique? I figured it out the moment Baptiste told me his father's name. That so-called financial crisis was all just a ruse. He just wanted to sign up as the investor and then leave the film without any source of funding. Oh, we called it! After all, he has a vested interest in minimizing the reach of this story. It's really just the same thing as what he did to Elisa all those years ago. Human scum. <laughs> But then Xavier pulled out all the stops and got the film made against all odds. Morris couldn't have that. With the killer in custody, he figured it was safe to act. And so he came to visit the set today, just as I expected. Wait, so you were behind all those mishaps today? Oh man, Paimon's ready to beat him up. <gasps> as for the identity of the second musketeer, I assumed they'd probably stay close to Morris and look for an opening. And if they already knew that Morris was the film's investor, then that narrowed the list of potential suspects as well. Furthermore, being the props manager would allow the culprit to avoid scrutiny by purchasing mechanical parts in the name of the crew. Mm -hmm. With that hypothesis in mind, I went back to check Baptiste's orphanage adoption records. Guess whose name I saw on the same page, just a few lines from his. Ah. <sighs> My brother. He trusted you. As in he trusted me to perform the deed on his behalf? He trusted you to stand on the side of justice. I am. <laughs> I, I thought love you it. could do it as well. Oh, the look on your face when you told him to go to hell. I really thought you'd put a bullet in his brain. You know what he has done. Are you telling me that you'd rather see him spend the rest of his life living like a king in the fortress of Meripede? Yeah, he probably will. I will never be able to forget the feeling of my mother's cold, lifeless hands. And you would call this ending fair? Is this what you call justice? Eh, luckily justice doesn't end here. <sighs> I won't lie, Veronique. I did hesitate when your brother first told me about the truth. I wondered. I agonized over whether I should really put a bullet in his head. So why don't you? Because that should never be how justice is carried out in this world. Perhaps to you, justice is simply reciprocated. An eye for an eye and a life for a life. But everyone has their own understanding of justice. If everyone were to pursue their own definition of it, there would be no more order in this world. Today, you'll kill Morris, and tomorrow, his children may come for you. The world cannot render judgments based on a desire for revenge. That will only lead to a cycle of revenge, as well as the destruction of order and civilized society. Fontaine is founded on a set of laws and a standardized code of justice. That is why we are the nation of justice. But with all that said, I will promise you this. Morris will not lead a cushy life in the fortress of Meripede. Actually, that's, yeah, don't send him there. Uh, low key. I mean, they have to. It's part of their justice system. I mean, uh, well, maybe, maybe. If he committed a, a crime in another country, you could send him there. But if he only, you know, if it's only a domestic crime, then uh, you can only punish him here. I wonder what they're going to do, actually. Chevrolet? The rest of the special patrol is here. What is gonna Thank happen? Thank you so much, Yoimiya. Mm. Letelier, Terena. 
He may get the death away. penalty. I don't know. <laughs> true, true. Death penalty does exist. Maybe he'll duel his way out and die. I don't know. There's still, <laughs> he, there's still like multiple tiers of he's probably going to die probably. before he ends up in prison. Yeah. I still can't agree with your reasoning. Aww. He still is going to die, probably. Most likely. But if he does make it to the Fortress of Merope, then yeah, he's probably fine. Maybe. He murdered someone and did a bunch of other crimes, so he's most likely going to try to duel for his honor. Or something. die in the process. Yeah. So he's going to die anyway. I know. Justice has not been delivered. At least, not today. Oh, come he on, girl. He still may die. You're really forgetting that part of this legal system. I hope she lets go. Let's go. We should give an explanation to the crew. That would be very hard, though, to heal. It, it, it's not impossible, but she's been holding onto that grudge all her life. That, that would take a bit to heal. Mm -hmm. I mean, what would have happened after she killed him? She Probably would, would have felt left. really empty after that. Yep. Life filled by vengeances. Re revenge. I like how books and movies always touch on that, but low key. Revenge is such a hollow feeling. Genuinely. Because once you're done. You're done. What do you, what do you do after? Literally nothing. You just, you just accept it and you're like, oh, okay. I don't feel any better. It, yeah. And now I have nothing. Yeah. Great. It's fantastic. I think uh, you made the right call. Yeah. Thank you for your concern. I'm fine. I I didn't say the first thing. I said the second thing, but it's <laughs> fine. I guess you sus I guess you thought I would just would pick the first one. Okay, that's fine. I, was I guess. Thinking about the things in life that have driven people to take justice into their own hands. Yeah. yeah. A lot of messed up crap out there in the world. It's a broken world. For now. Ooh, this music. <sighs> Who would have thought Morris would turn out to be? Uh, I'm at a loss of words. How could he have done something like this? Wait, I, I forgot. I that scene was so awesome. I forgot that there's just a beach barbecue going on out here. <laughs> yep. I'm just glad that you're all safe and sound. Who knew that such a labyrinth of cases would be behind this story? I mean, it wasn't that complicated, but. Eh. Well, what should we do now? We have a finished film, of course, but should we still go ahead with the premiere? Yeah, yeah. What do you mean? Shouldn't you be even more motivated to spread the word now that you've learned the truth? Yeah. Chiori is right. I'd also like more people to see this story for themselves. But the real ending of the story seems to have deviated somewhat from the one in the script. Is that still acceptable to you, Miss Chevres? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The call is yours. We still have time to reshoot an ending if that's what you'd like. No, it's fine as is. I like what we have for the catharsis. Romanticism is what gives works of art their appeal. Fiction is able to explore means of restitution that could never work in real life. Yeah. Just like the real world, the world of stories also has its own set of rules and justice. These different possibilities are what initially drew me to reading in the first place. Oh, Sounds good to me. I support your decision. What about Veronique? Will she be okay? She will soon face her judgment alongside her brother and Morris. I mean, the brother just had a false... Uh, uh, it's impeding an investigation, I think he'd be charged. an investigation, and it depends how involved he was with the first murder. Also, is there a tr I can't remember. Is there a charge for false con like making a false confession? Yeah, I think so. So he'd be hit with a few things, but he'd be hit with a few things, but he'd be fine overall. He it depends how related he was to the first murder, because then he would be uh, an accessory, be? An potentially. Accessory, that's potentially. It. Yeah. If I had to guess, they'll probably all be sent to the fortress of Maripede. I'll make sure to give Risley a heads up about it. They'll all get uh, there. Okay. I don't think all of them. They, uh, maybe the brother and sister. Oh, never mind. There. The guy is totally dead. The girl's going to get him in the fortress, most likely. Yeah, I feel like that's a really bad idea to put them all in there. Yeah. Oh. I, what? You mean that kind of heads up? Exactly. Wait, what? Ahem. All right. Then the matter's settled. Now that everything's been taken care of, 
There's no reason for us to keep looking all gloomy and grumpy. And please do not implicate me in the fact you're about to murder him. Let's get back to the feast and enjoy each other's company. We'll be starting the post-production process tomorrow. You should join us, Shavras. You missed the first few hours of the party, didn't you? All right. Count me in. Nice. Then I'll wait for you over there. There's still some good news that I'd like to share with Shevras. Nice. Traveler, Paimon, could you wait for me by the sea after the party ends? I'd like to go on a brief walk with the two of you. See you then. Thank you very much. Oh. How's there another part to this? Uh, I guess the film festival. Oh, yeah, the film festival. Need to finish that story. Ah. T! Hey, and the game. Oh, yes, you're right. The TCG. The TTCG! <laughs> Sorry for the wait. Oh, we weren't waiting long at all. Is there something else you wanted to tell us? No, I don't have anything new to share. I just felt that since you were my investigation partners, I should have another conversation with the two of you. Uh, traveler. How would you have responded to Baptiste's request if you were in my shoes? Mm -mm. I would have done the same as you. I would have helped him get his revenge, or I don't know. In that case, I would have done the same as her, I think. Right? Because they had the guy dead to rights and everything like that, basically. Yeah, I, I'd say that. Is that so? Well, thanks for sharing. Also, yeah, just support her on that. Don't make, don't young, have, give her doubts. My father often took me here to swim. We'd come rain or shine, even when it was freezing cold. <laughs> even when it was thundering lightning? That doesn't sound very safe. He told me that swimming was the best activity to train one's strength of will. You could never give up before reaching the shore, especially when the water was cold. Hmm. Oh? Why is that? Because the moment you give up would be the moment you die. At that point, I still hadn't received my vision. She's a Electro one, right? No, she's Pyro. She's Pyro. Duh. You were looking at her hair. You know, Sorry, was... yeah. One winter, the chilly wind felt almost like knives on my skin, and the seawater was so frigid that it numbed my toes the moment I stepped in. Because <laughs> her whole thing is fire and electric reactions. Get it? Purple so and purple red. and red. Okay, that's why they did that. Funny. It's cool. I cried and begged my father to spare me from having to swim across, but he wouldn't listen. Mm. He used to be a member of the Special Patrol as well. You could say it was his way of educating his children. Mm. Sounds Jeez. like he's a bad dad. <laughs> uh, I, uh, a harsh dad, you know. Some, I mean, it sounds like she had the uh, the baby bird approach of uh, you either sink or swim, or you fly or you fall. Kind of ah, so she could have died as a child. It sounds like it. Yeah, that would make him a bad dad. <laughs> Like, ah, dang. She survived? Ah, uh, she died. She was weak. <laughs> it's like, yeah, thanks, Dad. I, I'm sure he wouldn't have let her die. Maybe. I, we don't know him, so I can't. I don't know him. I All I'm getting is this. That All I can't awful. speak. When he saw that I wouldn't stop crying, he just picked me up and tossed me into the <laughs> icy water. I'm just saying. She could have died. <laughs> the bone-chilling cold took away my senses. I couldn't feel anything but fear and rage. How dare I waited you, Dad? For my father to save me, but one look and I knew he'd already started swimming for the opposite shore. I realized that Whoa. if I were to give up, I really would die right then and there. Yeah, no, no, you're, you're right. That's that's pretty bad. I used all of my strength to try and catch up to my father. Those few minutes felt longer than my whole life up until that point. I did, however, make it to the other side. And then I I had my father arrested. <laughs> I've something. never felt afraid about anything in my life after that. Nor have I ever cried again. Oh. Oh yeah, because you almost died. Yeah, but that crying is healthy. Would have never worked on Paimon. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that was the right method for anyone. Yeah. <laughs> it's just that working now as I am in the pursuit of justice. I still sometimes feel like I've been tossed into that winter sea all over again. The anger and the helplessness. Shivers. But the worse I feel, the more I know to never give up. 
The alternative would be to forever lose myself among the waves. Anyway, how about a race? Neither of us will drown, but we can still see who swims faster. I'm game. I'll just use Farina to run across. <gasps> oh, dude. to mark the start of the race. Uh-huh. I think you've been using that too much. <laughs> Clapperboard has gone oh, to her head. darn it. I have a swimming contest with Chevros. Chevros. However you say it. You oh, look at her schedule. Actually, what weapon do they have on her? They have... The Rightful Reward. Whoa. When the wielder is healed, restore eight energy. This effect can... Oh, this must be, um... Is this the uh, Fontaine Spear? Is that the craftable Fontaine thing? I'm assuming. That thing looks pretty sick level It up. is quite cool. I really wanted to make some of the Fontaine weapons, but... You don't, don't have, have a character that wants any of them. It's an HP Spear, by the way. That's pretty nice. When the wielder is healed, restore eight energy. Not too bad for Hutel. If you don't have, like, a, a weapon. Oh, I could look at her stuff before she officially comes out. I mean, you can. It's you could, yeah. It's right there. How much? Uh, like, two, two days. days. Are we waiting or are we going? What are Ooh. we doing? I'll save something for us to demo her with. Got it. Okay. No, I really want to look. No, but it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's not fine. <laughs> Wait, how do we have a swimming contest when both characters are in our party? I don't know, maybe whoever wins is whoever I'm playing as. Oh, well. Favoritism much? Hey man, I'll, I'll use an excuse. Oh, yo, I forgot. She's a Fontaine character, so she Whoosh. can do this! Take that, that any not Fontaine character. Aha, now... See, see... Oh, that felt good. The new characters have something that Zhongli can't do. <laughs> you are so Get wrecked. in the water, Chevrolet. You are swimming even faster than Paimon can fly! Uh, so, about the special patrol, did you join because of your dad? Partly, but I'd say I was more inspired by the heroes I read about in stories growing up. Ooh, that's nice. Oh, so it's due to your love of stories! Of course, it was only after I joined the special patrol that I learned that truth is often stranger than fiction. That is a very true statement. Yep. Come on. Let's walk a bit more. The real world is way weirder than any form of fiction. Yep. Well, because fiction's based off the real world, so it makes sense. Whoa. The clouds. To be honest, I do sometimes question whether the decisions I make are the right ones. But I know that no matter what, I must keep swimming. Because the only thing I've got my eyes on is the shore in the distance. Okay, the pacing is going okay-ish. I'm just worried that if we go too far, we're gonna miss dialogue. Yep, it just scares me like that. All of MiHoYo's games scare me like that. Thank you for coming on this walk with me. I feel a lot better after getting all that off my chest. You're welcome. Huh, we're nearly back at Baptiste's house. Huh, you're right. I didn't realize we were so close. He really did plant a lot of flowers. It's just like how he described it in the story. Oh. Huh? <gasps> Wait. Paimon, Traveler, look! What, is it a ghost? The rainbow roses in the garden. They're in full bloom now. Oh crap, can I pick them all? Don't look at me like that. Act 4 complete! Now, where is the character? <gasps> uh oh. I think that's her. Okay. Even though it's a bit late, I must thank you for investigating this case with me. Not on behalf of the special patrol this time. It's a personal oh, okay. expression of gratitude from yours truly. Thanks. Uh, okay, about your life story. Family. Oh, you want to hear more about my father? <laughs> yes! Mm -hmm. To be honest, I didn't spend that much time with him. He was always busy with the special patrol, so he would oh. often return home really late at night. Some nights, he didn't come home at all. Is he still alive? Your only memory of bonding with him is when he almost killed you, huh? <laughs> Once, he didn't come home for a long time. Maybe a whole week or so. When I went out to buy food, I learned that he had become a criminal. And by extension, that made me a criminal's daughter. 
Oh, what? Great. But we can talk about that another day. Oh, sure, sure. Uh, about the case. I yeah. actually have a lot of sympathy for Veronique and Baptiste. I can understand the hatred they feel for their father. I'm getting that. But that doesn't mean I'll allow them to walk the path of evil, even if it might lead to another sense of justice. What about the film? Films are different from the real world. They're a form of art and represent the wishes in people's hearts. Sure, I guess. I adore the two musketeers, and I'm very happy to have had the opportunity to act the role as one. I can't wait to catch the film when it premieres in the Opera House. I'm looking forward to seeing the audience's reaction to the climactic ending. Please take care. Thank you for looking out for me. I'll see you at the award ceremony. I'd be very surprised if we don't win. Hmm, that's because we haven't seen any of the other ones. Anyway. Well, with all the buzz going on about this case and everything, yeah, I'd say we're a shoe in But, I mean, unless it was terrible, then, you know. Uh, and you're done with your dailies. Yep. Uh, bu 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 uh, what do we have? That is not what I think. I don't think we have anyone else to talk to, so just on to part five. There we go. Wait until two days. Wait for two days, then for them to tell you to wait for a specific time. So maybe go like two days, then like eight o'clock. Oh, no, nah, it has to be the day after tomorrow. Okay. If we were at like a very, if we were like middle of the night, we could have done it a little shorter, but it has to be two days. Two days. Waking up at 5 a.m. Bum, 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 bum. What are we doing for two days? Just like camping? Guess we're just standing here, solitary. Not moving. Just existing, watching the birds fly by this evening. Actually, this morning, but evening rhyme, so I went with it. Oh, really? Pinelon? No insightful insights? Really? Just go? Just go. Okay. Don't forget to uh, talk to uh, Catherine whenever to get the uh, daily commission. Yup. Oh! Hi. Here we go. Some more time has passed after that. Sweet. Oh, can we? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. The film has a successful premiere in the musket. The musket murder case also successfully comes to an end. Xavier, it's been a while. Sup, dude? Hey there, you two. Sorry, I've been scarce. I've been buried in marketing and preparing the film for release ever since we wrapped post production. The award ceremony is today, right? Paimon wonders if we'll win the Farina Award. I'd give it a 90% chance. Farina! Oh, Paimon didn't know you were already here. You're earlier than everyone else. I'm sure the others will also be here in no time. Uh, hmm. Xavier, if we end up getting called on stage, shouldn't you come up with a name for our crew? Well, uh, but we don't even know if we're going to win. I wouldn't want to jinx our chances by celebrating early. I mean, just the crew that worked on the movie. I mean... <laughs> Surely you've seen the audience's reactions to our film. We've had nothing but critical acclaim. You've also had conversations with the Opera House's operating staff, right? Didn't they want to increase the number of showings? It was that good, apparently. With the Mora you've made from the box office, you can now open your very own film company. But that's all credit to my amazing crew. You've all helped to make this a reality, so I can't be the only one asked to come up with a name. Well, give it some thought. I'm sure the crew will respect your choice. All right, but before that, Traveler and Paimon, could I trouble you to quickly pay a visit to the Fortress of Meripede? Why? Oh, to ask the girl. Huh? But shouldn't we stay for the awards ceremony? I wanted to ask you two to invite Chavras to join us at the ceremony. She's one of the lead roles, after all. Oh, okay. I haven't been able to find her recently, so I haven't had the chance to invite her personally. Oh. It's a I... super low flying plane over our house. According to the papers, the culprits of the musket murder case will be personally escorted today by the captain of the special patrol to the fortress of Meripede. Gets it now. It's a piece of cake for us. Yep, just wait here, Xavier, and maybe try 
try to come up with a few snappy sounding names. The Farina Bunch. All right, then I'll leave you bunch to it. Bunch of Farinos. <laughs> the Gremlins. <laughs> Will we really win an award? Trust me. When have I ever been wrong about something like this? We've only just met you over the last like few months, so I don't know. But that's if I take a very literal approach to your question. Ba -bo. Ba -ba -ba -ba. What ba -ba. floor? Ba -ba -ba. This one will work. Just Going down. Of office. Whee! <laughs> Everyone from this area is just cool looking. What the heck? That's just Fontaine. I'm so excited for Natlan. <laughs> or Natlan? This not is as far as not, I'll be taking not them. Lan. I'll leave the three of them to you now. Got another errand to run? Something like that? I'm expected at a party. Now that's something you don't hear every day. Found a new pastime? Acting. <laughs> no, it's just a special occasion. Shivers, Risley! Festivals really do bring people together. It's been a while since I last had so many visitors at the Fortress of Meripede. Call it the festival spirit, I guess. Yeah, you could say that. Even our head nurse has gotten herself all worked up preparing super deluxe nutritious shakes. Just one gulp and you'll have met all your nutrition needs. Wait, yo, does that taste good? You'll feel very neutralized. No, uh, neutral. <laughs> what are you talking about work just now? We've already finished discussing everything. So, what do you think about my heads up, Mr. Risley? Hmm. I believe I haven't yet made any promises or guarantees. But you also didn't shoot me down. Here, how about this? You could give everyone a copy of the newspaper. Perhaps on the day when the cover story happens to, oh, I don't know, expose a certain someone's misdeeds from 20 years ago? Hmm. I suppose then a certain someone may soon find himself the most unlucky person in the Fortress of Meripede. Wait, what? Obviously, they're talking I about mean, the guy. I mean, he did something bad, but he is also a criminal and a place filled with criminals who have all done bad things. So what what's going to happen to him in here? I don't know. I mean, he's a murderer, but like you're in prison. So, yeah. So the Fortress of Meripede is very free. So I'm assuming they're trying to set him up to be locked away inside like a deeper portion or something. No, I think they're just trying to make him like unpopular. But so I everyone's going to hate him. Basically, he is just a murderer. <laughs> I like how you say that. He's just a murderer. Well, I'm just saying in prison with other murderers with. Well, I mean, uh, not only murderers, but, but like also yeah. people who have done some serious crimes and have also murdered people. Being like, whoa, that guy, he hired someone to get murdered. Okay. Actually, it does sound pretty yikes when you say like he, 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 he hired an assassin to kill a mother. That's pretty, that's pretty. I, I could totally see another criminal going like, dude, that's like low. It's like, that's, yeah, really? you should have done it yourself. Bro. Yeah, dude, like what? What are you wrong with you? I, I could totally see criminals begging him as the loser, actually. And he's already a loser, but. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, it's I don't not, know. It's not like, whoa. I mean, if he did something to like a... Okay, well, hit play. I want to see what they're actually going to do. another two people will soon be hailed as heroes. Okay, so yeah, they're just... They're building up the siblings. This place is still a prison, guys. <laughs> I know everyone we met in here is, like, really nice. And we have met, like, one bad guy. Two? Sorry. Two. One bad guy and one kind of grumpy person. Yeah. <laughs> in all of the prison. So, this like, is not a lot of a prison. This is a very, yeah, this is not much of a prison. Speaking of heroes, did you two need something from me? Just saying. Oh, uh, actually, we're here for... You're here to invite me to the party, right? Don't worry, I didn't forget. Hi, Cinder Baby. The cat. Oh, then let's head back right away! See you, Risley! Happy Fontanale Festival! Have a good Fontanale. And the same to you. Trying to get the cat. Maybe. Trying to. Please, go and enjoy the festival. She's just looking at me. Menacingly. She's just looking at me menacingly. 
Right, you gotta make it work. No, just gotta just ignore ignore the cat. Yeah, that Always works. works. And the winner of the Farina Award for the first Fontanalia Film Festival is the first. What do you mean first? Uh, this is the first film festival. Oh, I mean, I guess it is the first film festival, but. The two musketeers. Ooh! Dang! That's some nice art. That's pretty awesome. Congratulations, Mr. Xavier. We won? Uh, uh, I can't believe it! I, I really can't thank all of you enough! See? My takes on Fontaine's entertainment industry have never been wrong. This cat is such a booger. She's a cute one, though. And now she's like, oh, they're paying attention. Okay, good. I, I leave now. Please welcome to the stage the producer of The Two Musketeers, Mr. Xavier! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all so much for your recognition and support. While I'm up here, I would love to give special thanks to... Time really flies, huh? Dang. Oh, it's man, like the, it's you're really like, gonna cut off his speech, huh? It's like the game awards. <laughs> ah, no one cares. I care. Just saying. <laughs> no one is given any time for speeches nowadays. Do you remember that one thing during the game award? It's really hard to pay Aww. attention to anything but Cinder right now. I'm so sorry. She's like being so cute, guys. What are you looking at? She wants to hop on the PC. I know she wants to, but she's like being so lazy about it. She was like, she got up halfway on the PC and then just stopped. Okay, it was she's like, cute. she's just like, I'm good. And then she was like, but no, I want to be up there. <laughs> Hi, baby. Do you remember that one thing? Uh, they, what? Uh, which one thing? Did you ever see the clip of whenever the Baldur's Gate people went up and accepted this reward? No, nah, I mean, I obviously watched the live show, but what happened? Yeah, someone did a little pan over to like the screen. Uh huh. Uh, and it was when they were, uh, you know, giving their thing. Oh, oh, is it the? Yeah, no. Someone took a picture with their phone, I think, and everything, and that went viral on the. Are you talking about get on with it and stuff? Like, like the yeah, message. Get, hurry up, get off. Like yeah, wrap it up. As and soon stuff. as they were talking about the person yeah, that died, it's like oh. That no. that went viral pretty hard and everything. Like, it's yeah. like come on, they won. Like give them like, a minute. I get it. The Kratos thing went on for a while, but no one, no one really. Okay, hated admittedly, that. the button pusher was just doing their job. I'm sure, like after last year, they were just instructed if it goes over this time, they I have to get click. it every minute. And win another Steam Deck. That's a lot of money. But this year, there shouldn't have been anything. But this year, there should not have been anything. No one's speech went on that long. No, they weren't bad. They were not bad at all. Besides that, Kratos guy was definitely a highlight. Oh, he was always, always he's always a highlight. I, uh, I want to say it's Christopher Judge, but is that correct? I don't know. That sounds maybe correct. But I that, really loved his speech. The Kratos line. guy, the new one, the dad of war. The dad that, of war. That guy. I really loved his uh, long speech that one year, and then I really loved his... Uh, Short speech. His zingers. His, his, his savage remarks about it. I mean, everything he said was true. Yes. It's not his fault. It certainly feels that way. It feels like it was only yesterday when you were teaching me to hold a musket. Will you come back to Fontaine again? Of course. I'm very fond of the city. There are so many novel and interesting things that it's been hard to keep track of them all. They're clapping because unlike us, they're listening to the speech. Oh, sorry. You're right. I almost forgot. <laughs> How about you? Would you be interested in visiting Inazuma? Oh. I can't say the thought has crossed my mind before, but I'd be willing to consider it well, now. Believe it or not, your best team comp is probably the Shogun and any fire character, but especially Yoimiya. Probably Yoimiya and Shogun is your best option. So that's all, Inazuma. I will be eagerly awaiting your visit. It would be wonderful if you could visit my home so basically, and enjoy a taste of our tea and desserts. Basically, oh. next banner. So we'll probably actually get um, an Inazuma event where she'll get involved i hope <laughs> hopefully yeah let's keep in touch oh did you accomplish all you came they should for? give her yes they should give her an inazuma outfit since she didn't see a fontaine outfit 
That'd be nice. Yo, actually, since she's gonna, since uh, Chevros is gonna mainly be in Inazuma um, teams, that would be really cool. Come on. Mihoyo, I think you have something there. Come, come on. on. Just kimono or something. Just something. Can you also like crank it up to maybe like four outfits a year at least? <laughs> you get a few more outfits? Yeah. Maybe more than two a year. Is it two a year? Is that it's it? It's been two a year. Dang. Okay. Or is it, is it four? Oh, that probably makes, that means, that makes, blah, blah, blah. that means the uh, next patch will probably get an outfit. It's been a while. Most likely. Because, what, we had one for the first ever summer event. We had two, one was for free. I think and every then, summer event we've actually gotten a, a skin. Have we? Yeah, because Deluxe came out during summer and Klee's came out during summer. So I think so. Except that we also had the New Year's events. Yes. Outfits. Yeah. How many outfits do we have? There's like Yeah, no, six. so we had Gene and Barbara was the first summer. Then yeah. it was Deluxe the next summer event. Uh, with, I think, another one. I don't remember. Was that the Ayaka skin as well? That may also have been. No. No, no, Ayaka was different. Then we had the summer event with Klee and Kaya's outfits. Mm -hmm. And then we had, uh, we seem to get, I think, outfits every New Year's, too. Did we, the, and I don't think we got any. Lunar? Year, did, did we not? I don't remember. I don't remember any. L I know we did for two Lunar. years, I think. Right? I'll have to check. We'll have to check. Yes. And you should visit Inazuma again sometime. How has Ogura and her business been? To my knowledge, she's doing quite well. Tell her I said hi. Hm. I certainly will. I heard the thunderstorm has stopped. Yes, and the war has also been brought to an end. Peace and prosperity has returned to the islands. Mm -hmm. I quite like the sound of that. Perfect for hanging textiles out to dry. Oh, that's why she's okay. So she set out from from Inazuma, but then when the ports closed, that would explain why she never came back. Mm -hmm. Got I'd it. I'd like to offer my thanks again to the entire cast and crew. Without you, I would have never completed this film, much less had the opportunity to be standing on this stage. Mm -hmm. With the support of my entire crew, I would like to officially announce our film company, Musketeer Pictures. Oh, that's actually a really cool name. That is, but also... Oh, <laughs> well. Oh, that has a really nice ring to it. Very sick. Then in that case, let's please welcome all the members of Musketeer Pictures onto the stage for a commemorative photo. Oh, Paimon didn't know we'd also be taking pictures. Director Farina, I believe you are the most deserving person mm. to raise this trophy. Don't make her do that, please. Huh? No, 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 no. There's no need. It's so embarrassing. No, do it. Do it. It's an honor the director deserves. Mm. Yes, I agree. Welp. I can't remember. Just accept that you're not getting out of this. Oh. Ready, everyone? Three, two, one. Musketeer pictures. Oh, that's cute. That's pretty great. Dang, I really liked this event. This was a good event. I liked it. So far, Fontaine batting 10 out of 10 for all their things. I don't think they've made anything that I've been like, oh, so it's it's fun, but like, it's okay. No, all of it's good. Mm -hmm. Nice. I, I oh, hope. and we get to keep the photo. Wah! That's nice. That's cute. That's awesome. Lady Farina, please allow me to take just one more photo of you. I would also love to get your autograph, just as a memento of our time together on the crew. Hey, I've had enough of the camera flashes from when we were all up on stage. But, but, Lady Farina, you are the best director I've ever met. The most photogenic maiden in all of Fontaine. <laughs> this kind of lively and celebratory setting is exactly where you shine. I believe all photographers would agree. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Come, the brightest star of our land. Show us your light. The camera is waiting to sing praises of your beauty. <laughs> well, I'm flattered, but, uh, but... <sighs> All right, I'll humor you and try a few more different poses. 
Yep. But I don't have to hold the trophy, right? Not now. Uh, of course. You may pose however you like. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. By the heavens, Change the my mood lighting. has been beyond belief. I'm having a hard time coming to terms Bro. with it now. Bro, oh. as he clapped his hands, instead of the lights going on and off, he made the sun turn on. Dang. Savior, you possibly are the most powerful character in all Genshin. He controls the Celestials. He, 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 he controls the sky. <laughs> The stars are at his beck and call. Dang, that's too powerful. Celestia's crying. <laughs> Miss Yoimiya, we haven't had the chance to talk, but please accept my thanks for everything you've done over the past few days. <laughs> what happened? Oh, but I feel like I didn't do anything out of the ordinary. I'm very grateful for your assistance during that special performance in the warehouse. You're also going to work very well on a team together. It was always going to be somewhat risky to engage and draw away Morris all on your own. You're only a civilian and have never been trained to act in such a dangerous situation. No, trust, trust me, us. She has done. She's fine. We did a prison break when we first met her. She's pretty used to this. Don't say it like that. As the director's assistant, it was my duty to help out the crew however I could. It was an honor to help you solve the case. I have to admit, though, my heart was thumping super hard the entire time it was laying on the ground. Oh, I was scared that everyone would notice. <laughs> you did great. Oh, and before I forget, if you ever visit Inazuma, please come and pay a visit to Naganahara Fireworks. I'll make some fireworks for you. I even know what shape we'd make. I'm guessing... a musket. <laughs> Telling you now would ruin the surprise. If you really want to see it, just come and visit me. Oh, that's nice. Uh, uh, anyone is... else unique here? The kids? Are they unique? No. They didn't I haven't got anyone else on here. Yeah, yeah, no. We need to find a Yato I know and, um... <laughs> okay, so we found Farina. Found Chevros and Yoimiya. A Yato's at the cafe. And there's a Chiori pop-up store. And a... Oh, and a Yaka. Okay, so basically everyone. Oh, everyone's here? Uh, no, no, no. Ayato's here. Chiori's in a pop-up store that she put up somewhere, and then Ayaka, I think, is watching the ice skaters. I think. Oh. I didn't expect to meet you here. Sup? About your drink. I've what been today? told that this is a beverage called Fanta. Oh! I quite like its unique taste. Well, you like anything that's a fun drink. The slogan, a font of refreshment, is rather catchy as well. I'm starting to wonder if I could incorporate it into our cultural exchange initiative. You're just wondering if you can make it into somehow boba. You'd want to bring it back! What would happen if we were to add some sprigs of mint into Fanta? I believe this is an idea worth testing. Uh, it explodes. Or perhaps we could even take it one step further and mix in an equal amount of milk tea medley. Okay, yeah, that, yeah, sounds, that sounds good, admittedly. <laughs> Uh, but for some reason, I suspect that experiment wouldn't turn out well. What? Yeah, well, actually, carbonation and milk does not go very well together. Really? It actually, I think, it expires the milk. How fast do you have to drink that sucker? I I don't think you should. Like, at all? Yeah, at all. Oh. I thought, like, maybe there'd no, be No, carbonated time milk is a horrible idea. It makes now it I'm, like soil. Dude, now I'm craving freaking boba tea. Mm. I could really go for a strawberry like boba tea. I really want crap. What was it called again? You had chai boba tea. Yeah. Or just chai boba. It, it or chai. Actually, you should try chai because you actually thought the uh, the boba part was okay and everything. Because the whole thing about boba tea is that you have the little um, mm. what, are, what are they called? And the thing is, the kind of boba they used didn't fit it very well. Wait, a question. The tea itself was really good. What's the stuff that's in boba tea? This the little like tapioca, little tapioca balls, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're you actually thought it would have been better without the tapioca, right? Yeah, I actually enjoyed it more without the tapioca. Because it, it's because it, it, for I anyone, feel like who, the tapioca would have fit a different kind of tea. It fit mine. I did a uh, strawberry milk tea, like boba tea, and it was sublime. Mm, but I liked mine more. But the boba How didn't actually fit it very you. well. How dare! Or at least the kind they used. So in other words, you found out you're a chai tea lover. Apparently. Which, out of Spider-Verse, we now know is TT. <laughs> Why do we call it chai tea if chai literally means tea? What the heck is going on there? 
Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Shouldn't it just be chai? Yeah. All I know is that I actually really like it. That's <laughs> that's all I know. Oh man. Okay. Thanks to you. The film was successfully completed and the Yashiro Commission secured a collaboration project with the Palais Mermonia. If another opportunity was to arise in the future, perhaps I should take on the chance to act as the protagonist. Maybe. Or perhaps you think the role of villain would fit me better. Maybe. Whatever Actually. you would want to do, my guy. Have a good Thank trip. You for the well wishes. I will take good care of Ayaka and Yoimiya. I would like to wish you safe travels on your next journey as well. Thanks. We'll actually be doing that sooner than you think. And then, uh, so where's this pop-up store? Oh uh, yeah, I got it for you. What? Um, there. Ish. Well, that's just her store. Oh, is that just her store? Add Astra. Look, don't don't ask don't ask Thank me these things. I, I just look up locations. Add that's all Astra. I do. That's me job. Simple. Find pictures of location. Go there. That's what I do. Oh, you don't know the location of... I'm sorry, no, I don't have this city memorized. I actually wow. have not explored this city, admittedly, myself. I mean, it is by far the biggest city we have. Yeah, it's circular, which makes it a bit more simple. Yeah, this is just her store. Oh, yeah, well, there she is. Huh, it's you. Is there something I can help you with? Tell us all about yourself. About your boutique. Uh, why do none of the outfits on display look like any of your actual work? Shh. Interested in our couture services? Just give me the word. Uh... Thanks to you, we were also able to premiere the film in time. Its success has increased the reach of my brand. We didn't really do anything. There's no need to be humble. You helped Xavier and Chavras, and even Kirara's told me many good things about you. They are all my friends. You've done far more than what you give yourself credit for. Thanks. About your work. I am merely a fashion designer. I don't have anything else I moonlight as. But when you run a business, it's inevitable that as you make more friends, you'll also encounter all sorts of thorny issues. Yeah. You scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. It's just the common sense of business. How about the film? Xavier is over the moon now that he's actually won the Farina Award. Maybe I'll actually find him in the fountain the next time I see him. The demand for couture at my boutique has also increased. So much so that I don't have enough staff to handle it. Looks like I'm one step closer to achieving my dream. Hmm. Anyway, you will always be welcome at Chioria Boutique. I would love to see you both again at the upcoming Fontaine Fashion Week as well. That's possibly a thing coming soon. Hopefully with some amazing outfits for also maybe us for once! Oh! Duh! That's- we're gonna get costumes. That's where we'll, we're gonna get skins, and she'll probably come out with that patch. Hopefully. That makes sense. So we'll probably- it'll probably- Not be next patch, but maybe the patch uh, after that. The next patch is the New Year's thing. New Year's event, so that'll It'd be leeway. Be afterwards. Okay, yeah, that'll be sick. Yeah, so we should get Chiori and everything with that. <sighs> Unless everything comes out next patch, uh, man, then I'll scream. Part one, Chiori. Part two. The na- <laughs> The nave. Oh, stop. Stop. So the knave will probably come after that, I'm assuming, maybe? Or if she's a four star, then the knave will be the five star of that banner, probably. Maybe. maybe. But if the whole event's on a fashion boutique, I don't know if the knave would be on banner on that badge. I mean, just saying, I'd appreciate the most. <laughs> oh, don't get your hopes up that high, man. Don't do that. Okay. See you around. Later. I thought that hat the girl was wearing for a second was a dog. Actually, can we talk to you? Nope. Nope. Your fabrics, nope. husband, care. Nope. something. I don't care about edition. your husband either. Have a expected nope. of merchant. Nope. Nothing. Don't I care. mean, what? Nope. Leave me alone. Okay. Uh, and then uh, ice skaters. So I got used to that being the top of Fontaine. Do 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 uh, ice skaters. Well, I know, but... Where? I think she's, like, literally just over there somewhere. I don't know if we can miss her, because, um... On the, on the map, it literally just shows this section, so... I'm assuming she'll be, like, in one of the corners? Yeah, there she is. Hey, she is. Just watching them dance. Yep. 
It would make sense that Ayaka would be enthralled by this. I'm so glad we were able to complete the film. Thanks for taking care of me while I was here. Your acting was brilliant. Really? Thank you. You're welcome. At first, I simply tried to work hard out of a desire to not become a burden to the crew. It would have been so embarrassing if the filming had to stop to accommodate my lack of skills. But Ouch. director Farina was both patient and knowledgeable, and Shavras and Elaine taught me a lot about the scenes and details. It was all thanks to their help that I was able to grow comfortable with the role. And even with all of that said, I still got a little flustered with praise, especially since everyone, including you, were complimenting me at the end. Did you have a good time? Yes. I visited many places with Yoimiya in between the filming sessions. The elegant streets, the beautiful flowers and greenery, and the dreamlike underwater world. Everything I saw will shine like stars in my memories. It also brings me joy to think that perhaps you've marveled at those exact wonders as well. Well, thank you for your hard work. It's nothing at all. I don't often have the opportunity to wander out into the world like this. Not only did I make many new friends during this trip, I also picked up many new skills from everyone around me. I will cherish this experience greatly. Oh, and I'm also going to bring some conch matte lens back to the Yashiro Commission as a gift. Hmm. If we could enjoy them with some coffee, <laughs> perhaps it'll feel as if I'd never left Fontaine at all. Oh. Well, nice. I have a stray hair that keeps attacking my face. Ah! <laughs> Are you, you okay? Thanks. So. Don't forget that your glasses are on your head. I won't forget this time. You did a few days ago. I said this time. Uh huh. Not in general. <laughs> okay. Have a safe trip. And, oh, so, uh, sorry. Have a safe and relaxing trip home. Indeed. Mm hmm. Thank you for looking out for me. Please do take care of yourself during your I adventures as well. I can get a hairband. I can get a razor. Well, that would just look terrible. No, no, no. I just mean, like, we can just go short. But well, you're not a hairdresser. No, no. So it would look bad. Oh, well, unless we go buzz cut. Can't mess up a buzz cut. I think you can very easily mess up a buzz cut. How do you mess up a buzz cut? You just go very short. Very easily. I, I don't know about that. Guys, do you think I would mess up a buzz cut? Let us know. I would not. Maybe. Yeah. Sort of. I don't have no, I don't. You have pockets inside your jacket? Yeah, you don't. No. Lucky? Weird. My jacket's just a jacket. My coat has pockets inside. But if the stars align, you know, that, that's, that's a coat. We'll see each other in Inazuma again. That is a guarantee. You know it. <laughs> Unless you die canonically. Shush. That'd be horrible. Well, that's not gonna happen. I don't think so. Of all the characters, I do not think Ayaka is up there on the chopping block. Someone's gonna die eventually. Maybe. Unless Genshin wants to go the... that route of no one ever dying. Playable. That I is. mean, yeah, I was about to say, there's a lot Ooh. of death in this game, Daniel, but... Well, not, playable characters yeah, no, are not dying. Some people would like to think that the Saritza was gonna be playable. Some people, I never got that vibe, honestly. You're... well, you're... weird. I mean, they may make her in the future, but when we first met her, it didn't feel like it. Just, just... You're just wrong, Daniel. You're just wrong. Well, then she never had a vision, so... I thought she did have a vision. No. She doesn't have oh, a vision. Oh, she doesn't? She only had a delusion? Yeah, she only had her uh, cryo delusion. Wait, how is she pyro, then? Because she just... Was she cursed? I don't... I thought she... Uh, I thought she was the, fl like, Crimson Witch. She was. I think she sold something, or she did. She did something, and she was burning away. And that one guy found her, gave her the mask, and that kind of prolonged her life. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I have not looked into that deep lore of that. No, okay. I haven't either. That's just all I know. Gotcha. Okay. Well, I guess we're done. Wait, hold up. Are we done? I mean, uh, do you, have we done? Games. Did we get all the pieces to the sword? I mean, I haven't. I still got to do all the mini games. Are we just done? Get the sniper one. 
Why did this Genshin guide just take me to like a sign up for this new version of PayPal? But it's not PayPal, so it's probably a scam. Well, beat people up for a good score. Do the clapperboard. Okay. Such a hassle. Yeah. Okay. I guess we're done. Um, and I guess with that, ladies and gentlemen, mm. that has been uh, muskets and roses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not a reference to a band at all. At um, all. I loved it. Team, am I doing? I think this was actually some of, I think Fontaine has the best events we've had so far. Uh, I'm trying to think mm. back. It's been a while since this game has taken place over years. It kind of all becomes sure. a blur eventually. Just freezing. But Fontaine has been amazing. Yet again, getting 10 out of 10 writing. The story was great. The cinematic was awesome. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed our reactions to everything and our chats about everything. Just I hope you enjoyed just hanging out with us, and Lord willingly, guys. Oh, that's cool. We'll see you in the next one. <laughs> wow. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>